That's it. It is. Um, hey, yeah. all right. PKA 651. <laughs> oh, boy. We're getting ready to go here, ladies and gentlemen. What I told what him to press the button. And then you told like, him. Who yeah. were the sponsors? It, it, <laughs> no, we'll get to it later on. I mean, you know, um, lock and load, DBG, of course. Um, pipe, waiting on the link that. to change in the top we'll right. We'll see you know, very a little time quickly. Now. <laughs> if, if oh, and, and then lock and load. I'm probably probably some other stuff. And Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Bluetooth and, and freeze pipe. pipe. Oh right. my god! You ever yeah. put a freeze pipe inside? Zach, of Zach, go ahead and pretend I have none of those in front of me right now, and I <laughs> oh. need every one of them sent to me. <laughs> so go ahead and, uh, and send oh, those links over. In this, uh, yeah. Zach and what's his producer's name? No, uh, Sam Hyde and Jet Neptune should be joining us a bit later. That's what I was trying to say, and I wasn't even Jet close. So thank you for your help. Yeah. <laughs> Jet Neptune Jet sounds Neptune. like a, a cool featured name. dancer. Like you've been waiting all night at the strip club, saving your money for Jet Neptune to take the stage. She's because she's got like fake ass and fake titties, and she just does crazy acrobatics on the pole. Oh, that's Jet Neptune's a hot coming to the you? stage. Jet Neptune is a superhero Neptune. to me. Maybe a sea based one. A sea based one? No, Jet Neptune. That's like his rap name. I think he's a, a rapper, not a dancer name. No, well, See, he's, I, he's was told that, right I was told that I was told that the fish tank thing was heavily influenced by Mr. Jet. That it's it's perhaps even his baby. Yes, yeah. Well, we can talk about that if they if they pop in later. But yeah, it's definitely I I thought it was more Sam's thing off the start, and then it became clear like, oh, this is this is like Jet Neptune's baby, and Sam is almost like the carnival barker facilitator of this whole thing because like everybody knows who who J Dr. Jason Goldstriker is. You need both. You need a good premise, and you need a guy who to, like, run the show for any kind of reality show or anything like that. This is kind of a freak show. So, yeah, I, I look forward to them popping in. Yeah. I was asking before we, we started, like, what do you do to your, your foot calluses? Because i got, like... Oh, yeah, dude. As soon as Kyle brought that up, we're like, we got to get started. We got to strike while the iron's hot. This is, <laughs> this this is, is good podcast content. magic, handling yeah, foot yeah. calluses. I know dude, a lot of you out there suffer from foot calluses like I do. Dude, yeah, I just yeah. allow them to accumulate. I swear to God, I'm getting taller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my shoes don't I'm, I'm six one now, bitch. My feet, my feet are disgusting. But I'm just, I'm just, like, just walking on a layer of that's, skin. That's exactly why my toenails curl under. Yeah. yeah. My shoes don't fit right anymore, though. So I got to get the get them knocked off. No, it's not. Them. I've got, um, I think it's a planter wart or something like that. And you know the callus on your big toe? Like, mm -hmm. like that little pad it's got? Like... Mm -hmm. Um, below the soft thumbprint yeah, part of everything. it. Yeah. I've got, like inside there, there's this little core of pain that I keep cutting out and then keeps growing back. Tell me, how are you cutting it out? Oh my God. I'll, so I'll take a, I'll take a razor blade, like, like a box cutter, the kind mm -hmm. that you can get as much blade as you want. And I'll slowly start <clears throat> planing it down. Like I'm, I'm cutting layer after layer of callus off very carefully. Cause you know, you don't want to cut yourself. And, you get down to a point, it's just like fixing a dent in a car, where you're like, oh, there's the problem. There's this little darker than everything else core, and then I start like cutting around that core and I, like with, with the tip of the razor blade, and then I grab it with tweezers, and I literally tear it from my, from my foot, and it's so painful. There's no blood. It's just every time I'm tearing it, it's like when you pull bubble gum apart, how it's all stringy and weird, like, but it's tough. It's tough like buffalo hide or something. And it's like I'm jerky, I'm pinching with all my might to keep the tweezers on it. And like I'm thinking about going to needle nose. Oh, how pliers. often are you having to to recore this area? Like every three months or so. Like like because it like like right now it's fine. I can put weight on it. But if I if I forget about it, then all of a sudden that toe is really sensitive. So I start putting on my weight on the left side of my foot. So I'm not putting it on the toe, and then I build up this crazy callus. But I got the box cutter. So, so, so is far, it a, so is, is that a wart? <laughs> do warts just keep, if you do all they right, just keep so, coming back? Um, no. Uh, so, so I've read that this is called a planter wart. I think planter isn't spelled like the peanuts. It's, it's, but it, it's the other way. Plantar, and, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I don't know what they are. I don't know if it's exactly what I have, but it's this thing that keeps coming back in my goddamn toe. And it, it's almost like putting weight on it pushes all the way into the nerve and like hurts. So if I cut it out, there's nothing to hit the nerve and I'm fine. Like I can run, jump and all that shit. Um, but like doing like box jumps or something when it's, not cut out is excruciating. Kyle explained planner's not spelled like you thought. And I'm like, oh, noted. Taylor already knew. He can spell yeah. anything. I knew it. I knew the foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Man, that I have sucked, not dude. had that, but I would go to a doctor. Well, 
It's not. Don't get hasty. I don't feel like it's doctor worthy. I really it don't. Is. So the, the doctor for me is this annoying fucking thing. I, I really just like going. And I usually like to bundle up a bunch of ailments mm -hmm, before I go. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when I go, he's like, so what's the problem? Well, my foot, but also my back and my hand. And look at this thing in my eye. You know, I, I like to cover all my bases yeah. when I go. It's easily it. solved. You should take up acrobatic paragliding and then you'll have a whole host of shit to work through. <laughs> have you in there a lot. Like, honestly, the last time I got a lot of shit done uh, was when they found the cancer, right? I went in to get some moles cut off that I've been putting off, and I got the one on my chest, and um, I got, I was going to, there's one on the back of my head, like, in my hair that you'll never know was there unless you cut my hair. I wanted that gone, and then the thing on my eye. But we got sidetracked at, like, testosterone, <laughs> eye, and maybe one other thing, and the cancer just roadblocked us. We never got back to the other stuff, so when All they build right. up again, I'll go. Yeah, it seems like you got a good handle on the foot thing. So like, I I haven't had a plantar wart, but I have had a wart removed before. Have you ever? Have you guys done that? No. Never had a wart. Never had a As wart. As a teenager, I had one here on my finger, and uh, they put something like a soldering iron on it, except it was incredibly cold, mm -hmm. and. Uh, hurt like a little bit as they froze it solid and uh, but it was totally tolerable you know they numbed it first and then over the course of the next two weeks the little core just sort of fell out and then it healed and there's not even a scar another thing i got going on right now this one's extra fun um do you know what so your earlobe it's actually your ear lobule the little the little thing you at the bottom of your ear that little cute part how is there um, something wrong with that man what could go wrong <laughs> yeah how so, did you break your earlobe yeah so I've got um Piercing like yourself. I don't know it's like a cyst in there in the in the in the behind in it? the lobule like yeah like, you feel a little it feels like there's a BB <laughs> in there and it's it, it's like get it's like infected so every day it's a little bit bigger so at mm. some point I'm gonna lance it with a big hot needle I mean I'll let it cool off but yeah and then I'm gonna have to pop that bitch that's happened this is the third time in my life that it's come back you know what I mean like same you club. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that are like that. Like, I've got, um, I'll get this uh, zit on on my back between my shoulder blades, and it'll get incredibly painful. I'll usually I bet need you help can't reach pop. it. I usually need help, mm. and and and, and uh, when it pops though, it's audible. You hear it, pow! Not like that, <laughs> but, but you do hear it. And, and it's it like a like a blow gun, like lots of blood, lots of blood. Like when you look at it, it's not just swollen; it's black on the tip. Like it's not even a white head. It's like black from all the blood and angriness oh. that's accumulated so it's like from me half ass squeezing. Yo, for sure. And yeah. then, but when I finally pop it, it'll be crazy. And I'll be like, no, don't stop. Get it all. And you gotta like massage that bitch. And I'm like, I don't care how much it bleeds. Like, I don't get it all. And then like Ooh. three years will go come and I'll be like, oh, she's coming back. And I'll keep it as clean as I can. I'll rub it down with rubbing alcohol, you know, to, to like dehydrate it, but it's coming. It's coming I right know. now. I'm about I'm three lucky. months before it's time to get I, in again. I've, I've never had a, a zit of course. that Thank intense. Thank your mother every day. That... Every day. <laughs> Thank you, mother, for nuking <laughs> any <laughs> possibility my skin had to, to fucking turn on me like a traitorous blanket that covers me day and night. Dude, it, Accutane, I can't tan to save my life. I got like one small it was such a small red dot that i couldn't determine if it was a pimple okay. or if it was an enormous because i take boiling hot showers yeah and i like got in my own head i'm like oh my god did the accutane wear off in my 30s am nope. i gonna get acne now and the next no. day it was like oh no it was dry skin like See, that's another reason why you're everything. like such a good candidate for steroids you know like like, like that's one of the for me anyway that's always been the biggest side effect. The oh, biggest acne. problem yeah. was was the acne that it caused like, like on my shoulders and back. Uh, you know, that was the the roughest part. It was, and on my like delts too. Like like it, like you could see them on my on my shoulders. That was unfortunate for a little while. It took a while to get rid of them. But you 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 can never get acne. You're you're like uh, or like you've been inoculated. A, I've never had a zit on my back, shoulders, anywhere. It's but like I I also had high cholesterol as like an 11 year old, 12 -year -old. Oh. <laughs> because because like it it ruins your cholesterol did you know that like like young kids Still, get on or... accutane no they don't even give kids accutane for the most part anymore unless it's real bad because there were a lot more I, side i'm asking it. if it's a lifelong cholesterol issue or just while you're on it uh they said it was just while i was on it um and yet and yet but this is likely a lifetime of diet that that resulted in my cholesterol now being a bit high. That's it's weird because you eat so clean. Yeah, mm, I mean, is there cholesterol? Twenty twenty three, baby. Lean chicken, you know, 
Is there cholesterol in cheese, Kyle? I, I don't know. No, I think it's the I think it's the I think it's the ribs. I think it's the ribs turning on you. It could be the ribs. I haven't made ribs in a while. The last couple of times I've used the smoker, I've been I've been like doing the pulled chicken or the beer can chicken just because it's still you're still using the smoker and it's still fun, but it's not terrible for you. you yeah, know? it's still chicken. The chicken makes so much sense and brisket maybe too. Is brisket yeah. doesn't have a lot of fat, I don't think. Brisket has a lot of fat. Does uh, it? Ton okay. of fat. It's that's why it's so goddamn good. I don't like it. What? I went to Texas, dude. I I've been to Texas a bunch, but I was down there with some real Crazy. cowboys one time, and I was like, "You guys have your own barbecue, huh?" He's like, "Hell yeah, son!" And they're like, that shit was bad, man. I didn't want to say anything. I ate it all. They give you this huge oh. platter with like eight different things. And uh, like three meats and eight sides, and I ate every bit of it. I was like, mm, "Oh, it's oh, George barbecue ain't got nothing on." And I'm thinking, like, dude, our barbecue's so much better than yours. Like, our <laughs> sauce is infinitely better. Is George? I, I'm on the other meat? team. I, I'm so I'm from North Carolina, and North Carolinians are very proud of their barbecue. And anytime I go somewhere else, I'm like, I think North Carolina barbecue might be the worst. It, it, we, we might be bottom of the rankings in this thing. We're, we're, you know. That's such a funny angle. I did not see that coming. <laughs> I wish I could be proud What's of a, my hometown. Barbecue. What's it like? It's mustard based, right? No, it's that, vinegar based. Vinegar they just put vinegar on pork and you know, of, of course, they don't like prepare the pork in any kind of decently like healthy or good way. They just pour vinegar on basically shitty pork and pretend it's the best. And I, I, I don't, I don't, so, I don't dude, see one, why you're defending this. That's one Missouri thing we fucking have is like St. Louis and KC have excellent fucking What's barbecue. It? Way right, so let me barbecue let me tell you what I like and and what I consider to be Georgia barbecue because it's just. I know the guy that owns the barbecue joints and it says Georgia barbecue on the side and it seems like that's stuff. Um, it, I like pulled pork that's mm -hmm. like so shredded and tender that you could just make it into the tiniest rice grains if you want it with your bare hands. And then I like a, it's a vinegar, it's a vinegar, like hot sauce, like the barbecue sauce is, and it's runny like water. Like you have to yeah. be careful when you pour it on like a barbecue sandwich or you're like dunk it. Yeah. I would take that. It, I would take that little uh, cup. It's like three ounces of vinegar barbecue. And when my parents were asleep when I was little, I'd, I'd be in there with the with like chunks of pork meat, like dunking it, I'm like so yeah. fucking good. Oh, I know. So I know exactly like what North talking Carolina. About. It sounds a lot like what, what we call our barbecue, but maybe so. Yeah, I, I think, think I like good. the barbecue sauce more. Like the little make it sweet, like the tomato too. based, smoky, yeah. sweet kind of yes. Double that, up on the sweet. That's where Kansas City, Kansas City barbecue is too indulgent. Like the amount of sugar like, in our sauces it's is, like kid is to me. insulting. It's well, like, first of all, it's delicious. Like, God, this is so it's delicious, but it's like you can feel yourself getting fatter, getting slower. Too much sugar is like too much money or too good looking. Yeah. These are just not things that happen. <laughs> yeah, for you, country, you want Kansas City style barbecue. Song. I would like the North Carolina kind. Like I, I too love vinegary barbecue. What's that mean? It's like too much money. There's no such thing. It's like a girl too pretty with too much class. Something about a car too that fast. Can't be the yeah. lyric that doesn't. Uh, the next lyric should totally be about too much ass. ass. Yeah, too much yeah. ass. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's what he said in concert. But you know, on the radio, mm. she'd talk about her. She got too much class. Yeah, and he definitely did that. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God, what's it? Do, have y'all seen this country music star, quote unquote, with the gigantic ass? Her name's Miss Laney something something. If you type in Picture, Miss please, Laney eh? and then booty, you'll get her. And she's well aware that she has the biggest <laughs> ass in country music. Good for like, her. She's and and she's just all about it. Like her whole like like her, her socials are all her shaking her ass. Every hmm. music video is her just just badonka donking yeah, across. Your I like this, but I'm, I I seem like I'm, lot. I'm the outlier here. Oh wow, it's a lot. I can't okay. tell how fat I can't you tell are, what's though. happening on the other side of that guitar. Yeah, that, the, the, the guitar placement. Fupa that matches it. She weighs ninety seven pounds. What? <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. I, um, she's look, look, she's probably a little thick, a little thicker than you would like, even. But I mm -hmm. think that that is look, look, I'm not saying it's I'm, perfect or anything. I'm just saying this, 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 this lady with the guitar has got a huge ass. She I does have say. a huge ass. Yeah. Good for her. Great. Capitalizing That's my favorite on, pictures. Actually. Is she a good singer or do you have no idea? <laughs> I tried to listen and it was so generic. At least it wasn't that new age poppy pop country. It was, it was kind of fun. I like country to be kind of. I don't know, more on the acoustic side and more on the rough voiced side. All right. That, huh. That's Wait, not her. Is that's that her? No. No, now now he's memeing on us. 
trying See, I didn't to know. Right. I was like, is this, this unphotoshopped? Like, but no. Is that so, your camera roll? Is he just <laughs> that Zach? What is this? Can you? That's just that? not. It's, is that really her? If that's her, then fuck off. I think anybody can buy those checks. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way to know. Probably. Wow, that's her. That, that, why would? I'll get to the bottom of that later. Why don't you upload that? Why don't you show people that? If that's her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, the that'd first be, that'd be like, like Arnold coming out, and be like, "My penis is extra tiny today." Look, and it's like, <laughs> you actually had a micro. Like, why would you reveal that you have a micro penis on TikTok, Arnold? Like, you had it in the bag. You're 87. <laughs> you, had, you had it in the bag, and then you take this L on the way out. What are you doing, Arnold? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you think less of Arnold if you found out? Actually, I would think more. I'd be like, he did all of that with a two-inch penis. Holy shit. It wow! Would certainly, be I would think more of him or less of him. I wouldn't have the same opinion. Yeah, I I would think more. I, I think like, you're right about more. It'd be like you know what he he was like. Yeah, you. I'm going to have to get something going here. And then it he, was like he, he, he got when jacked, Michael got, became the so, best actor of his generation. <laughs> so there's a fighter, Michael Bisping, and he was kind of average at best. But he but he's one of those guys who's like a company man. He will show up. He will put on a good show. He will take an ass beating for you if that's what you need for him to do. He's here. And so he kept, he got his title shot. He got his title. And uh, I always thought him, again, a little better than average, not one of the greats. Then I found out he was doing most of it with one fucking eyeball. Like like for a, the last couple of his fights, he had one eyeball in his head. And it's like, oh, well, that just chunks you up a couple levels on the block, man, if you were doing that shit blind. I didn't know yeah. that. I, you know what I liked got about eyes. that story? I, <laughs> I like that he had a fake eyeball, yeah. but he nobody knew. So he would lie to the athletic commission. He'd lie to the doctors. You know, they'd be like, do you see this? He'd be like, oh, yeah, sure, probably. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and they're like looking in his eyes and he's like tr- like nervous that he's not going to get away with the fact that he's a one-eyed fighter. And he mm. didn't reveal it until he retired. He has a glass eye? Yes. He, he has a gla- it's So he, it's he, good. He, he reached in live on camera and pulled his eyeball out to reveal this dead eye that's like down in there and ruined. They don't even oh, take the old it one. It wasn't out. a blank space. And hit that's what it looked like to me. Okay. It looked like he had like this old white dead eye out of a science fiction movie down in there living. So you might want to hold on to it just in case like technology advances and I agree, you know, right? Yeah. Like let's not throw it away. <laughs> we might be able to shoot some stem cells in it just and store blah, 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 it in like, a butt cheek or something. Yeah. I had some green onions the other day. I thought they were trash. Threw them in a little cup of water. Boom. We're having nachos tonight. <laughs> 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 Look at you. Life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> Goddamn right. I'm sorry. Green onions yeah. are great. Underrated food. Taco great Bell took them off the menu back in 2006. What were they doing? Nobody Fucking noticed? Idiots. I did. Taco Bell sucks. <laughs> Taco Bell's Remember terrible. old Kyle? The, back when he would like have Taco Bell and invent new meals for him. Now he's like <laughs> counting calories and protein. <laughs> <laughs> See, I remember there was I, like a four year period on this show where Kyle did not eat a vegetable. <laughs> no, no, no. There was a 24 year period where Kyle didn't eat a vegetable. I'm not even kidding. I didn't start eating green vegetables until five years ago. Until five, I'm 37, maybe. I, until five years ago, I started eating vegetables. I had never had a Brussels sprout or a piece of broccoli or a green bean, an asparagus sprout. Shocking. Um, I had never had anything more than like the let you go to the salad bar with the tongs, yeah. whatever's in that big pinch. That's what I've had. That was it. You know, like, like banana peppers, you know, some some like green peppers on pizza, but never. And then I was like, all right, guess we have to eat spinach and stuff now. <laughs> Do you like Brussels it, sprouts? I love Brussels sprouts. They, I, I always thought of them as the most disgusting of vegetables. And in TV and popular media, that would be the one where kids would be like, mm-hmm. ew, no, no. Right. Dude, in real life, they're the best vegetable. You can cook them so much. You can make them this sweet little treat or you can overcook them and make this charred crispy thing. Or they yeah. can be have like oil and pepper and salt. That leads into what I was saying. I I think Brussels sprouts are like an ugly chick that is particularly skilled with makeup. Like you can take oh. this vegetable that mm-hmm. doesn't really have much to offer and prepare it in delicious ways. Oh it's my true. little, I'm yeah, text for you. Oh my little Brussels sprout. <laughs> you can get that greasy hair out of your face. <laughs> you can get greasy hair out of <laughs> dude. That's what you call your your girlfriend, my little yeah. Brussels sprout. Yeah. Yeah. Let her know she's a fixer upper. No, a... it's because her pee stinks. <laughs> my, my girlfriend, she's used my to, asparagus. Yeah. I, I had a girlfriend that would joke that when she woke up in the morning, she looked like a baby possum. 
Um, and uh, and so I would call her my possum baby endearingly when we woke up because she did. She was all pink. She's my squanky. feral little critter. <laughs> <sighs> um, I saw a story <laughs> earlier today about probably India. Doesn't matter. One of those places where people mm -hmm. shit in the streets and stuff. India. And this guy had been mocked his whole life because it looked like he was pregnant. He had this huge, like swollen belly. And they, they thought it was maybe an abscess or fluid or whatever. But again, shit street, uh, street shitters. So they didn't have yeah. any medical stuff going on. And uh, finally, they go to the doctor. They find out it's his conjoined twin that has been living inside of him for the last 40 years. And so they start yeah. operating and gallons of fluid are pouring out like 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 oddly covered colored fluid and then they find chunks of bone and limbs and genitals and then hair and then a jaw and then a, a piece of skull and then more bone and more hair and they keep pulling it out this guy had been living inside of him their whole life i don't know if the surgery killed it they weren't very clear about this that. is true that republicans say about these really late term abortions this guy yes. this guy waited till his like 95th trimester it's yeah. funny but, but then i read at the bottom they were like his whole life he has been mocked in his village they told him he was pregnant and it turned out in a way they were right the children of course now that he's returned they all laugh and say he had his baby he had his baby I'm like, how do you end an article this way? <laughs> it was so uh, dark and sad. Oh, it's I'm just like an awful life. They even added, they're like, he did not want to see what we took out, even though we offered several times. It's like, why are you keep up trying to show him? No, dude, you got to see what we pulled out of you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You don't even There's know how awful There's it fucking is. teeth in it. It's, there it's, were, yeah. Yeah. What are those tumors that? called that have teeth and hair and shit growing out of them? Have you seen those? I, know I have those are, those are I scary. Did you see that guy in I Egypt, Kyle? Word. I know you're on Reddit too. The there was a tourist in Egypt who got attacked and killed by a shark. I it was, watched him die to the sounds of music. Did you notice the song that was playing? It was muted on. I had it muted. I have them all muted by it default. It was this moment of mine or something like that. It was a. It was an ironic song to be playing. It was like this. Oh no. This magic moment. <laughs> That's what was playing. So tender and so true. To last forever when I met you and the shark's eating him alive. Dude, at one yeah. point, the shark, I think, had him in like a big, it's a big, 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 big shark. And I it, I pictured the shark holding him by like the chest and abdomen and his two legs were sticking straight up in the air as it pulled him down. Yeah. And it kept letting him go. You know, he'd bite him a little bit. And the guy was trying to swim to shore and uh, he died. It was pretty terrible. I saw at one point the man's both of his legs came out of the water in sort yeah. of a, like a V, mm -hmm. uh, which to me said that the shark maybe twisted or turned him in a, his limb, his arm in a way, and he was trying to go with it. Who fucking mm -hmm. knows? But yeah, that that's a you terrible, terrible video. way to die. I know you've said you don't have like a fear of sharks when you're in the water because it is so rare. When I'm with people, when I'm alone, mm. it, it turns. That, that was the first. As soon as I saw it, people don't know he was by himself. He was swimming solo, Very about a hundred yards out, and I was like, "Ooh, that is the situation where I get terrified of sharks." Yeah, I don't being alone, it. about a hundred yards out, like that's yeah. where you. Well, yeah, a hundred yards or more. I'm, I'm very afraid of them. Why were you? Because you used to go way further than that. Yeah. On your your surfboard, you just were kind of nervous the whole time. Only without a surfboard. Sometimes I'd bring a friend. I was a lifeguard, so we would the first the first and last hour of every day you were allowed to exercise as a lifeguard. So we'd either row the boats or swim or just mm -hmm. like run up and down the block the on the beach up and down your block, and uh, or some combination, you know, like swim these big lead, run down the beach, swim out across whatever. Then one of the four legs would be sand. Okay, and uh, one of my favorite things that wasn't crowded or anything was to swim out so far you couldn't see the land anymore. But, yeah, you, but if you had your your board, you weren't. You no, know. no, even with my board, it's being alone that would make me scared of sharks. I don't know why. It's not like the other guy's going to be able to protect me from a shark. Yeah. But it's the way my psyche works. Like, as soon as I'm solo. Yeah. <sighs> Am I well, those other guys, it's like, well, you know, <clears throat> there's only a one in five chance on the person that gets attacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I crazy to think that if he'd had, like, a good knife, he could have he'd have been in a better situation or would the shark just not care if you stabbed it a few I've times? watched the video he couldn't have been in a worse situation the shark's in total control of this engagement like if you had like a knife like as a surfer or whatever kind of down above your ankle just strapped <laughs> tightly to your shin like a like a six or eight inch like straight stabby kind of rambo knife nothing so big that it's uncomfortable but just a blade so you're not unarmed slapping a great a shark 
I don't yeah. know. I'd feel better I, dying with a knife in my hand. At least they'd know. Yeah, this is the one he stabbed. Sure, get it. Let's torture this one. I, I, yeah, you'd hope that maybe, even if you don't win the engagement, that the yeah. shark would be like, ah, I prefer fights where I don't take any losses. You know, if no I get damage. his eye, like maybe he'll quit. I'm just, I, I'd or rather just, be armed in some way. Yeah. I'd I recognize that it's going to probably kill me. I don't <laughs> know if I ever surf with a knife. My friends used to, though. And it wasn't sharks, it was fishermen. Fishermen would fucking cast at you with those fucking lead oh, weights all that. the time. So the, what the pier does is it, as the water sweeps sideways along the beach, the pilings that, that form the pier cause the uh, the sand to kind of build up uh, along yeah. the pier is, which means that the waves break on that you know, slightly shallower section and peel off the peel, the pier. Okay. So the best place to surf is next to the pier. Boom. Also, it has some other advantages. Like you can easily tell where you are because you're not far from something that's not moving. Uh, whereas if you just wide out in the open, you, fuck, you might have moved 100 feet and you don't know. And then the next set rolls in and you're in the wrong spot. So yeah. anyway, the fishermen, though, hate having you near the pier. They think you're scaring the fish away. I don't know enough about fishing to know if they're right or not, but I do know I don't like fishermen. <laughs> so yeah. they would cast at you. And the surfers with the knives would just cut their lines and they'd lose their lures and their weights and whatever. So it was kind of a, I don't know. Yeah, that's annoying. No, the fishermen I, I guess, were like, in the right. We were breaking the law. I think I've seen um, divers who like dive down to get oysters or, or, or some sort of like <laughs> sh sh uh, shellfish have, have little knives down there like I'm, like I'm describing. But obviously, mm. that's not for self-defense. Man, that yeah, that guy died, eh? I didn't see. It looks like the he headline died. said he did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did 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 you guys see what kind of shark it is? I can't find in the comments what what kind it was. I'm Where always were interested. They? Egypt. Egypt. <clears throat> I don't. I, I'm way out of my depth. It didn't I don't look know. huge, but it did look huge to me. Oh, there's a so? there was a spot where I saw the gap between his dorsal fin and his tail fin. The dorsal's the back. And uh, it was it looked to me like it was four feet from the middle of his back to his tail. I'm like, this thing must be 20 feet from nose to tail. Oh, no, you, you, might, you might be right. <laughs> that uh, I, I found a clip feet. here that says like the shark has been caught. But it's like this is just uh, a picture of people kind of torturing shark. shark. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I well, bet good for them. The you know, get, get, get out of your system, you know, <laughs> yeah, get it out of your system. Fuck up oh, a couple this, sharks. Every time one, we video. lose one of ours, the sharks need to feel the hurt. They need to How know. How many sharks should we kill human? for every man they take? Fucking tens of thousands. Tens. I think we'll run out quickly. Tens of thousands. Tens. Oh, my lord, there are not <laughs> enough sharks. <laughs> In Australia, there probably are. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> yeah, no sharks. I've I've like watched enough Discovery Channel documentaries to know they don't add anything to the environment. Nothing. I, 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 you know what I, you get without sharks? A just a bountiful amount of fish. More fish yeah, than we could ever eat. That's what you get without, without <laughs> sharks. Is is the a food problem? Not anymore. Not without sharks stealing all the fish. It seems now, like we should eat sharks as much as possible. I know you do eat shark. Mm -hmm. And that way you have more tuna too. Yeah. Maybe. I, absolutely. If sharks tasted better, we would eat them more. They're I, just they're not that great. Some people say I just solved world hunger. I'm just throwing I think we there. all just did. Uh, we'll all be eating sugar. algae before too long. I don't, don't worry about that. Not us, but our grandchildren for sure. Not your grandchildren, Woody, but me and Taylor's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be eating algae. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be subsisting yeah. on uh, like those spirulina farms you have to make. No, it it'll be like an algae paste because that's like um, in the future, that's always what happens. They have to, to feed everyone efficiently. They have to go like mainline that, that shit. Yeah, bugs and, and fucking algae stuff nah. that you can grow really quickly and simply. I want to live in a future yeah. with soil and green. That's the people. Answer. It's made of people. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. macros, probably. If it is, honestly, probably not. I don't think so. We're, if it's made of people, lean... yeah. Plus, the, plus, you know for sure you're going to get some of those uh, the uh, prions. Prions. I was going to say prions. Maybe you're is right. It prions. It, 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 I, Wait, what I, are these things? I'm not familiar. Um, there are these things in your in the brain in your brain, and if you eat the the, set, the kind from your species. Uh, it's it's real bad. It's how you get mad cow disease. Yeah, really. So like you would you wouldn't want to eat another person's brain. Well, I mean, I don't tell you what to do. Yeah, I but you could totally you know, eat right. like a cow's brain. It's incredibly nutritious. It's the the brain is full of calories because it's like uh, it, I think I've read how many calories the brain uses per day, and it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it depends yes. on the person. 
(laughs) (laughs) Some people out there not burning a lot of calories. Yeah, (laughs) it's true. Now that would be interesting if you could gauge intelligence, but 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 that all that would show was how hard someone's brain was working. So some nincompoop could be running at a hundred percent to watch Netflix. (laughs) Some retard just holding like a cylinder, looking at the star-shaped hole on the toy, like but it's redlining. It's redlining it. Um, I, I'm done with From. I'm going to keep watching it. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't want to talk TV just yet. We're so early in the show. But later on, remind me to talk about the fucking silo. Because that I, I love the silo. And I want to thank whoever in the, the, the hangout the other day recommended silo. I didn't watch it because of you, but you did your best. Somebody else that I actually care about recommended it. And I watched it I'll when they told me to. Down. And uh, it is my favorite show. It's on Apple TV. We'll talk about it later. But um, I wanted to talk about um, the Savannah Bananas. Do you know about the Savannah Bananas? No idea. Not at all. all. Is it a band? This is a girl band. So I know y'all don't like, and I'm not either um, on on TikTok and stuff, uh, but but the Savannah Bananas were this baseball team in Savannah, Georgia, that was about to go bankrupt, uh, like a minor league team. Mm -hmm. And they came up with some new ideas to improve attendance, some new rules as well. First of all, the games don't go beyond two hours. We call it a ball game at two hours. Second of all, all you can eat food, $20, included with the ticket. All right. Well, Third of all, no, the team is insane. They do <laughs> all sorts of acrobatics. They do coordinated dances. Um, they wear <laughs> their ban- their uniforms are bright yellow with bananas on them. Uh, they'll come out with the bat on fire. Literally, they'll come out on st- like 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 stilts, like like wearing stilts. Mm-hmm. Um, the best is when the pit. I saw the pitcher shirtless with a cowboy hat doing like like twerking, and the whole infield is twerking with him. And then, and then, like it's part of his windup. So then he pitches, and it, it's it's. So they like globe, like like Harlem Globetrotters, like playing around, goofing. Yeah, they're sold out. They're sold out for like a long time. Like <laughs> they were about to go under, and now they're the most popular baseball team, maybe in the world. Like like forget the Yankees. Like these guys are where it's at. It's they're more popular than the Braves now. <laughs> the yeah, probably. Bananas. I don't know how you rank that. Wait, the Braves are doing awesome. But 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 yeah, the Savannah Bananas. Do you have any pictures of them, Zach? The, the uniforms alone are hilarious. Yeah, uh, that's cool. It, I'd it, watch that. On a like more mild sports level, sports. the Carolina Hurricanes, that's my local hockey team in the NHL, um, had to do a similar type thing. That's great. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, hockey, not naturally co- uh, popular in Raleigh, North Carolina. So mm. these guys start being a bunch of jerks. You know, even before that, we were the first team, I think, to have ice girls. Like, it, it, you have to come out and, like, you know, clean the ice and stuff. Mm-hmm. And most people would hire whatever, like, 14-year-old boys who just would love to have that job and exist on the ice. We hired, sh- like, strippers, basically. Yeah, they, they wore the tiniest little mm-hmm. shirts, and they went out. They caught on they, quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really. I have a friend at Cisco who fucked one of them. Um, nice. Yeah, uh, it was actually inside. a really, really. Does he have any story. news on trades? <laughs> it when does he like, get out? Gat and shit. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah, and and now you know they do like celebration dances and they have like chore week. You know they're hockey players, but like mm-hmm. little choreographed celebrations and shit like that. And it's just something to see. Hmm. Yeah, I, like I like it when, when they celebrate a little bit. Sometimes they t- they get like too offended in hockey. Sometimes there was that guy like eight Don years Cherry. ago who like scored a goal and then pretended to like shoot the net with his stick mm-hmm. as a gun. Like like scored yeah. and then like a little was he American? Like, Woo, boom and like probably was and <laughs> and they took that as offense. Like oh you're pretending to shoot our goalie, huh? And then they like go over there and they like were starting to rough him up. And I just was oh. kind of like guys, come on, like that's kind of silly, right? <laughs> like it's the finger guns hurt your feelings. Do you too? need to? Our do you, whole team you know is what? Armed. You guys need to be a little more upset. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to be a little more upset about how this goal happened. You know, some bad defense. Coach has got really. an imaginary bazooka. You better be careful. <laughs> you gotta fucking be, be careful. Now. Coaches over there, like guys, cut eh? out their hands and knees fucking. being tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I, not even so, going to finish watching the Stanley Cup. Fun. Well, I will. But damn it, Vegas uh, is going to win a cup five years into six years into their existence. Those fuckers. I know. Those they have fuckers. Finals appearance too, right? Their first year in existence, maybe? Yeah. Yep. Their yep. first yep. year in existence. Uh, they they lost what to the Washington Capitals? And yeah. So, I, I know yes. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I <laughs> did. I, you really? I, <laughs> yeah, I did. I yeah. didn't know, but I like thought the, if the I agreed, three hockey the things I know. <laughs> like, yeah. Three hockey things I know. That was, that was such a weird three. <laughs> like, yeah, they did lose to the Capitals. I was reading that earlier. I know all about this. Yeah, the Capitals, five years Alex ago. Alex Ovechkin's I'm, team. Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> you being um like like literally saying this five years ago when they were they're like if they win one. Their first year when we have played for 97 fucking seasons. <laughs> we used to be the St. Louis Ant Men. We haven't, you know, like, like, that, that's that is kind of annoying, I guess, when an expansion team comes in yeah. and just knocks one out of the park. But the way the NH, N, NHL rules worked, I remember five years ago being like, yeah, it kind of seems like it's it's meant to do that. They get, yeah. they get like a good a player from every team or so, right? Like two players from every team? Pretty much, yeah. They made every player leave more exposed people to pick than they had for any other expansion in history because they wanted Vegas to immediately be competitive so that they couldn't have some. Basically, they wanted to avoid the Arizona Coyotes again, which is just mm. a dog shit Gretzky's team. team, right? Uh, he does have, he's like invested with them a good bit. And Gary Bettman won't let them leave. Like, How confident are you that it was like, they wanted Vegas to be a top team because I maybe I'm innocent and fell for the ruse, but I thought they were like, whoa, you know, we, we didn't want the Coyotes thing to happen again where they just get wrecked mm-hmm. for the next decade. But we overshot the mark by accident. That, and I yeah. believed it. I might be a fool. I, I don't even think it like I don't think there was a conspiracy or anything there other than like them being like, we need to make them competitive. Like mm-hmm. it, it, there's like some revisionist history with like, I remember at the time after they picked their team, the like the narrative like of people was like, this team is going to be way way better than most expansion teams. But like, you know, come on, are they going to be competing with the Capitals, the Bruins, you know, the Blues, the good teams at the time? And no one thought that. And so like, but then after they became like world beaters, everyone was like, of course they get <laughs> their it handed to them. And it's like, no, nobody thought that Jonathan Marcheseau was going to come from Florida and suddenly be a great player. Nobody thought that William Carlson was going to become a 40 goal scorer out of nowhere. If it's like, six years later, there must not be very much overlap on that team in this one. Right? No, not, not too much. And also Vegas <clears throat> fucked over their goodwill with players a good bit because they traded so many people like underhandedly that found out like on Twitter where like they would they would tell people for signing like yeah we want you to be part of the golden knights organization for years to come and like four months later the person's like yes they tell me they want me on team and then i go on twitter and i see at mention it says you trade to new york city <laughs> and i say okay i suppose and it's like, yeah. like it's like like what are you gonna like you, not even then, dm yeah because i know like the nhl player association has been like hey you should probably like you can't how disrespected would you feel? Like I would be furious if I were a professional athlete and the way I find out I'm being traded is by an at mention from like a third party. Like yeah. like like Dave Portnoy is letting me know <laughs> that I'm fucking that I'm going I'm gonna have to live in Cleveland now. Yeah, I'd be you know? pissed. It's like, dude, I'm an, I'm a professional athlete in this you fictitious gotta go soon, world. Right? Yeah. Like like it's 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 like I need a fucking moving yeah. company. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it's, like it's, I've it's, had yeah. worse. It, 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 one time. I was manager of accounts payable at this construction company and uh, I was young and I wasn't doing the job very well. I was basically covering for other people that did their job poorly and it caused me to do my job poorly and I got fired. Okay. So as I'm getting fired, I don't even know it. I know I'm on like thin ice a little bit and Mm -hmm. my manager comes in and we sit in this like big conference room, but we're not on the end of the table. And he starts talking to me about like, some of the issues that we're having and what we're working through. And I'm giving them like, you know, my ideas and how things can get better and, and what I think some of the root causes are. And this is like 90 minutes of this. Mm-hmm. And then he gets interrupted. And he has to take a call. So he comes back to me like two hours later and like another 30 minutes. Again, he's interrupted. He has to take a call. And then like two at all day long, he fired me and what everything seemed to be more important than me as he's how like, how are you? 23 maybe that guy's a douchebag yeah like, fuck that guy that's really inconsiderate <laughs> I, to you i would like, do i would there would be some malicious shit going on at that office <laughs> like did, couldn't you have gone in and changed a, a, a one to a zero or somewhere in the back end and just <laughs> that's yeah, my understanding yeah. of computers yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, no, I, I deleted had, all of your money <laughs> I, I would have had now. to I, I think it may be burt kreischer i was listening to him talk about getting fired from a place and they were like oh yeah but can you stay to the end of the day 
oh yeah i can stay till the end of the day and and went like, he was in charge of mailing stuff out so he just mailed it all to the wrong people that day and so oh. it's like yeah if you you fire me and then you expect me to work out this day you're gonna leave me here with fucking keys to the castle i'm going in the back to do some shit yeah i remember I, some of the greatest weeks of my career were my two-week notice you know, people would dread that. Like, oh, I have to give two weeks notice. This sucks. I'm still going to be here. I'm like, no, you don't get it. These two weeks are the best two weeks of your career while working here. Like, I, mm. I'd work. It turned five o'clock, right? I'm like fug, f- Fred fucking Flintstone sliding down the back of a dinosaur Ooh. when that five o'clock <laughs> bell rings. I'm out of there. They want that. They're like, what are you going to, can you stay late and help us with this? And I was like, man, I'd love to, but can't. Boom. I would never say no. Like I would always yeah. say like I was I wasn't that guy. But you're just like, yeah, no, no. This is there's nothing in it for me. I totally do this job for money and you know, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm somewhere on the middle on like I, I on Reddit. It's man, it's hard to read Reddit comments like like mm, anti-work type stuff. Yeah, but I'm somewhere in the middle on some of it though. Some mm-hmm. people will be like, they want they expect me to, yeah. to stay. I would at- like a subreddit called some work. <laughs> right some work some yeah. work or, or or enough work <laughs> like, sufficient like, labor but, How about that? yeah but but these they'd be like oh don't you ever ask me to stay a minute late don't you ever ask me here a minute early don't you expect me to talk to you after the fucking clock goes off and it's like man I, you are doing like the bare minimum and that's fine in a lot of careers, if you want to call them that. Certainly in a lot of jobs, the mm-hmm. bare minimum is plenty. But if you, mm-hmm. you you guys always talk about wanting this living wage, and you want the lowest possible wage to be the living wage, it sounds like you want to do the bare minimum and get the bare minimum. And I, I don't know. I've always just when I was nineteen, I wanted to work so hard. I wanted to outwork everybody. I was like, these old men can't fucking hang. Y'all got kids my age <laughs> yeah. that you've got to take care of. Y'all are fucked. I, like, I can, I can Not work. me, though. I got two Albanians back at home. <laughs> yeah. I got two fucking ex-Soviet block motherfuckers at my house who think three hours of yeah. sleep a night is and normal. And I want to work hard because they're going to force me to drink a 40 of some Ukrainian <laughs> lager when I get home. And I don't want they it. Would. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. They, the anti-work subreddit, sometimes I'm completely on board with them. This is an yeah. asshole boss that, like, you have approved PTO. You're fucking in at the beach right now and they're telling you to come in tomorrow no you you are bad at planning i you've known i wasn't going to be here available these days you need to work it out why are you even texting me i you know i i would i would leave him on red but other also it seems to be that they're opposed to the very idea of outworking your co-worker and getting that promotion that's and, very uh very communist uh, sort sort of viewpoints a lot of the times I I, I find over there. Um, not, unsurprisingly, Reddit. they're very proud to be communists these days. It used to be a naughty word. We have commissions. We dug them out and exposed them and blacklisted them. Those Ned mm-hmm. Isaacoff looking motherfuckers. McCarthy, the hero. You know what I'm talking make about, Make it Taylor. a dirty word again. <laughs> Remember Ned Isaacoff? Who? Ned Isaacoff. Oh, Ned Isaacoff, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, he of got course blacklisted. I know. Yeah, yeah, he got blacklisted he ne- from Hop Sings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Named names. Named names. Ooh, name, name. And then he- <laughs> Dude, I'd name so many names under torture. I was watching this thing about Korea. I'd be pilot. making up crimes, selling everyone I know down the river. And and don't even think for a second that it would take more than a threat. I'm, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm implied, not getting tortured. They say- Implied discomfort is plenty. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hey, hey, what, are you trying to miss dinner? Like <laughs> <laughs> they come at Taylor with like hair clippers. He's like, no, 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 no don't cut no. my hair. No, like, no. anything no. you want. <laughs> I can't. I can't reveal my my chin. Like, you can... <laughs> no, I have a big fat face, and this is just keeping it all together. Please, no. <laughs> these, uh, these two like, guys. This is why these... guys have beards to help. <laughs> Facial <laughs> contouring for men. It works. 100%. It works. It is, I, I will I, never not have a beard ever. Here's my thinking on this. And I say this as a man of the son who grows a beard. The kiss, I think, is bad. I think women don't love being kissed by beards. A lot of them, anyway. But the look is good. So, so you want to get it off your lips. I mean, I don't have a mustache really anyway, but I'll keep it off my lips. Like, if I can grab it with my tongue, yeah, that's no good. I, I need to trim up. 
and I can oh, just, just you know when he alphas the fuck out of me and you know, he puts his like, I, I've got my head like on his collarbone <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's got this big like bearded cheek and I'm like this this is the gayest thing I've done so far <laughs> <laughs> you could you could outdo him it is through your decision to shave that you're not outdoing his beard that's you've true. got a great beard I can out wrestle him too I could wrestle him down and Oh, and, sh- and shave him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the man of the house. He's no dead short stop. <laughs> uh, on, th- so, so these two American pilots go down over Korea. They, they capture him. They beat the shit out of him and stuff. And uh, the guy was talking about being in, they called it the Hanoi Hilton. It was where all the American POWs were, were housed in, uh, in Hanoi, obviously. And uh, for many years, John McCain was there. Uh, a lot of famous pilots that got shot down over in, in POWs were, but he said that only like five or six Americans ever gave more than name, um, like number rank, number, rank and whatever the fuck. He's like, only five of us out of 1,200. That's not so bad. And you know what? They didn't go home any earlier. They didn't get any special treatment. But when they got out, we filed charges on them. And it's like, Damn. <laughs> this guy he was talking about the knock system that he had to use to communicate with another human being for years he explained like putting the alphabet into this five by five block and excluding the letter c because you don't need it and like knocking to communicate through walls so you can be replaced with k like most of the time yeah okay um or so S. he's so he's you know knocking in these five by five sort of morse code system through the walls somebody be like just got tortured real bad can't take it anymore and they'd be like we've all been through it you can take it like hyping each other up to like and years they were there you know three four five six years at a time those guys were over there just getting tortured they would hang them from their arms backwards and stuff john mccain no, that, dude, that's- I'm, I'm doing like an hour-long set of telling them everything i know <laughs> after, after the thing about the san minutes. diego air base is whoo, not a lot of anti-air out there you know what i mean <laughs> Black <laughs> cannon, <laughs> more like fat cannons. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey! Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have your horn? Damn it! Oh, fuck! My... <laughs> God damn it! Where's my horn? <laughs> <laughs> fuck! Yeah, I, I would. Somewhere I guess if I was in the military, maybe I'd feel differently. Um, but man, I don't want to get roughed up at all. It's in me. Like when I watch torture scenes, I'm always thinking. I can't take it, man. I can't take what are it. the like, ones beat that me. get you? Like the torture? Because I know waterboarding is hell terrible, but that one doesn't get me because it's like your teeth aren't being pulled out. Mm-hmm. You're like, you still, your fingers are still going to work. I'd rather get my teeth pulled out than waterboarded. I'd rather, uh, mm. no, you've never done the waterboarding thing. So yeah, yeah I, 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 I've never had teeth, but, I, but I've had a taste and it's, uh, it's very scary. And you, the water is in your like windpipe and in your nasal passages. So you're always just blowing it out. You're covered with like snot and your eyes are, you can never, you can't see your, your, your knees are above your head. You're down and you're, you're just, you can't get it out because they, they're holding <clears> that cloth here. So you spit, but it doesn't come out. It just falls right back in your windpipe and you get this gasp. It's I, even now I'm getting a little short, short of breath thinking about it. It's, it's, it would, it's it would bad. Be terrible. See, I, it's bad. I'm sure it's terrible. And I've never had it, so I might change my tune if, if I yeah. were to experience it. But having never been tortured, the things I worry about most are the permanent disfigurement. You know, mm-hmm. like a, even if it just cut off my one earlobe, I'm like, well, fuck it. I don't think I can get that back. No. Yeah. Like, now I they got some good. He holds on to it for you. I'd rather lose the ear than the nose, though, because I've seen yeah. those fake no, ears. Shit. Those It's essentially like Mr. Potato Head now when you lose a nose or an ear. Man, the ears look good. Nobody ever know. Can you imagine a chick sucking on your earlobe? I pick the ear because it's Pop it right the, off. Because it's the like, <laughs> it's, it's the the. It's not functional. It doesn't I do anything. It's just a mild cosmetic thing. Yeah, dude, we had a guy in my high school with a fucked up earlobe genetically. He was like ostracized what and it looked like bullied. Like a hippo's ear, like this little thing. It almost looked like a cleft chin. Like it had a divot in it that wasn't supposed to be there. Like a pussy almost in his earlobe. Uh, yeah, the the bottom of his earlobe, and the I think so. Yeah, instead of being like a natural curve, like it's supposed to be, it had like a vagina crack in it. And Damn, y'all are so that. fucking mean. Oh my y'all, god, he committed was, suicide. It, how noticeable because was it? of that? Well, because of his ostracized life. Yeah, oh, dude, I'd have gotten like during high school. He did. Mm-mm. That's he was so like easy. A freshman to fix? in college. It was right after high school. Oh, 
That's terrible. It was maybe like the middle one. Yeah, yeah. Well, in dude, the middle one looks totally fine compared to that left one. What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, the left one's a boy, the middle one's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one on the, the right, the right like one looks fucking... like you could just knock that whatever that thing is right off. It's Charlie oh, Brown, I... that thing sticks out sideways. Yeah, the the one on the right. None you... of these are good ears. That thing you... on the right can't walk through doorways. <laughs> no. That's so gross. I'm glad I don't have any ear pussy going on. You got almost like an elf ear. The thing funny thing it? though, oh, you know what I just noticed? That guy on the left, that's not a genetic thing. I bet that he had his ear gauged and it blew. <laughs> oh, dude, I bet you're right. <laughs> I'm probably I'm probably wrong cuz I just haven't ever seen an ear with a tail, that's all. Have you do you know anybody who has gauged ears? Yeah. My girlfriend no, has no, gauged I should, ears. Men. Do you know any men that have I'm t- I'm large gauged like, ears? You're supposed to make fun of my girlfriend if she has gauged ears. That's so gross. I I, I knew you wouldn't date Don't a girl with back. gauged ears. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw a bitch with a gauged mouth the other day. Like, you oh, you're drink. watching her fucking chew. You can see her. You can see her bottom row. It was as big Dude, as a nickel. She's like, uh, she's like the body exhibit at the science museum. You can see <laughs> like how, how mastication. I'm sticking works. my dick in there. Yeah, you would. you'd have to. That yeah, here too. That's where the best blowjobs are, right at the lower teeth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those gotta go. The quality angle. Yeah, no, I, I know someone who, in college, got gauged ears and. They did that thing where they got bigger and they went a little bigger and now they don't want it anymore and they got it sewed up and it looks terrible. Yeah. Like they oh, they really? cannot like it's like almost like a folded up flower. Like there's like a, a like a scrunchie almost. Like a I scrunchie. Were, I, I wonder I if he it. went to someone not super talented. I, I thought they were able to really make gauged ears look okay. He probably could have, but these are people who make decisions to gauge their ears. So they're not like, Touché. they're not on Angie's list, you know, like looking, <laughs> up, looking up reviews on these surgeons. And shit. Yeah. I mean, no. nothing, you know, to each his own. They're going right to the ER. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I don't want to fuck with us, but yeah, I was thinking of like the, the torture <laughs> the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I know that what we did, I've watched a lot of stuff about the CIA's uh, torture mm-hmm. um, early on and those two guys who wrote the book on it. Um, and um, so so the most effective techniques they decided was sleep deprivation and something called walling. So walling is when you shove someone against a wall real hard and they like flat against their back and knocks all the wind out of them. And uh, apparently there's some sort of fucking brain reaction to that 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 yeah, really makes pain. you bitch up no not just pain but knocking the the wind out of them and that that big blunt trauma and just they said that those two things were all they you really needed to do however um they would do they would they would waterboard for hours m- dozens of sessions um that one guy i'm gonna get his name wrong might have been abu sharib uh he's the one who they took one of his eyes out surgically as part of his torture and kept it jesus um but they would put him in and they would put you in this tiny box uh like in a little like pet crate but it's not a pet crate it's a plywood box made to torture people in because it's so so tiny and lock you up in it and they had slots to check on you with a flashlight and they just pour roaches in his because he was terrified of them and leave him in there for like a day um they would uh um what was the other thing Lots of music, like playing continuously. They used Barney a lot, apparently, and lots of death metal and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they wouldn't Kinda give like them clo- tank. Uh, continuous liquid diet for years. Liquid diet for years, um, which meant they're like shitting themselves constantly because they don't get all they get is a diaper, maybe. But That's usually they would make the diapers out of duct tape. Ah, oh, like a burlap yeah. diaper. No, like you just start wrapping their ass with duct tape, and ah, no you got a way. diaper now. Yeah. Yeah. That's worse than waterboarding. This <laughs> is giving you a duct tape diaper. He would be their room was there was nothing in the room except for a drain and a, a hook on the floor and a hook on the ceiling to to chain you to. And the length of your chain depended on how how much of a good boy you were. This was what we did. This oh, isn't yeah. Yeah. this isn't even when we sent them to like Syria or Thailand. These aren't even or, black box uh, like uh, what are no. they, black sites, black box site, whatever. Those I are I, th- I think this was a black site, but it was one that that we were operating in. This is actually one that we were operating in Thailand, and another we were operating in Afghanistan. But the um the black sites when they sent when they send someone over to let Syria work on them, like hey Syria, would you handle this guy for us and work on him? They pull your fingernails and rape you and electrocute you and beat you for a year. Until you're not a person anymore, you know they're they're super hardcore about. Dude, their there's story. a. I was reading this article. This 
and you've probably heard about it. It may have even been in the Syria black site that some poor like guy in his early 20s who was a taxi driver was like literally wrong place, wrong time situation. Mm -hmm. And he was tortured ruthlessly at a black site for like <clears throat> 10 months. For like, time. Yeah, Shit like, like a year. And the like they they killed him. They killed him through torture. And like yeah. the the body examination afterward was like on the Wikipedia page, it used like the term pulpified to describe his legs, meaning like there was no structure in his legs anymore after ha like it was just beaten to a pulp, like just shards of bone. Who did and, this? Uh, the like CIA connected black site, uh, I think okay. in Syria. <clears throat> what we would what they would do they would they would have a name and they'd have like maybe two or two or three other pieces of metadata. Okay, his name is Abu mm -hmm. Shah something, and he's got a beard. He's twenty seven. And he lives in Canada, but he's in Syria a lot. Unfortunately, there's like 15 guys that, that, that also do all that shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so they scooped up this one guy from Canada and did all the shit we talked about. Yeah. And uh, he, he's a, he doesn't leave his house now, they said. They said he's been in, in his house for the last six years because they tortured him in Syria for 10 months and lied to his wife and told him that they didn't have him. And she's like, yeah, but he bought me sunglasses on the plane that was going from Syria to Canada. Yeah. You oh. took him off the plane yeah. and flew him back to Syria. That was the professor, right? Yeah, that was a professor. He was a college, he was a college yeah. professor. Yeah. The Pretty N1 fucked. basketball player. Yeah, man, I'm 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 glad that uh, you know, it's I didn't knock me. down any, any towers or anything. Man, you you don't mess with the US government. Like, even if you do have some bad thoughts out there, you, don't just let it go. Keep it, it to go. yourself. They're they play Keep for keeps. Yourself. They, they, they play for fucking keeps at that level. When you go to championship level law enforcement, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the Jordans of uh, <laughs> law enforcement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're there with the flu. <laughs> they don't care. How many years did that guy get from putting his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk? Is it like seven? I don't know. They're not going to send him two? to a black site. Oh, it's two. I, I don't know. They all got mm. like two to six years, it seems like. A whole bunch of fucking people. Uh, oh. They're still getting them. They're still getting them. And that was, I saw, uh, I watched tons of police videos. I mean, hours of them a day. And uh, I saw one where a 15-year-old boy in Florida is there with his mother. He's all blurred out. But the cop's like, you were on fucking Discord saying you're going to shoot up school. And she's like, it's a video game. It's not for real. He's like, well, he said he was going to shoot up school for real. And in Florida, that's, you know, it's terroristic threats and, and, and two or three other charges. And everybody's crying. And, he, and she's like, but he's a little boy. He's like, that's why I'm taking him to juvenile jail. <laughs> and it's like, damn. Hooked juvenile him up, jail. threw him in the fucking car. It was great. It was great. Damn. Yeah, like you the love these cop videos. Dude, you get these fucking bitches, man. These bitches that, you know, the, have you ever wanted to punch a woman, like, for real? But, of course, you didn't. But you, like, you're like, she deserves a punch. Like, I'm not in the, in the olden times. I get a fucking, and everyone clapped. If you just gave her one of those. Everyone you know, rejoiced. <laughs> and everyone rejoiced. Everyone liked that up in the fucking top right. Like, like, fallout or whatever. Um, It's ladies like that. And I use ladies loosely. These bitches are trespassing. And, and they're like, ma'am, all I need you to do. Walk on over there and head home. Yeah, but on the same level, you don't understand. Ma'am, again, I, I don't care who started the argument. You know, you can go just home. Head on over there and head on home. We yeah, they'll have a lovely evening, man. Yeah, you racist fucking cops. You racist and you, you Mexican cocksucker. And it's like you call him racist and then were racist with the same breath. And then <laughs> before, it, before it's over, she's face down, <clears throat> titties popped out of her whore ass top. Getting drug around the asphalt. You stop moving and we'll just, and just getting the shit beaten out of her. It's great. Fucking pepper spray and bit. This one chick's spitting. She's spitting so much that I'm wondering where she's getting the saliva. So, uh, I don't know if you've I ever spit so much. At your mouth. Jobs. Oh my God. She's spitting through the, the grate at the cop in the front seat. <laughs> Cracker ass bitch. <laughs> Cracker ass fat. Already been oh, arrested, still I'm, spitting. Yeah, I'm, she's handcuffed. Still any more, I'm getting close. And, he, and he's had enough, right? It's, it's, he's been getting spritzed. And he pulls that shit over and goes back around to her window. He's like, and they're, they just, again. He should have times. spit on her. <laughs> oh, he's got his bear spray. He's like, if you keep spitting on me, I'm going to spray you. <laughs> That's going to give her more spit. She's like a move. sprinkler. She's like a sprinkler. And he finally. <laughs> 
That's it. No more spitting out of her. Now I don't know. Now she's getting crying. even more saliva. She's crying. <laughs> her mouth's watering. Yeah, she's even I, more annoying. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see pepper spit coming. <laughs> yeah. I had to calm yeah. her down. She she kept my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> One, you can tell the cops have been doing it for a while. He's like, this one looks like a spitter. Get the bag. And sure enough, they're trying to spit through the bag. They got like a beekeeper bag they'll put on these fuckers and like zip tied around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big enough problem that they have a spitting protocol. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Um, spitting is disgusting. That, I remember my cousin was locked up one time for Tied. some minor infraction, a fight or something, and they, they showed they they either had somebody in the chair or they showed him the chair because in jails a lot of them they have a chair and it looks like the electric chair, you know, with the the straps all over mm -hmm. it, like some medieval stuff. And you are 100% restrained, like straps everywhere on your body. And then they put this hood over your head. And he's like, that's what we do to spitters. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's a spitter? Well, some folks just can't take no for an answer. Webster's define spit. spitter as <laughs> one who spits. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, well, I couldn't do that job. Handle it in Italy you couldn't be a cop? Fucking... No, no, I... I, I don't think of myself as a violent person or anything, but just the level of continuous disrespect they're dealing with. And the, just, just yeah. for no reason, like unarmed, the, the guy shows up. And he's like, ma'am, I don't even know how any of this started. And he's just getting just stuff hurled at him, just being mean to him, just shitting on him, telling me just all sorts of racial stuff and just spitting on him. I don't know. I don't get spit on, yeah, right? especially by, the, by some scum on the street. Get hep C. Yeah. To avoid turning into a bad cop. I need to be a cop in a pretty good neighborhood, right? <laughs> you know, like, like my last town in Apex, nothing ever bad happens there. There's no murders there. That it, I, I imagine there's a sexual assault or something, but there's no nightclubs or anything. Like it's just a mm -hmm. small town filled with uh, the engineers that work in Research Triangle Park mostly. And uh, I think if you're a cop there, you can retain a pretty good opinion of humanity. But if you're in like New York or Boston or any place with the dark side, then it probably influences the way you see regular people. I, yeah, I'm sure. I just, I don't think any of us, maybe Taylor, because Atlanta's not, a, the side of Atlanta I'm on isn't that bad. Um, there's bad parts. I mean, but... I don't, I live in the nice part of St. Louis. No, I no, you in don't. Shitty area. No, you, no, I've seen you live. <laughs> God, you've still got the gun, right? <laughs> yeah, I keep one on every table just in case. Just in case. <laughs> no, I I keep seeing those videos out of Philly though of the homeless people on uh on on all sorts of drugs like like um leaning, you know, uh, like, yeah, like, like faded out, and <clears throat> they walk down the street to show you that this isn't this little strip of people. This is continuous. We can walk for ten minutes and and you won't see the end. The 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 it's it's post apocalyptic. It looks like RoboCop. RoboCop wasn't this bad. RoboCop's diabolical version of the future, you know, with Omnicore, the corporation taking over a failed Detroit, was pretty dead spot on. But even they didn't know that the drugs were going to make people this shitty. Their drugs hmm. were cool, at least. <laughs> they had at least they had this little, drugs. yeah, they had this little uh, surette you pop in your neck called Nuke, and you, you just made just made you happy. I, I can't, every time I'd watch RoboCop, I'd be like, come on, let them have their Nuke. It seems fun. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen RoboCop, but I imagine that... You haven't seen RoboCop? I have not. It's on the list. Dead or Alive, you're coming with me. How can you not know? Well, I haven't seen it. That's how I don't know. Oh, well, well, dude, right after Terminator and Allegory Terminator 2 Jesus Christ. and, and Predator cool. and Titanic and um, all those Westerns. It's this Paul Verhoeven created mm -hmm. anti-capitalist um, um, Jesus Christ allegory made with made with police in detroit and when a guy turns into a goddamn cyborg and dispenses justice with his literal iron fist it's great and he has a cool gun i'm gonna rat you out to anti-work <laughs> and be like this animal has two jobs and several <laughs> movies to catch up on <laughs> and he's just and he won't watch robocop this fucking cunt <laughs> he knows it's good and he won't watch it this fucking idiot is just watching <laughs> the simpsons again, <laughs> and again the bad guy is the dad from that 70s show and he is evil as Red. no that's that's robocop 2 that's robocop 2 no 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 that's robocop 1 you yeah, know what I? Uh, they brought back that '70s show as that '90s <laughs> show. Did you like th that '90s I show? Did. Is a show now. Oh, I'm aware and that it, it was. I, I'm not going to watch it, but do I they, do they have did any not on know. That show? <laughs> not even no. no <laughs> He's Danny in prison. Masterson is going to jail. Yeah, 
Uh, wait, who'd you say? Danny, Danny Masterson. Masterson. That's uh, I heard it wrong. The I was like, wait, what? <laughs> who who got who got convicted of ripe, and now he's going to jail for thirty years. But I didn't know that Red Foreman, the actor, I had thought he was dead for years. No, no, no. And then I saw that '90s show come out, and it's like, th- that's great. He's alive. And he's Kitty. got a job. Kitty's. I knew Kitty would be alive. Like she's she looks younger than than Red. Like she she's reminds still me a little bit lady. of Charlie's mom from it's it's always sunny. She has kind of a similar bearing to her. Yeah, I uh yeah, like a sweet lady. Yeah, the new season came out. Um, the first two episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, season 16. And I know you've been down on that show for a while. I I I recommend you check out at least one of these new episodes because I thought it was not Did very good, not amazing. Put in our Loved chat, it, though. the Reddit chat. Yeah, um, I didn't read that, but I, I know what it is. And it was I don't want to spoil it for Taylor necessarily. They're, they're, okay. They're, maybe do. I don't know. It is kind of a spoiler. You can. I don't it's, care. It's a cool, funny moment. Yeah, go ahead. T- go ahead. It's that uh, Charlie's room. You know, so people don't watch Always Sunny at all. Uh, Charlie lives in a poop-stained single-bedroom room with this other guy on a pull-out couch in, like, abject poverty. And there's all these doors in the bedroom. On Reddit, seven years ago, somebody theorized that those other doors lead to a spacious three bedroom apartment. But Charlie just put things in front of the doors and never really explored. And it turns out that he nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie lives in a really nice three bedroom spacious he has apartment. A, that's and hilarious. Then, Frank is like, is this a toilet? I, we piss. He's like, yeah, but it runs and it's loud. He's like, I piss in a can. <laughs> Charlie. He's like, he's like, he's like, wait a minute. What's behind that door over there? Ah, like, oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, Charlie. And he starts moving shit out of the way. And it's a huge bedroom. It's it's, it's, bi- it, it's big bedroom. And it's, uh, it's pretty good episode. But that and that's not even the funniest part of that episode. They uh I'll have to the watch gang, the season. The gang looks pretty healthy. You know, they're all in their 40s. They look quite good. They have started face tuning D this year. I don't know if they're using it on everyone, but it's super obvious. Uh, if you know what D looks like, um, mm-hmm. or if you watch the podcast there's uh that ain't I mean, what she looks like is it possible she's using a ton of botox no okay oh, oh i mean she, they're, they're oh. face tuning her to make her look better it's yeah, not like yeah, a joke yeah. to make her look older or something no no no, no. <laughs> i know i i literally when you said they're face tuning her i'm like oh i think that the joke must be that like they're all getting healthier but d is aging badly <laughs> like that would be pretty funny no she's uh no they face tuned her they took like seven years off something like that very smooth around here you know, like, like, you know, where women get it, get it. Is it a little like, jarring where you're, you're kind of like, eh. especially from a distance, you know, the way that face tuning stuff works, if, if they're sort of in this range, it's, it's good at that. But when she walked in the door and was far away, it seemed like her face had no definition at all. It was almost just like this fleshy, smooth almond coming at me with eyes or something. But mm-hmm. that's just me. Maybe I'm, maybe everybody else will notice. I am on that big ass TV too. Now um, I'll notice. But I noticed it right away that, that, that she looked better than last year in a digital kind of way. But yeah, real good stuff. They even have a Frank Gunn episode. Um, I haven't DeVito's seen any of the last two seasons. I thought DeVito's lost like maybe half a step, or maybe he was just being subdued in these recent episodes. He didn't seem to have that same energy about him. He's yeah. so old. He's Yeah, he's genuinely getting Who up is? there. Hey, Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. Oh, oh, oh. He's like yeah. mid-70s at least, right? Maybe Is he really? Past that. Yeah, gotta be. Remember, he was in Taxi. Uh, the, it, young, um, young, handsome DeVito, I'll call him, Dude. was an interesting kind of guy. Like those movies where he's just a pervert and just running around. Like, like, like he's he kind he it's kind of what Frank does. Frank is kind of reminiscent yeah. of remember like, him and twins. Matilda. He's great in Matilda. Mm. Him and Rhea Perlman, who he was married to. Yeah, had his wife yes. in the movie with him. That's cool. Just realized that I didn't realize That's, that either. My my sister He's loved that old. movie. I, I knew he was old because he was old when I was young. Like when I watched him on Taxi, I thought of him as an old person because, you know, when you're like twelve, everyone over thirty is yeah. nearly dead. Uh, he's seventy eight. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah, they're not, I, they're only going to get a couple more seasons. He's not the twins. kind of physical specimen who pushes ninety. Maybe sometimes those real little guys, I feel like maybe, yeah, maybe I don't right. know. He's though. Four ten. Is he, a, I hope he's not I as hope when as he, he dies. used to be either. I hope when he dies, it's written into the show. I hope they have time to do that. And that their inheritance is like a slap in the face, like the Christmas episode from season one or two, where he gets the Lambo for himself. 
the the Gucci bag for himself, and then the he's filling it yeah. with his treats that are getting all melty in there. Like that's how the that's how the inheritance should be treated as well. You think like, that, that should be, be like fun. the the end of the series is Frank dies and they're all back in their bar with no financial prospects exactly where they were 20 years earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Would, you know, the, the bar was win. paid for by Charlie. That, that, that was uh, a fun flashback video. No, I like the show a lot. Even the, even the later seasons, they're not as good as whatever the heyday was seasons mm-hmm. five through nine or something, but I, I still like yeah. it. If really Charlie got all the money, I think there'd be some plots <clears throat> to be had there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't want to spin off though. <clears throat> the show isn't the show without Danny DeVito. Yeah, I mean, if you need a reminder of that, go back and watch season one. And while it's funny, it's like he brought that show from good to like great, a, a like a legend of a show that people mm-hmm. will watch all the time. Like seasons one through ten or two through ten, I guess. And it's it's not just his his. It's not just that you've got Danny DeVito. It's that Danny DeVito's character is a catalyst like he's a millionaire who wants to wants to roll in the mud with these pieces of mm-hmm. shit it's perfect he gets to fund everything the one of the the new episode is all about inflation and the economy and stuff and them trying to learn inflation of course mac takes it literally and starts selling inflatable furniture you know mm-hmm. they take out a they take out a predatory loan from frank who immediately wants to like cash it it's fun i i, I like it i think it's still good there's a part where for, charlie's like when i turn 40 my inheritance is going to be this, that, and the other. His inheritance is absurd. They're like, I hate to break it to you, buddy, but you're way over 40. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> he goes home. He's like, Mom, did you know I'm over 40? She's like, no. <laughs> Not my baby Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> We're all over 40. That's very funny. I yeah. do like when they, they poke fun of themselves with how much they've changed over the years and and those kind of meta jokes like the it was the first time they did that was like eight years ago six years ago and they're like we are all so goddamn weird now like that <laughs> <laughs> we got a man cheetah yeah man cheetah <laughs> he's got spots he's got a spot guy like that <laughs> and that a tail show. and a tail charlie you're on reddit like i am have you seen all this stuff about the api closing and apollo yeah. and everyone being so mad yeah I, I, am what, i what crazy that? All right, all right. So an API is an application programming interface. And what it does is it allows third parties to get all the data, the comments, the links from Reddit, and then wrap their own user interface around it. Okay. Uh, I've never used Apollo, but it seems widely agreed upon that it is a better way to surf Reddit on mobile than Reddit is. There's a native Reddit app also that I use. And uh, for example, like it's easier to do markup language and make your things bold and italic and maybe include gifs and whatever um when you link to an image and i see it i see a link to an image when they see it they see an embedded image or perhaps the opportunity to expand it without like going to that website and uh so they made some improvements on that well reddit is going public and now they have profits to concern themselves with and they've decided that this company over here which downloads all this data and shows it um isn't in reddit's best interest anymore I'm making this part up. Maybe they don't show ads. I don't know. But uh, so the problem is that Reddit wants wants it to be too expensive for all the third party apps to operate, and they want everyone to use the official Reddit app so that they can run their ads. Because I don't think Reddit's getting paid by the ads that Reddit is fun. I use Reddit as fun. It's got its own ads here. This is a Reddit is fun yeah. ad. You know, they're they're getting money off. They're making money off by, you know, providing Reddit in this smooth way. But with their own ad, Reddit doesn't get anything out of that other than traffic. So yeah, they're wanting to shut up. Twenty million a right. year, they say, is unfeasible for them. That they say so the third party apps. The API, which is previously true, they came up with. I'm sorry, previously free. They came up with a uh, rate, you know. And Apollo is like, we're so fucking popular that we'd have to pay. Is it twenty million a month? Is that what it was? Yeah, a year. Uh, twenty million a year to uh, to keep going like we always have. Mm. So we're gone, and all of Reddit is infuriated by this so many subreddits are shutting down for maybe a weekend all the, uh, all the administrators protest. on reddit are furious about this and the, administ- the moderators furious about this <laughs> oh, so, okay okay and- all the power mods are livid <laughs> yeah <laughs> all yeah. 12 of the people who actually run reddit are <laughs> yeah. mad about this i'm over here like wait a minute it, it sounds like reddit was kind of getting fucked and they decided to stop being fucked 
That that's mm -hmm. my interpretation. Why does Reddit have to provide this free API for other people to profit off of? If your entire business is based on like the Reddit API, then you'd always knew you were built on a house of sand. There's a term yeah, for I mean, it. There, I forget. The official Reddit app um, <clears throat> isn't as good. There's a reason I use Reddit as fun. It just I don't know. It's smoother for me. I'm sure there's probably better ones. I'm probably not even using mine right. But I'll switch. I don't give a shit, you know. Mm. And if you make me pay for Reddit Premium, if it's going to cost me three dollars a month to knock your ads off, dude, I spend three hours a day on Reddit or something like that. My phone's always open. I like to, this is where I get my news. I'm on World News and news and all the specific little little things I like to learn about. I, Reddit's like a little. I spent a little on time Reddit. on r slash candle making last night. Get the fuck out of here. As with, as with so many things, like <laughs> you go to top all because I'd never been to that forum before. And yeah. like yeah. every time you go to like a, a forum about a specific interest, you're like, if I go to top all there, maybe there's like a big guide with tons of info about mm -hmm. what temperature to do certain things with certain, like to make sure everything turns out correctly. And you scroll for like, 20 minutes and it's just pictures of people's candles and there's no tips and there's no tricks and it's like this is this is i went back to youtube after like 20 minutes it's like you know what all these ladies on youtube i type in how to do this they tell me immediately like this reddit is just people posting pictures of their own candle so two thumbs down to that reddit i didn't learn fucking anything about <laughs> candle making from our candle making uh, if you want to going to learn you find there's a couple of people a couple of ladies on youtube they're all women by the way there's no probably there's just no different admit. subreddit. You probably need like DIY candles like, or something like that. Candle making maybe. sounds maybe. like maybe you're right. Maybe there's a better one. I don't know. Maybe I'll what have to check into it. Yeah. I don't I, I don't I don't I don't make candles. I don't make you candles. could you should you use could. Taylor. Chat GPT. I've had great luck asking Chat GPT all sorts of random shit. I'm like, I, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, I, I really should just put in there and be like what temperature should I add XYZ oil? And it'll say like either the same thing or something else. I don't know. That could be fun. Yeah. And any, it has, any idea um, of what footnotes tell you where it found it. Kind of. are, are you saving money by, by create crafting these, these candles? Candles are very expensive. They are, but I really doubt I'm saving money. I'm doing it. Cause I'm, I'm like having fun with it. The, the actual like fragrance oil is the shit that actually, that like costs more. <laughs> The wax itself, you can get 10 pounds of wax for like 20 bucks. Like it's it's cheap as shit. It doesn't go as far as I think it will. So you buy wax and uh, it looks like shredded cheese kind of. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is like <laughs> nine candles. Three candles in, I'm like, shredded cheese is mostly air. Yes. <laughs> this is bullshit. That is true. Like you, you put in like what feels like an enormous amount. I like put a paper plate on my food scale. And I was weighing out just one pound of soy wax. And I'm like having to like build a little tower as I'm doing it because so much wax is on there. And then you put it in the double boiler and it's like, did someone break in and steal my wax? Like as you're watching it melt because well, there's so little. My back turned. How yeah. do you make it? Like how do you, how do you melt it? Uh, I have a double boiler. I don't and know what I, that is. So it's like a bowl on top of a pot that's boiling water. And so it's just the heat of the steam, like of the simmering water heating it up. So it's not on, it's on indirect heat. And oh. so I, I put it in a double boiler, uh, get it up to like 185, 185 degrees. Once it's all fully melted, then you add dye if you want to dye it at all. And then you mix okay. that in and then you take maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, then you take it off the heat. Uh, you add your fragrance, like one ounce of fragrance for per one pound of soy wax, and then you mix it slowly for like two minutes because if you mix fast, it's going to like get all fucked up because you're not like trying to whip it. You're trying to not get a bunch of air in your wax. Uh, so you just stir it real slow for like two minutes and then you chill and let it go till like, I don't even know what the temperature is. All the ladies online say, wait until it starts looking cloudy. And then mm -hmm. when it starts looking cloudy, then you pour, pour it. it. Yeah. And uh, by that point, like you have your, your wicks like glued just down. about the same way. I, it sounds like you have a slicker double boiler than me. I just have a big fucking stew pot that like a mm -hmm. witch might have. And then I have a pitcher with a handle. Yeah. And that handle allows it to sort of float in the water of the other thing. Mm -hmm. And then the water boils the wax inside kind of. And. I don't do great at controlling the temperature. I feel like I've overcooked my oil from time to time. Yeah. And that makes a less potent candle. But mm -hmm. 
You can cure an impotent candle with more wicks. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, is this a little weak? Fucking put four more wicks in there. <laughs> You've got a little just, bonfire going on. Just, just a baffling way to make candles. Just, <laughs> just after the fact, surgically adding wicks. Yes. Just, <laughs> just putting it in there. It's, it's cracking the glass. That's so not fucking tunnel, funny. and you will not have a weak no. scent. It doesn't care. Put Sixteen wicks in there. Yeah, It'll look it, like a birthday cake. I don't give a fuck. Shit's gonna work out. It looks like shit. Yeah, if you're if you're getting tunneling issues, you're pouring your your wax too hot. Let it cool down more, and you will not get tunneling. So there you go, no, Kyle. Like, you looking know what at we're us. talking about after the fact during the burn. That that's relevant. Oh, you're getting yeah, yeah. They they say that like tunneling when it dries and during the burn could be because it uh, you oh. pour it too hot. Because I when I made candles years ago, I did not wait for it to cool down the first time I tried it, and it was yeah. like pitting and like all, and it like it sucked pits. off the side of the glass. Yes, whereas, yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, mine had like I think there was like a. It like stayed on the glass and then it went it down and it formed a penis in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> if I recall what my first candles look like. Yeah, but but you get better at it. And so the answer, yeah, Kyle, my is no. Are less erect. You do not save any money, but mm -mm. it's fu they're fun to make. Like it's fun to melt the wax and like add the shit and stuff. And then it's fun to use them afterward. If you enjoy candles, if you like yeah. just like the aesthetic of it burning, if you like like getting to try your own scent combinations, it's fun. And it's not gay. Oh, I, I, well, I mean, I think you're, like, I think you're <laughs> using it to, to get pussy. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like that's a big part of it. You're trying to make the house smell like, you know, good things for like good, pussy. <laughs> well, you know, well, well, you you're trying those, to make the house those. smell like pussy, but but before you can do that, you've got to make it smell like an apple orchard in mm. in July or something. I don't know. Yes, exactly. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't appeal to me, but um, but I like candles. I've always got candles that um of some kind or another I'm, I'm not picky about the scent it could be like clean linen or it could be apple pie either way i burn scented candles all the time Same. there's there's one in my gym it's like I, I turn on the air conditioning fire up the candle it's got to smell like uh butterscotch in there for me to for me to get my pump on <laughs> butterscotch <Yeah>. that's, <laughs> that's such a <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good idea <laughs> oh it's a great <laughs> idea i love it <laughs> yeah i yeah, saw yeah. A, a video today where um this guy's talking to a, this guy, the guy had a bunch of Biden shit on his house and he was wearing the shirt too. And uh, mm, this guy's doing a street member. interview. He's like, he's talking to him. He's, he's like, so what do you think about immigration? He's like, I, what does it say on that statue of liberty? It, it says everybody come on in. Right. And he's like, I don't, I don't think it says that, but it says, you think anybody should be able to come? Yeah. Let them in. Well, I'm glad you got the attitude. Hey boys. <laughs> <laughs> This is a. Uh, I got three Hondurans here. Well, they're from Honduras. I got them at Home Depot. Now, Paco <laughs> there, and he hands him a bag of prescription pills. You got to give him these twice a day. And he's, like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's, like, he's like, they can't stay here. And, and, the, and the Honduran guys start coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, you can't stay here. Oh, no. Don't send us away. <laughs> fucking hilarious. Probably fake. Most of the internet is now. But, uh, but, but, but I, I I laugh my ass off. Yeah, it's hard to do those prank videos, I would imagine, and not be a piece of shit asshole like that black guy in the UK or whatever who jumps on trains and shit and invades mm -hmm. people's homes. What well, he yeah, doesn't yeah. know about this guy? There's this guy on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, the home invader. I've seen that. Um, he started out like his, his outrageous thing that got some headlines uh, was he would just home invade people. He'd just run up in your house and be like, oh, look at this piece of shit house I'm in. Look at this. Oh, my God. And the people are there like, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of our house. It's like, I'm not going anywhere. And he's like, I'm TikTok in your house. Wow, uh, and and then they like, I think you might have got arrested, and the judge like, you can't be on TikTok for six months or some bullshit, whatever they said. As soon as they let him go, he jumped on top of like a bus or a street train or something, so it couldn't mm. move, and took that over. Uh, it's a he's a real piece of shit. So there's that, and then on the other end of it, I like the people who do giveaways. Sometimes they're, mm. I really like the video where the guy's like, hey, turns out I can't afford this meal. Could you just spot me? You know, I, I'm I'm hungry, and they're like, "Yeah, man, I got you. What do you want?" He's like, "Oh, actually, how could you use a thousand dollars? How about that?" And then like they just, you know, I like those because they're just sweet and quick to the point. But that's not fun and flashy. I can only watch like one of those, so I end up watching some of the. I end up back on the police activity channel watching people die because that's real. Nobody's faking that. I watched a guy try to run across the interstate a couple hours ago and get hit by a semi. All right. Mm. Oh. It was a mess. It was a mess. Uh, that poor like semi driver. Dirt bikers versus cops. Have Somebody's you guys seen this up? at all? Mm -mm. It, 
apparently it's a YouTube genre because I watched a video or two till the end. Now YouTube is fitting me, feeding me all these angry dirt bikers. And even though I'm the motorcyclist, I can see that in every single scenario I've ever seen, the motorcyclist is the asshole. They're tearing up somebody's farm, sometimes on purpose, you know, it, while a farmer ineptly attempts to chase them on like an ATV or with a pickup truck. Um, sometimes they're riding their dirt bike through the city. Are they trying to get a cop to chase them? They might be. Hey, what's up? Be. Yo, what up, dog? <laughs> what it do? How are you, cats? How Come are on, you, guys, these guys, cats? Guys, guys, <laughs> we posted up on the block right now. Are you? Oh. Is that where you fought Harley? That same area? This is where this is where Harley and I did battle like men. Where you tr you taught you turned him from a. A tall Jew into a fighting Jew. I took him from um, from now to wow, we called it. We had a bunch of sayings like that that are kind of inspirational. I won't bore you guys. No, thank God for that. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for coming to us from, from such a rational place. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I always feared, that he'd come on the show and troll the fuck out of us. You guys can edit this out, right? Hold on. No, you, you look great, man. <laughs> Wait up. Pull up. This is gonna happen six more times. <laughs> no, not six more times, Woody. You thought you knew my routine. <laughs> now I'm actually trying. Now I actually need this Chipotle bin to prop it up. <laughs> this Chipotle bin to prop it up. So yeah. I just finished tracking the whole six weeks with Fish Tank. Incredibly entertaining. Oh yeah. Um, Jet, you did a great job. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. So what, what was the impetus of this? What made you want to get all these maniacs in a house? Can you hear them? I can hear them. You want me to repeat what they're saying word for word when they speak? Yeah, that would be the best thing. <laughs> no, all right, so I can't hear, so Jet's going to repeat what you say. They ask, <laughs> his ears are a little sharper. Go ahead. They asked okay. what the impetus was for Fish Tank. Yeah. Well, I think um, we just like to torture people because we're like trolls. We're sick trolls. Are you? No. No, you just thought it would be funny? Uh it was uh uh probably if I'm if we're being honest here, IP two prison stream. I didn't know that's where you got it from. IP two prison stream, shout out to Ice Poseidon. Um wrote this thing called Hell House and uh Jet picked it up and ran with it. Nice. So what we was have the to process? torture people and fuck with them because yo, I fuck with everybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, yeah, how is the tech? Like, it, yeah, I didn't hear what they said. When I so, watch the show, I wonder what kind of tech issues you run into while you put it on. Do people try to DDoS you? Where the the bandwidth was, I guess, more expensive than you anticipated. Like what? We what, were able to use what you call what they call themselves the elite hack squad. Uh, lizard squad. Lizard squad came in. And they, they basically made it so that there was an impenetrable wall of data around our shit. A firewall. And anybody who fucked with us got doxxed. Did you, did you get them <laughs> before you started or during as yeah, a we reaction? Got them before, before we started, we got all our haters and all our hackers. We got them before they could even make a move on us. Because we got eyes everywhere. It seems that <laughs> way. <laughs> we got trolled digitally. We got DDoSed a lot. We got... Uh, Physically, with physical tech attacks, we had a bunch of people come and try to beat us up and stuff. <laughs> Did you really? I saw you guys got swatted. Did you know? Uh, even even better than the swatting was, uh, we had these radios for the end of the show. Yeah. And uh, one morning, I just hear a voice I've never heard before on the radio. Yeah. He drove to us, got on our radio channel, yeah. and started broadcasting into the girls' rooms. Yeah. That was crazy. That it's was a, a physical tech attack. I'm that's pretty. I'm neat. glad he didn't show up because I was ready to do some. I was ready to do my thing. Mm -hmm. That's what where I was going to ask. Where Where are you doing this all? Like, what state? We're doing it in Swansea, Massachusetts. 06891 <laughs> do you Do you own the house? You rent the house? Yeah. No, we rented it. Rented. So, yeah, but right, there was a lot not? of damage to the house. Is that just budgeted in? You just expected to deal with that? We, we don't really do budget so much. We do <laughs> smash. We do kill. We do main. <laughs> We do steal. I'm sorry. And this time around, the stealing came out to be more than the killing. <laughs> the stealing covered us on the breaking. Oh, so I think you okay. need to go 
I think you need out. to take season two down somewhere hot. I think you need to go to like Sheriff Joe Arpaio country. Get yeah. yourself you know, four single wide trailers in a in a yeah. state that has a stand your ground law, so you can kill anybody that comes and fucks with you. And yeah, that can be part of the body. You I'll need armed guards. Bodies. It'll be cowboys. Boom. You can make the contestants ride bulls. Do it in yeah. Texas. Bulls, real bulls. Yeah. What was you, uh? Was it way harder than you thought coming up with shit to keep them occupied the whole time? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my, our original plan we had was like, okay, we'll need one person on site for eight hours at a time. That's eight hour shifts, three people. You tap, you tap in, you dap up your buddy. Here's what happened during my shift. I'm out of here. We, easy we realized, peasy. Yeah, we realized we need everyone there. It's that easy, there. guys. So we like lived in the basement and we had to like, it was a struggle. There was many panic attacks we had where we had to like figure out some uh some fake situation we had to to put on them because they were just sitting and yeah. relaxing so and we, we we had to come up with a lot of stuff it was it was tough work we had like a whole google doc like we planned it out too we had a whole google doc with like a fucking ton of stuff on it like a hundred page document. and then it was just clear that that stuff was not going to work didn't open it once yeah why yeah, like, can you tell me more i'm curious about that just because the stuff that you think the way you think something's going to be and the way it actually is never links up unless unless you're doing something stupidly simple that anybody could do if you're doing something complex then the way you think it's going to be and the way it actually is are not the same ever how many cameras did you have 10 10, ten cameras um i think we added one yeah 10 we ten added total. the confessional so 10 total 10 total <clears throat> when was you were it? picking the the people for it was it kind of hard to find a mix of the kind of weird you want, like something I liked the whole time is that Vance almost provided an anchor point of what a normal person would react to. Whereas like yeah. all the other eccentric people, was that, did you just get so many lunatics that you had to almost tamp it down? I think the hard thing was avoiding, avoiding people who wanted to be funny or wanted to be like in on the joke, which is, um, I mean, that's the that's the hardest thing about doing comedy, or one of the hard things about doing comedy in general is um, that whole dance about knowing what's happening versus letting things organically come about and um, avoiding people who think they're funny and are just going to throw ice water uh, on your nuts by being the most unfunny person you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did was it clear morning. right away? Like, like, did you know, like, within the first week that this was going to be profitable? That that you weren't just going to like have to mortgage your fucking house and sell your truck. Uh, yeah, like, like, first day, yeah. First day. We were yeah, like, we knew oh, that. Nice. oh shit. Yeah, we knew the first day that it was the biggest thing ever. Did um, you change awesome. your price points over the course of the show? Like how much a text cost? Did, did yeah, you adjust it that? Went, it went down. It got cheaper as time went on because um just just supply and demand. We were we were tuning it. We um, were trying to dynamically adjust it so that during the peak times the, the chats were more expensive. But it was also kind of hard to do that because the website was a little bit uh, janky, you know? Yeah, that's smart. The yeah. uh, the aesthetic of the website, I know you're changing functionality and stuff. I hope you keep like that, like like all those tactile sounds of switching between the cameras. All that shit oh, yeah. is great. Yeah, the season two website is going to be pretty much the same just with a few more features. But the website, which I would say is, that's Wes. Wes is creation. Uh, our guy Wes, uh, what's his website? Wes.codes. 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 He's a sick, sick man. He's a killer. He's awesome. Wes.codes. Great dev. Hire him. He's expensive <laughs> though. Wes, don't give him a discount if they say they're from here. <laughs> you don't give anybody a discount. <laughs> you get. No, if, if, full price. Code PKA means 120% price. <laughs> <laughs> Code PKA costs more. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was, were there any. I mean, one of the funniest times I laughed out loud was you feverishly sprinting through the house to try and keep John from tearing Letty's passport apart. Oh, Were there yeah. any other parts that really pulled you out of it where you're like, we got to, we got, this has to be handled. Like, no what character. About, what, what was the most harrowing for you? When people, uh, I learned that autistic males barricade themselves. Yeah. There were several barricading incidents where, People yeah, man. barricaded themselves in bathrooms or in bedrooms, and breaking down those barricades uh, was always tough. Also, uh, <laughs> the, when people got out of the camera, when they would hide in the bathroom, we had, we, for, for all I know, they're slamming their head into the ceramic 
sink and trying to like kill themselves. Yeah. So I had no idea. Um, you know, it was just dangerous when they got out of our view. Um, and there, there was a lot of moments where we were like, oh, sh-, you know, stuff that I, I you know. I, did you talk to a lawyer about that, about about liability? You know, like 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 what happens if that does happen? You know, what if what if some dude goes in the bathroom and porcelain? Yeah, he said he said um because we're sovereign citizens and we don't <laughs> we don't acknowledge the rule of law of U.S. law, what yeah. we basically could do is we could get passports to some other country like Moldova or something and That's just the go there and avoid whatever charges or whatever problems there are. So we got that covered. Yeah, that rented That's house good. is a seafaring. Got it covered. Legal situation. We got the basic covered, guys. We're good. Our house. <laughs> good to have Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> was that technically, uh, the, technically killed himself at sea, so I'm not culpable. <laughs> yeah, no. If I ever listen, if I ever, if you ever kill a bunch of people on a boat, you get off scot free. That's how the law works. But no, we did. Um, uh, the whole thing was done with no insurance. We just went commando because uh, we we tried lining up insurance beforehand, and I think after they after they Googled us, the the insurance premium that they wanted to charge jumped from ten thousand to some figure that we couldn't afford to pay so we Jesus. did it we did it uh with our a commando there with our balls hanging out in the wind um so that's pretty cool yeah we'll do i don't know how liability do companies too what's that See, i don't think this is good content but i i would set up the the fish tank to be its own company right its own limited liability corporation so they couldn't take more than the money you put in that yeah, it's it's its own company, but they can they yeah. can sue any individual at any time for doing it. You know, they could sue me. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Personally. And uh, the other the other thing is the fish tank account has the most money of any account that I've had, so they would get all the money. Yeah. So mm. yeah, it, it's it would have been would have been bad. Um, so we're definitely going to be strapped up next time uh, with uh, with better legal. I didn't what know was uh? Was the whole time. You didn't know that. Just figured that out. You didn't know that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Your life you was on the were, line. You uh-huh. thought you were insured the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were good. We were not. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's Damn, like that would have made it a, a more stressful endeavor. <laughs> That's like finishing a fucking car race <laughs> and those in the seatbelt. Yeah, I wanted you to be comfortable. <laughs> what is? Uh... I wanted you to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I want hey, I want I want all my friends to be comfortable. That's why I tell them there's they, they, hey, there's plenty of insurance. We're covered. <laughs> <laughs> of uh of all the people you had in as like freeloaders, the one who came off to me as the most genuinely insane was Airsoft Fatty. Is is any bit of him at all an act? He no, he was leaning into it. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was giving he was he knew what we wanted. He was giving us what we wanted. Um the time when he uh if you the real airsoft fatty is when we had him go tell the girls uh we had him go explain breeding. We said we said Chris, you got to go up there and give him your explain breeding. Talk about <laughs> all the types of breeding that you love. And then the girls, we told them that the first one to talk to Chris <laughs> would get uh, lose a point. So they're both like <laughs> giving him the cold shoulder <laughs> and he's talking about like well when the man sticks it in the you know, that's, all, that's breeding right there and he's doing all this like sexual it's like it's basically it, it looks like sexual harassment because they're, they're not replying to him and he's getting into the details of breeding and that made him that made him break character and he goes downstairs into the confessional and he's like i can't do this i can't talk to these girls but that's the real chris the real chris is like very compassionate like nice nice guy he does have like fat fat kid anger. Yeah. Which is that, that's the most beautiful thing in the world when a fat person gets angry. But he's he's a really good guy and he's he's also like he's funny. Like he knows he's he's not fully uh, the way you'd think he'd be. He's he's kind of funny, you know? He's good. He's just he's a good he's a good character. And we yeah. we got to bring him back too. I didn't know you had him explain the breeding thing cuz I did a separate challenge the next day. The the porn. Was, yeah, explain your top five <laughs> porn. Yeah. And then they had to remember all of it, and then we quizzed them on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> fucking funny. Dude, the, Did one of those things genuine... I... I was going to say, one of the things I really liked about um, that Ice Poseidon used to do is he had a robot that you could control with a camera on it and a knife. 
a knife. So he could you could you could take you could pay some money and you could or maybe everybody was controlling, but basically you could you know you could stab people and get upskirts with the robot. So I it was a Roomba, I, right? The robot. That's a good Isn't idea crazy? to steal. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got, you got an upskirt robot that can stab. <laughs> yeah, and you're That's not insured anyway. Fuck. Get the get the That's get code dot dev or you whatever the fuck his name was on it. It'd be it. easy. You get a stun gun on the end of that thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, imagine true. if you had a challenge where they had to crawl from like one end of a house to the other, but they're being attacked by multiple Roombas with tasers being controlled by people for a hundred dollars a minute. <laughs> can you control a Roomba? We can That's rig awesome. it up if we're making ten thousand dollars. I thought the whole point was that you just turned it on. Well, yeah, a Roomba's got like eight, it like maps a room. We just want a robot that can we can drive. It could be a race car. That you guys should bring car. in a. Uh, you guys should. I think I saw someone suggest like have a a psychologist or like a, an occupational psychologist yeah. come in. Like a psychic could be funny, and then you award yeah. them based mm. on who has the best future. Like just some horse shit. It could be <laughs> funny to make them like yeah. make them remember, participate. We gotta remember this: a, psychic. a Catholic priest. I want a Catholic priest, robots. but he's not a real priest. So he he spills the beans on everything yeah. that they tell. Like no, no, you can trust me. You can tell me. I can't tell anything. And then he nice. just comes out and is like, actually, Dave's a pedophile. Just so, we should lock him up right now. And they just you could you, you could probably <laughs> organize you could probably organize like a drag queen story hour and make them sit. Through oh, it. oh no no no! The contestants have to yeah. do a drag queen story hour. That's why you do it in Texas. Can, is, That's can, the hardest guys, challenge ever. Can one of you write this down? And just I'm actually doing it? it for you. Yeah. Will you text it to me, Woody? Thank you, man. I've yeah. got a yeah. I've got a list of <laughs> 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 things that as I was watching, I was That'd like, oh, this is a good idea. A drag queen story hour would be fucking so funny. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, it'd be so uncomfortable for everyone involved. <laughs> like it, I uh, also like uh, pir like pyramid scheme, multi level marketing people. If you could organize having like five of them from different companies arriving at the same time, yeah, and man, then yeah. make them compete for it. Hell I'm sure yeah. you guys have all these ideas and, and more. No, we don't. These are good. We wanted, to, we wanted to try to sell the house while the show was going on and do like <laughs> have a realtor come in and do house tours during That's the good. show. That's good. That's very funny. Especially if Airsoft Fatty is like bumbling about shirtless. Totally naked. Yeah. You just, you just, you know you, you're funny? just like, you're showing the master bedroom and he's like naked, but he's, but he's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. Peter Griffin naked. And so I saw a still of him hands over his head, could not see his penis. Yeah. Could not. He's totally censored. He's perfect. Yeah. That's our guy. Yeah. You don't have to blur it. He's pre censored. One yeah. thing, um, one thing we tried to do was uh, line up a clown. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is like clowns like actual clowns are, are they're mad like professional they take themselves really seriously so they'll you'll call them and they'll be like hi this is uh dave the clown how may i help you and uh we explain the deal that it's like a reality show and he's he's like i'll have to think about that let me think it over and i'll i'll get right back to you and then they like it's they, they don't want to mess with their image as being like a, a clown, a clown. Like, they all take it mad serious we call yeah. the three of them they're Dude, Jesus. clowns are the f biggest fucking losers on the planet. Woody's got yeah. a friend who's a goddamn clown. They call themselves <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> clowns all fucking year around. And they're, they're in like, the, there's like groups to defend them. They got mad when the Joker came out because they thought the Joker gave them a bad name. You're a clown. You're a clown. <laughs> yeah. I hate clowns. Clowns give themselves a bad name. Or maybe, a, do magicians take themselves seriously? Probably not yes, as serious probably, as a clown. Oh, magicians are fucking cool. Probably. You think or a slight or you'd have to get a, a sleight of hand artist who's like really high on himself, who really you know thinks he's he's the cat's pajamas. My friend's a clown. Mimes in there. You should get him. He's really tall too. He's like six four, six six. Yeah, yeah but he's a scary clown. He intentionally yeah. tries to be scary. They have PTA meetings about your friend. <laughs> I think being a clown's a little mean spirited. No one likes it. I would hate crime your friend if he lived near my children. Nothing yeah, like physical, but like we'd kill his grass and take his mailbox and stuff. Yeah, what else? What's what the equivalent of ideas? burning a cross to clowns? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll think that one over. Oh, I was thinking that you should come back season two as Dr. Jason Goldstriker and perform physicals. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do that? Like, yeah. I've got my doctorate. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Doctor, or That's come back as Doctor Jonathan Goldstriker. Never address it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I liked that. Well, I was, I was saying that Jet, we should do uh, if we if we get into this to where it's like ten seasons deep, 
and we're searching for themes. We should do one that's like a hip hop theme. Yeah. And we would all have like, very, we, I gotta be like, I come in like, yo, what's up? I'm J Strike. And we'd all be like, hip, hip hop, but doing the same shit. And it's just doing it to black people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're coming to you live from the dark continent. Yeah, from, yeah. from Kenya. <laughs> you rent a house. Yo, we in Queens right now. I'm J Strike. What's good? <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to season 10, man. That's going to be a good one. When is season yeah, two? Winter? 2023 oh. winter? Yeah, we want to do, uh, do it in the winter as soon as possible. Good. I'm, I'm really glad this was so successful for you guys because I don't think I realized like how much I wanted a different kind of content to watch at night. Like, And because it's so like actually organic, there, like it was, it was hard to look away because you're like, I don't know when it's going to go off. I know Airsoft Fatty's pissed about Damn. something. I have to wait and see. Like, you it's, got sucked into the Truman Show. I got sucked into the Truman Show, man. I was I, I was like watching along early on when everybody hated Letty. And I was like, dude, come on. She's taking the most shit. Give her props. Like, stop hating on, on this lady. Like, it was it, it was very entertaining. Very mm. good. Yeah, I think I, I, these were, two will watch more season contestant? two. My favorite contestant was, was Letty. What? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the yeah, girl? Yeah, did a good job, man. Yeah. yeah. She she took more <clears throat> abuse from text to speech and all that than than everyone else and she just came bouncing back yeah. every time. Yeah, she And really like did. just like you're getting no sleep in that house. It did it smell as bad as it looked like it smelled? Towards the end it, yeah. it smelled very very bad and the the cleanup people after our guys cleaned it up like after the preliminary cleaning was done we had cleanup people come in, and they said it was the worst they'd ever seen. <laughs> that was accurate. <laughs> but it's, uh, I think, it, it's uh, at the end, the fish head. That was the worst part. About really, me. really did a number on the spot on the place. Day three fish head was pretty rancid. The fish head did not yeah. do a good service there for us, our noses. Regarding Dude. the uh, the text to speech, like, because I I remember early on, uh, Sam, you tweeted like. I'm shutting down all the Sylvia fat comments. We cannot like let this be torture on our 46. Yeah. How long did I, that have? Like, did you shut down Texas speech for a lot of stuff for a while? The no, train, the point, the point was that it's supposed to be gradual. You don't listen, mm -hmm. but we're going to be doing this for six weeks. You don't have day, oh, day one guys. It's nigger <laughs> after every five seconds. You're fat. Kill yourself. You're fat. Kill yourself. Like that, that show lasts like five days at the tops. So yeah. we had to have it be a gradual rollout. Um, it's not of it's we're not making a, an alternative to gab like it's not a free speech platform it's a fucking tv show so yeah, yeah we had to kind of curtail the fat stuff in the beginning and then at the end we kind of let it let it let it rip and let everything rip. yeah let it fly there at the end but that's the building towards this crescendo of hell is what we were yeah. going for there was a lot of stuff that we uh that we didn't like go through i mean it's you're sitting there in the moment and someone's having like they're finally about to release and have this like big like freak out, yeah. which is good mm. for TV. And then someone says, "Your mom, uh, what would your mother think if she saw this?" Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna let that through. So it's it's part of directing is like <laughs> yeah. uh, not letting certain things enter people's heads. It's, as manipulative as that is, it's, it's also a timing yeah. thing. Yeah, timing. timing. Timing matters. That makes I think sense. Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is gonna be big for season two. You get people. Like just thirty six hours of sleep deprivation, and, and and people get real wacky, and you're already starting with broken people. So you <laughs> go to a scary to place. A, yeah, Jet, you were the, the producer. Was was how, that... how well they slept through all the noise. Yeah, they mm. af after like after like the first week, they were just trained to ignore it. Um, you know, they slept right through it. Even like the mariachi band sound effects was the the loudest sound effect you could hit them with. Oh yeah, um, so it wouldn't always wake them up. So they they really just like got accustomed, and uh, you know they just they the, really the mariachi up. band killed me. Like I <laughs> when 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 you kicked the the Asian guy who wrote a book about how to pick up campers, <laughs> yeah, and then you yeah, and yeah. then you brought in the new Asian guy to replace him, oh, and that God. guy that guy like didn't know what the situation was. I paid to play mariachi for him a couple times that night, Hell, and yeah. it makes me. Cause it's so fucking loud. It's so <laughs> jarring how it starts, and like he's clearly trying to sleep, and he's upset. Like it's, it's hysterical. Like, like <laughs> how, how did you find another Asian guy so quickly that looked just like that guy, but not you know with the? Hmm. 
It was uh, one of the guys who does the Twitter spaces. Uh, they, they would do a show, uh, like a community-driven show every night, like a watch party. He linked me to this guy. He's like, hey, this guy's a comedian. He's Asian. He looks like the other guy. Um, so I was like, I knew nothing about him. I did no research. I got his flight within like 24 hours. He was on his way here. And he turned out being awesome. Yeah. Uh, his real name's Tai Nien. I'm probably butchering his last name. Uh, N G. Y U N Yen. Yeah. Look him up. Yen. Uh, Yen. He's good. He's really funny. And he rolled with the punches and he played it up too. He was like, I remember once one of his meltdowns, we went and checked on him and he was like, No, I like what you guys are doing. It's art. The things you guys are doing is art. And <laughs> you keep writing good scripts, I will stay. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Ty, man. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Um, but for him, he had he probably had the hardest start because we put him in the shoes mm. of a monster without him even realizing. <laughs> yeah, we were, literally, we were like teasing the fact that it's summer camp week all week, <laughs> and then we're like, "All right, walk in with two bottles of vodka and say you're the camp counselor." <laughs> 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 and he just doesn't even know what a fucking ghoul he looks like. It's crazy how much uh, like um, happenstance happened. Yeah, like we had Chris and Chris Chin. And uh, Letty and Betty, yeah. And it's—I mean, I mean—I know we're intentionally trying to find people to replace them, but it's—they worked. The way it worked was crazy. Yeah. And then Lance and Vance. When we brought Lance, uh, Lance and the Vance clone, we didn't expect that we were going to start like a clone theme, but yeah. it just went down that way. And he did—he did like a mad good job too. Yeah. Lance. All like, of his he studied him for like a week. Copying Vance's mannerisms and like even wearing his clothes, like buying the same clothes as Vance. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. We were lucky to have people who were on the show who cared about the show a lot, too. Yeah. Like, the effort that guy put into getting down Vance, he didn't just show up like, hey, I want to get Twitter famous. Yeah. He was like, this is serious. I'm going to take it serious. He did a good job, yeah. man. Tyler Little, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out Tyler Little. Yeah, he did a he did a good job pretending to be Lance. The, when you started bringing in doppelgangers for everyone, that was very funny and surprising how, mm. how quickly you got it. Mm -hmm. um, it was, like... The amount of <clears throat> spitting was was shocking. There's a uh, lot of spitting. There was a lot of spitting. Which, the, the the airsoft fatty spitting, like I knew that was an angry spit because he like did that like like yeah. sucked up first and then fired it hard. And that I can't believe Letty handled it as well as she did. Like I, know. I, that I was would the, not that was the I, heavy one because he's didn't he spit more than once? Three times. Three yeah, times. Three, yeah. He spit on her three times in the face. <laughs> Jesus. That's yeah. crazy. It was That's, crazy. <laughs> That's spitting in crazy. someone's face you know, three times. Speaking of spitting <laughs> in the face. Crazy. Speaking of spitting in the face. Any romance possibilities on the next uh, fish tank? Oh. 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 <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> for season two, we're not letting anyone on that has a has a significant other. It's gonna you be called to be fuck single. house. <laughs> Welcome to the fuck house. You have to be a horny pervert. To get <laughs> no, that's per oh, airsoft fatty's gonna be a, a natural again. We were trying to get, we were trying to get Chris <laughs> laid, yeah, for weeks. Yeah, yeah, get him laid this time because when that yes. prostitute said that he smelled too much like shit to fuck him, that made me sad. <laughs> oh, 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 but she did it in a nice way. Oh. She said like she alluded almost that there was an ether about the air that smelled like <laughs> shit. Like, not the shit-covered gentleman. You need to find a prostitute with lower standards. Jesus. Yeah. That was a, that was a, that was friend of the show, Brandon Buckingham. Shout out, Brandon. Another cool guy. I don't, I don't know how it would work, but I almost want I almost want the contestants to think that they're getting on an airplane to go to another country where certain rules don't apply anymore, but they're really sitting, like, on a in like a fake plane rocking back and forth with airline sounds. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like with, with, like, black... And, and you're like... 12 hours later, you're like, all right, come out. We're in Cambodia <laughs> now. Anything goes, bitches. The Uber yeah, driver just, plays like Spanish music. <laughs> yeah. You can make him play Russian roulette where they, you know, you're like, yeah, we can do this here. <laughs> That'd be great. With a paintball gun. Big TSA. Yeah, with a, yeah. With a, we should yeah. put him on a fake space shuttle and tell him we're on the moon. <laughs> Guess, hey, guys, we're on Jeff Bezos' Atlantic Blue. What's this shit called? Blue Horizon? <laughs> they we're did on that. Blue Horizon. Cool. We're going to our moon base. They did that. That's a there's a reality show where they actually did that. They made the contestants think they were going up in the rush to the, to a Russian space station, put them in a fake ship and sent them up and they believed it. 
Wow. They're, they're oh, crying. Awesome. They're, they're crying thinking they're in space, and they're they're not in space. That's sweet. I don't even yeah, think we these gotta, we, we gotta do that to John. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just do it. We'll do a spin-off called John Goes to Space. And <laughs> I don't believe we're in space. <laughs> Dude, you're, I, I was, I, I was going to mention that. You, <laughs> your John is so fucking perfect. <laughs> like I was, I was dying laughing at the end where you would just go around perfectly, like with the inflection on his voice, it's like so, so calmly. It I was, <laughs> I wish I could talk like John all day. My favorite part of your John impression was that I knew that you were like sort of tired and stressed out. Yeah. And there's something soothing about oh, yeah. rambling like, especially like John, just John's voice, but also rambling like him. Yeah. So you'd be sort of self-soothing a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it became like a coping mechanism. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, and you gotta you gotta make sure you keep up with the whoever wrote the bios with all like the fun facts about the characters. Like the, the I mean, the best joke in all those was the European accent with with John's oh, speech impediment was... because I. I literally went into it like, oh, I wonder wh where he sounds like he's from. <laughs> it's like, no, no one thinks this is true. He said that to me. All like, He said my speech impediment often gets uh, mistaken for a European accent. He said that in his first interview I did with him. So Hell that was yeah. real. I, oh, shit. I didn't like make that up. That wasn't a joke. He said that. <laughs> I mean, is he, he'll probably pop back in for season two, I would think. Like there was a, a pretty good connection mm. between – Jason Goldstriker and John, pretty I think, emotional. I, I think we we probably um, there's like a uh, temptation to. I mean, I know I know what the fans want. The fans yeah. want like everybody from season one's back, guys. Here they are. But I think that like they don't know what they need. Yeah, they don't. Fans don't know what they need. We got to limit that. I think um, definitely mm -hmm. bring back Chris. But uh, we're not gonna. It's not gonna be like a huge rehashing of season one shit. That's. Well, I know you've got your your fingers in lots of pies. But is this like your main focus right now? Is this what you're excited and hyped to do? This is this is Jet's main focus. We have another thing that we were talking about today that's still too premature to to talk about, but that's another uh, thing that we're focusing on um, right so now. World Peace Two. Right now, we're doing World Peace Two. We're doing um, office remodel. We're doing merch. We're doing. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm so scatterbrained, I can't even remember what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, energy, drink. energy drink. Yeah, we're doing a drink. <laughs> um, What's it called? More stuff. You can. You, you don't have a name Zip. yet. Oh, like zippy water? You're gonna yes. get some of that? There you go. Nice. That, <laughs> you, you got your finger in a lot of pies, indeed. Is uh, World Peace Two? Is there a date on that that you've you've announced or anything, or still so much Probably. in the works? You're not sure. Probably eight months. Okay, is it? Uh, long, it's about fifty. It's about sixty percent shot, which is the hard part, and then the the editing is the time intensive part. That's going to take eight months probably to get it done. Is it a full length season like the first one? Like same number it's, of episodes? So, the first one we cut it. Um, the minutes. The constraint was that there were eleven minute episodes, so we cut it very short. This time around, I think what we what we might do is we might cut a version that's short so that people who want the sort of ADD world piece one speed get it. But then there's also going to be fucking like five times as much material that's in the longer form cut. So it's going to be long. Nice. Yeah. Is it like more fun than you had when you were working on it for adult swim? Cause I'm sure the, the total freedom it's, um, it's more it, the the lack of freedom at Adult Swim wasn't a uh, a huge problem, uh, but it's more fun for every other reason. Yeah, um, being in being in Atlanta sucked. Being uh, being on a set where the you don't really know what the people's motivation is. Like, there's people that are there. The, the people for World Peace Two. Anybody that's there on set is there. They're like hardcore. Like our. Um, the director, Bobby Hacker, the other director, Alex Schultz, the cinematographer, Alex Luke, Lu Alex Lucarini, uh, Mindless. They're all like insanely hardcore and they're doing and because they like want to be there, they're not just there for money. The stuff that they're doing is fucking so awesome. Um, everybody that's involved is like killing it, though. Um, ben, 
Taylor is our audio guy. He's like, he was like brand new. He didn't know, he didn't know sh anything like media related. He learned how to do like pro, pro, pro audio recording. He's so good. Um, fucking Nick built the sets. Nick, uh, Nick and this guy, there's sets that are, a lot of sets are built by Nick. A lot of sets are built by this guy, Joey, who I don't know if he wants to be credited, but he's a, they're beast, man. They're so fucking good. The sets are so good. Um, who else is involved? I mean, Charles and Eric, they're, they're the funniest people on the planet. Um, who else is who else is in there? How do you get Ed, that group of people um, together? Like, like, are these it, all extended acquaintances, like friends it, of friends? Like, no, it's just been people I've been putting together for years. Um, I mean, that's been the the quest of my the quest of my life has been finding people like Jet and like all those people I just named who are like um, just very special, like very special, locked in, talented, creative people i want to hear about the people that suck be like yeah we got jet yeah, but larry suck, larry fucking blows i don't know why <laughs> man, he's still i would around. love to kill some people who are you gonna <laughs> fire love... like like who who do you fire who's not making it to season two oh, they don't man, even know fired, yet we fired some some boneheaded retards <laughs> <laughs> we gave them the boot mm -hmm. and they're gone they're so gone Is god damn I, gone doesn't I, know it yet they're not even on the map right now. They're not even on the map. Oh, my God. Uh, something else you could have They're them do. They're not even on satellite view. They're so far away. They're so gone. I love it. I love it. I what love was your idea, how, Taylor? I love, no, I, was... I love that they're in another galaxy. <laughs> right. Yeah, they won't be poisoning your content anymore. Bye. Uh, bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye. <laughs> you heading out? No, what no, was your no, last just, idea, Taylor? I no. That was my message. <laughs> oh, I was like, well, you never know it, Sam. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, and I was, I was high, so I don't know how funny it would be if you dress them up in like 18th century attire for some sort of murder mystery party, and and they have to have to complete it. And there's punishments for people who don't do it well, rewards for people who do. Not as good as the drag queen story hour, but something to keep it keep it moving. That's a good idea. Well. Uh, I mean, one of the original ideas was to give people cards at the beginning that would say, like, on this card is a secret about one of your fellow contestants. Your job is to find out who it refers to. And it's stuff like uh, uh, felony manslaughter. Or, uh, <laughs> they've committed a rape or multiple rapes. Or, like, find out who the rapist is. It's we like a clue, it's but like, now you're scared. Like, Non-felon in the house. <laughs> yeah, you're the only non-felon in the house. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Stuff that's like a good that. one. Yeah, just ways to make it uh, even more unnerving than it already is in there. I guess. Mm. It looks uh, like it's getting dark over there. Well, uh, you, you guys um, want want to want to bounce? So you you want to hang around for the next smoke. two? You, we'll, we'll stick here for, around here for two hours if you want. Just look, it looks like it's getting dark over there. What time is it? Uh, I don't know where you are. Nine. They're on the Nine. East Coast. Nine we can do another Nine. 15 minutes. You want another 15 minutes? I would love to. You want to give us the boot? No, I'm not trying to give you the boot. I was just looking okay. like you're getting tired over there. Getting dark. I'm worried about your safety. Well, hey, I'm safe wherever I go. You don't need to worry about that. What if you were I'm accosted? One man safe, hey, I'm the one-man safety inspector. I don't know. What if you were accosted by street toughs? I'm <laughs> waiting for that to happen. Good luck. That's you like your chances? It's the best day of my life. <laughs> They might know moves Boom. you've never seen before. I one thing I it does seem likely is that there's going to be an enormous amount of boxing in every season. Is that something yeah, just, we can well, count on? <laughs> I I was asking. Uh, I don't want to overdo it, but it's for my own physical fitness, really. At the end of the day, you know. Yeah, I gotta you keep gotta, in shape. You gotta do your three by three cabinet punches, your fridge, <laughs> uh, your fridge ups. I think John <laughs> I, John got concussed three times by you. Uh, I don't know, but we had, um, <laughs> but uh, Cowboy came in and Cowboy's like a, Cowboy's like a, can do anything. We don't want to say what he is because that's getting trouble, but he's a, he's a real, he's the real deal. And he gave a, a concussion inspection. Yeah. And each, each time John had a concussion and he just told John that he was good to go. <laughs> and he, would say, he would look at, he would look at John and he would go, just, okay, good to go. <laughs> yeah. 
like an NFL doctor. Yeah. Right. yeah God damn. He's like a bad veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And John, you could tell was really getting into the boxing. He saw you as a true guru, like a, yeah. a master that was teaching him the, you, he really saw you as Andrew Tate adjacent. Well, I I know he's uh, I know he's got an affinity for the top G. Yeah. But now maybe he's got an affinity for the tippy top G. Yeah. Gold striker. <laughs> I think he does. I don't think he can go from gold striker back to to Andrew Tate. That's such no, a drop in intensity. Andrew Tate will always be John's um, John's hero, and that's okay. But along the way, I'll teach him how to how to fight. Dude, that dude posting the most fucking disgusting pictures of meat on his Twitter is oh, hilarious. Just yeah, the most that, isn't all he eats meat and it's despicable. It's like unrendered yeah. fat, not cooked. And he's like, on to a good another day. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, and then and then he retweets it too. Yeah, yeah. He'll retweet it days later and be like, This is the steak that I had three days ago. This big gray blob. <laughs> big gray diet, blob. Um, you need to eat. As many raw <laughs> meat as possible. Uh, <laughs> don't overcook my steak because it take away the flavor of the meat. <laughs> That's so perfect. <laughs> like Dr. Evil almost. <laughs> John's like Dr. Evil. Uh, I think... Uh, I Have you thought about giving the guys or the contestants like an overarching like continuing activity or project or something like that, that, you know, to take up downtime, like something over the course of the whole thing that gets graded or presented at the end. And if it's like a physical, tangible thing that brings a lot of, you know, terrorism into the mix in between. They should be able to people. fuck with each other's projects too. Right. Like, like we're yeah. all building these extravagant fish or ships in a bottle. And then you just <laughs> like, light light on fire. Fuck it up. <laughs> it's gotta be something that makes us money. So it should, it should be phone screen replacement. <laughs> you just make them like sit there and take like fucking fact-finding survey quizzes for two dollars an hour for some horse Hell shit yeah. market research company oh you can you can get uh you can get paid now to watch jewish films can or listen you? to jewish podcasts yes that's what they're doing in season two <laughs> listening to jewish podcasts the whole time fuck yeah <laughs> They're just listening to every episode of the Daily Forward News or whatever the fuck. I love that's it. great. Yeah. yeah, that's you're gonna you're gonna really get them, you know, nice and, and politically minded listening to yeah. NPR. Teach them a thing or two, and also get them in the wallet. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, get them in your wallet with your damn. That would yeah. sincerely, if you forced them to repair phone screens just for like a day, <laughs> something like that. That's yeah. so fuck. That's so we fun. Like, that. like we have to do it. Two weeks in, you come up to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, March. You're behind quota. Yeah. Quota. <laughs> that that all sinks in that it's not a challenge. We're just selling the phone. Hell yeah. yeah. Get people that don't that aren't familiar enough with it to know what a resounding success it was with season one. So like halfway through, you're like, guys, if you want the fish bucks, you're gonna have to meet me halfway here with these <laughs> with these phone screens. Mm -hmm. Like we you gotta you gotta get it. Yeah, that was a recurring gag we kept pulling, was trying to convince everyone in the house that the show is doing really bad. Um <laughs> Which I think is really funny. Telling them uh, we got to get out of this seventy to one hundred viewer range. Was one of my um, yeah, after after opening with the first day, we told them that there's guys, there's seven hundred and fifty thousand people watching right now, <laughs> all the way down yeah. <laughs> to seventy to eighty people. <laughs> yeah. It really turned everybody off. You got the, you know, one thing that's um one thing that's messed up is in the beginning trying to get them uh amped up for fish bucks yeah because it's just a piece of paper that has a piece like a fish printed on it yeah and so like convincing them that this was in indeed a real game show with like a monetary cash yeah. prize associated with it that was hard like i i know i just i could just tell even though they, they might not have necessarily said it i could tell that they didn't care yeah like they didn't think that they didn't think it was worth anything and then um six weeks later as they're leaving and it's like we've paid out fucking seventy five hundred dollars five times over and the, and like we're in, in the prizes total that were awarded was like eighty or ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars and i'm like god damn that was a huge waste of money because they would have <laughs> done it like they would have done it for nothing and it, they effectively thought they were doing it for nothing like they were doing it for pieces of paper you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was like 
the fishbuck graphic, if you type in fishbucks on Google Images, it's yeah. just the first thing yes. that pops up. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why they didn't think it was real. Because yeah. it's like an upscale, like, yeah. stretched. Like, <laughs> just the first part. thing you found. Yeah, I Googled fishbucks. And that was the first <laughs> was uh was the end with the the Willy Wonka shit the the fake out was that something you guys had planned the whole time? That was or, all sound. That was that was scripted uh, the day before. That was hysterical. I it was absolutely surreal watching that live and and like lose like cracking up as you're doing the like oh really like as <laughs> as they're reading it making a reread it louder louder Josie and. Yeah, it wasn't until you were like all these fucking cunts on Twitter that I like realized you were joking. But like, yeah, for for a, for a minute I was like, this is hilarious. But please, Sam, please give these people money. Like, yeah, that <laughs> please was, do it. I mean, that was one of the hardest um, in terms of like gu- being gut wrenching. That's probably the hardest performance thing I've, I've ever done because um, I I don't I really don't actually actually like messing with people. Um, I don't I don't like trolling people, but I'll do anything. <laughs> that's required to like get my point across. Right. Um, Mm. but uh, outside of that, I I don't want to like hurt people or mess with people, but, uh, going in there and then trashing the fan base in like a realistic way. So the, what I, what I said was, um, that I was this, this fish tank stuff is all shit. What I'm, what I'm filming right now, world peace Two. I'm making history, like, like going, laying into like, Mm egotistical like if my ego went totally totally off the rails and that was that's a very hard thing to do too because people obviously some people are going to see that and read in read into that and think that that's who i really am so i'm like really uh playing with fire in terms of my public perception that's how Mm -hmm. i felt like that's why i felt it was very high risk and then like being so mean to so mean to these two (laughs) girls basically stealing from them scamming them scamming the audience that was very uh just just gut wrenching to do all that, but uh, I'm glad it. I'm glad it worked out though. Yeah, yeah, that's a big risk. Well. That's scary. And uh, I didn't know that. Like Airsoft Fatty, he did a good job with his little bit part at the end with the. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, you could tell he was a part of it. Very funny, he, and no, I, it he, was. He wasn't in on no, it. No man. Wait, he didn't know. Was, no, he didn't know, and he was um, like that was that was almost the riskiest part because. I know that if you fuck with Chris's money, he'll he'll stop being afraid of you. He'll stop worrying about whatever the norms are, and he'll just he'll start spitting. It's real tantrum, <laughs> spitting whatever the worst thing that Chris can do is what he'll do if if you mess with his money. And um, he also like so Jet came up and prompted him and said, "Chris, you got to go in there and help Josie get her money." And when Chris went in the room, I heard him say, "It's okay, Josie. Just stick with me." Which told me that Chris thought that he was like in on something, but didn't know quite what it was. Yeah. And I knew that like cr- Chris improvising what he thought would be funny over what my shit was going to be, I knew that could be like ruinous. Mm-hmm. So um, that was risky too. Yeah. And that would have like ruined the whole finale. Yeah. And Chris also like he he stood up to me too. Like he was like um, I was screaming in his face, and he was like, "So really, we got to be childish about this?" Like he was standing up to me. Which also could have also could have turned south too. Mm-hmm. Like he's got he's got balls. He's a good good man. But uh, we had to uh, we just powered through it. Got it done. Yeah. At the end, you should just give him a bill for the rent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, charge them. <laughs> charge yeah. him for damages. Yeah. You, you're like you're like yeah. You want all this, but the after the rent, you know, you actually owe me. <laughs> You won the thirty thousand, but damn, every night here was two grand. I'm not. I'm yeah. not courageous enough to do that to Chris because he would. He his flip out would be something that we wouldn't really be able to handle. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we would he is. It. He's got a baffling amount of energy for someone his size. Yeah, he really doesn't sleep that much. He's not that lethargic for a big guy. Yeah, he's always guy. moving around. He's always. <laughs> ex- oh yeah. Except for when he's on the couch sleeping. Oh, the, wait, it was. It was. There were some times that like I would pop in in the morning to see what was going on and it'd be like, all right, fucking seven hours ago, Fatty was like yelling. There's no yeah. way he's awake. And then it'd be him like singing, <laughs> like booming loud at, at 7 a.m. And you can like go oh, to yeah. all the other cameras and hear it resonating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. We were like, hey, uh, Chris, that song's copyrighted, man. It's a TV show. Can you change it up a bit? Then he was like, 
to be a typical kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was singing a simple kind of guy, a simple yeah. kind of dude, because he Normal told him kind he, of dude. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he was, it was so accurate that you were going to get in trouble because you're totally on YouTube, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to season two. That's going to be super good and funny. Uh, World peace too. Is there anything you want to push, pimp? That that people can go check out right now. I'm sorry, on OnlyFans. So go to OnlyFans.com, search for Sam Hyde. That's going to pop right up for you. What about you, Jet? What do you got? I'm starting a fans league. Oh, no shit. Yeah. They got to you? They got you the deal? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the the creator splits the revenues a little inches better yeah. than uh, OnlyFans. I understand. You can't show butthole on Fansly, though. You can't? I don't know. No, no butthole. Uh-huh. Wait, is that true? No. It's a deal breaker, Kyle. <laughs> no, all those they make their bones on buttholes. Those sites, uh, it's, it's buttholes. I make my bone on butthole. The bread yes, you do. do you guys have That's anything you, sign that you want to plug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out the Painkill Already podcast. You're watching yep. it now. You should check that out. That's <laughs> PKA, right? PKA podcast. Uh, Look yep. it up. Buy our, buy our cum, cum pills. pills. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, buy, buy our cum pills. Buy, 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 buy our cum load. Yeah, no, no, you know what? We're next for season two. We're gonna have an enormous shipment of lock and load cum pills sent to the house, free of charge. You can charge Hell them yeah. for it. We and we created these. These make you bust enormously. Yeah, this well, is literally should, our you product. Charges for that. Okay. Don't send it free. Charge us because we'll pay for that. Oh, you're gonna. <laughs> we, you're want gonna these, we want these contestants coming a lot. You well, do. It, yeah. I know It'll you guys are comically large loads. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. everybody's single there now. Yeah, get yourself comically large loads. All the hell yeah. All the fish tank fans watching. Nice. So yeah. Exciting. Thanks for coming right, well, on, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'll check you later. All right, later, guys. Peace. I don't know how to turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll go, just, just Hold take on. us for, yeah, for your evening. Just mute it. and yeah. <laughs> One hour and 46 minutes. That's when he said the N-word over and over and over, Zach. Just, just so you know. <laughs> oh, did you write that down? <laughs> did we I, all? I, I realized like three minutes after that happened, I'm like... That was probably three minutes ago. Probably like, let me write yeah. that down. Um, <laughs> but we're over, so real quick, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew, folks. Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com, chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast. That link is below. Check it out. Kyle, you doing all right, bud? You're laughing. You're laughing pretty hard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, having a good time. Just having a good time over there. This episode also brought to you by Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe, folks, very high quality stuff. Are you ready for four? Are you ready for 420 again in 10 months? Makers of the smoothest hitting pipes, bubblers, and bongs, Freeze Pipe is running their biggest sale of the year going on right now. Who or why buy a Freeze Pipe? The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour, and as smoke passes through, it's instantly cooled by over 300 degrees. We're talking puffs so smooth, you'll check if it, if the bowl is even lit. No more chest burn, no more throat pain, no more coughing attacks, just icy smooth puffs that are easy on the body and full of flavor. Start smoking like royalty without paying the king's ransom by visiting freezepipe.com. And with massive sales going on right now, there's never been a better time to upgrade your smoking game. See something you like that's not on sale? Use code PKA for 10% off your entire order. That's the freezepipe.com to check out their sales or use code PKA for 10% off your order. Order today and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. 
Uh, said before last time, all of their, their pipes they've sent me, very high quality, good stuff, thick quality glass. I recommend go whole hog. Get the big boy. Get the big one with the biggest freezable chamber. That's what I, I recommend. That's that's my pro tip. That's how you treat yourself. That's how you treat yourself, folks. Exactly right. Yeah. And this episode also brought to you by RealDBG.com. Hold on to your dicks, folks. We're going to need some parental advisory Always warnings do. for this one. RealDBG.com has got the goods, and I'm not talking about candy. We're talking about 100 milligrams of Delta-8 infused gummies, 50 milligrams of HHC infused gummies, 1 gram HHC and Delta-8 carts, and a 650 milligram bottle of syrup that will knock your socks off. And forget about spring has finally come. RealDBG.com has all seasons covered from the dead of winter to the heat of late, late August and everything in between. These gummies will have you melting like the polar ice caps. The cartridges, they're like a supercar the way they outclass the competition. And so come on down to RealDBG.com. Come on down to RealDBG.com and get as stoned as the statue in your local park. Just remember to start slowing. Before you know it, you'll be soaring higher than Woody in his power motor. <laughs> what does that even mean? Stoned like the statue in your park? What does that even mean? Don't ask questions. I'm doing <laughs> you gotta the be stoned to get it. Get, you got to get stoned like a park statue. I get it. Uh, <laughs> use code PKA23 for 23% off your whole order. That's almost 25%, and that's a quarter. Fittiest Middle Eastern woman. How about we do that? Like, like, like that's something you'd come on. Yes, that's all. You know what? I'll go back and change the, the read after Please. this. Uh, PKA 23, 23% off your whole order. That's right, people. 23% off your order. So you can indulge in premium THC products without burning a hole in your pocket. Just remember, always consume responsibly. Uh, as we say all the time, if you're looking to kind of get started slow with it, uh, grab one of the cartridges, just vape. Uh, Delta 8 is the weakest of them. HHC is stronger than that. And uh, the gummies are very, very strong, as is the syrup. And so if you get those and your tolerance is not very high, take it nice and slow. Uh, don't overdo it, and you'll have a lot more enjoyment out of it and more bang for your buck. So check that out, PK23, 23% off. And finally, lock and load the premium, premium ejaculation increasing elixir taking the country by storm. Taking the whole world by storm, some people are saying. Taking the porn industry by storm. You know, I'm saying this. So, so people are saying it. Code PKA, code JIZ, and you can get 10% off lock and load. You can get 10% off protein powder, energy drinks, nitric pre-workout with no stim, pre-workout with stim. Get yourself 10% off mm. lock it. Yes. The, in honor of Pride Month, we have the exact same deal. Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so use coupon code G A Y, then backspace three times P K A, and you get ten percent off because we're allies and we love helping people. Also, come Juneteenth more. coming up, very exciting, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Use code June backspace four times P K A for ten percent off. Check mm -hmm. it out. Also, the energy drinks, very high quality stuff. Apparently, a lot of people are liking those. I really like them. Check them out. And that's all the ads. Cool. All right, I want to pitch my new show. I, I okay. feel like from, I feel like I did it. I feel like from was a good pitch, but season two has been a real letdown. Like maybe mm. one good episode, maybe one good episode's worth of events have happened in season two. You know what I mean? The rest of it's been filler and nonsense. I agree, one hundred percent. It took him an hour to cut that body open, and that's just inexcusable. Yes. I, like, like I said, I'd, 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 why are we going inside with it? Get your knife out. We don't need tools. Hack it open. Who cares if we make a mess? Let's see what's inside. It's not a fucking, it's not our friend that we need to be respectful over the way we cut him open. Like, oh, Taylor died. We have to find out what he ate. We need to know which mushroom he ate. Cut him open. We'd be so respectful. Taylor. Turns out it was salted meats. <laughs> Turned out it was just spoiled like, eggs. Good we God. Him. His heart popped. Like his, <laughs> <laughs> what sort of demon did this? <laughs> There's this There's new show called Silo. Yeah, this is enormous amount of cheese in this, in this cavernous midday. <laughs> where did he, this is where all the cheese went. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hung Larry over the missing cheese. <laughs> yeah, over the missing cheese. <laughs> Taylor's, Taylor's, colon got, got, is, <laughs> Taylor's colon has 18 pounds of compacted <laughs> cheddar in it. Nah, I look at him. He wasn't even enjoying it. Barely chewed. Like it's just, it's just like you can see the sedimentary <laughs> layers of crackers. <laughs> he made himself a whole charcuterie board with a week's yeah. worth of rations. Uh, this new show though, Silo. It's actually come. It's brand new. So What's I think sick Apple TV. Um, Fuck. So you know you you want to get on the just get on the pirate um, ship with uh, with with Woody. Yeah, um, our, our, that guy has the Plex. I'm going to send him my information Arr. so I get on the Plex too and get, <laughs> get on board with this thing. Um, 
I'm I pay for Apple, but so I have it. But it's also where for all men ca- mankind is. So it's worth having Apple. They have premier pro. They're the new HBO, in my opinion. They spend a lot of money on their shit. HBO cancels shit after two seasons now, like Netflix. The mm-hmm. new HBO is fucking Apple. They make premier high budget programming with A list stars in it. Uh, and that's what Silo is kind of feeling like so far. So it's really interesting. The characters, um, there are 10,250 some odd people living underground in a, uh, a silo. It's, I don't know how many levels it is. I'm sure they've said it, but it's hundreds of levels. And there's, every, there's a level with cattle on it. You know, there's, there's levels. Are they with, trapped? That's the thing. Up top is poison. And they, they sort of have this, this saying. It it's almost like, the, yes. Well, they speak what, English. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, it's almost like their pledge of allegiance. It's something. It goes something like, "We don't know why we're in the silo. We don't know how long we've been here. We just know that it's. Po- we don't know when it'll be safe to go up top. But we know that na- that time is not now. They have this camera view of what it looks like up top, and it's like a wasteland. They have this one view, mm-hmm. and when someone is punished, they're sent out to clean. And th- so they get sent out up top in a in a suit. And they, they, they clean the camera off so we can get a better view of the wasteland so no one forgets just how horrific it is out there. And then the poison kills them within like 30 seconds of that. They got like a minute or two to survive up there, and then they die. And you can see the bodies are, that just always there. there's some room for shenanigans in this, right? Perhaps. It, yeah. So, so our characters are uh, start off being the sheriff. He's, he's this uh, black gentleman who I like a lot. And Rashida Jones, she is the actor's actress's name. She was in the office. She played Jim's girlfriend mm, yeah. from Stanford. Oh, I like her. She was in Parks Love and Rec. Her. She kills it in episode one. She's 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 what got me so into the show. Uh, just fucking balls deep. There's a lot going on. It's a bit of a fascist society because we have things are so limited. You have to get permission to reproduce, and they take your birth control out, and now you can try to have a baby. Only like. 200 babies a year or maybe 10 babies a year it's something very s- mm-hmm. small and um there's a mayor there the, 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 there's a there's a sheriff there's law enforcement and i it's don't like want to fall vault it's it reminds me a lot of fallout there's a lot of fallout influences it reminds me a lot of planet of the apes how there's that forgotten you know we used to be they, they don't know what's i don't want to spoil too much about what they know because you're kind of fed that over time Right off the bat, you don't have this huge moment of exposition like in a classroom where and children, what happened then? Like they don't do that for you. So it's I'm in, I'm three or four. No, I'm six episodes in now. And Are you caught uh, up? episode seven comes out tomorrow. Uh, okay. And I haven't seen episode six yet. I'm on it. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm almost caught up. It is really good. The mysteries in this, they start off and they're like, hey, there's we don't know about this. We don't know about that. The next episode, they tell you. Next episode, they go down there and look at that. There it is. And you know, it's it, I, I was so happy that these characters are all intelligent. They all have conversations amongst each other. I do think one of the things that's happened, this isn't much of a spoiler, is that the people that they're they're letting reproduce are the more docile people, the people who don't mm. ask too many questions, mm. the people who go with the program and salute the flag, you know? It because all the characters seem like they're a little slow to to pick things up at first. They, they're little, they're slow to question the status quo, but slowly the status quo begins to unravel, and everyone starts asking questions. Our main characters, in particular, uh, it's real good. I, I can't recommend how it much enough. is out. One season, six episodes are out. Uh, the seventh episode comes out tomorrow, Friday, um, and hmm. I'm assuming it's going to be ten. It's been great. It's been great. Uh, there's there's three or four main characters that are quite good. And the, like every episode, there's more mystery. But then at the same time, we progress and we go do a thing. Shit happens. Uh, I, I'm really digging. And the budget's good. Like the silo itself looks cool. Like like, like it's it's uh, all their imagery looks cool. They have flags. They have like pins. All right, God damn it! How much rank. is how much is Apple? Eight dollars. Yeah, eight dollars. The first. Have you had it before? No, I've never had Apple. I'm pretty TV. sure there's a three month free trial, which is pretty far. Okay. Yeah. That gives me a lot of time to forget I signed up for that. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Apple sure they didn't think of that. It's, a, it's a, Dude, I bled money into Motor Trend for two years as an addition <laughs> to Prime because I wanted to watch all the old Top Gears. 
I watched mm-hmm. them all in like all the ones I wanted to in like four days in 2020. And then I like for- three months ago, I remembered to cancel it. I forget who it was. I, I kind of, I might've been the same guy, Twitch streamer. And I'm like, what? I, he quit Twitch like two years ago and I've been reliably giving him five bucks a month all this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Like I'll get an, like a thing on my phone. That's like, you have just paid four ninety nine, and I'm like, ah, at some point this month we'll rectify that. <laughs> <laughs> you charge it back? Damn! No, 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 not charge back. I mean, I, I, I will, I'll turn oh, off like, the subscription turn it, turn it at off. some point. Yeah, no. Yeah, I canceled. Uh, I canceled Netflix the other day. I've had it for uh, twelve years. I'm a twelve year subscriber. Uh, they, they, mm-hmm. they immediately were like, hey, don't do it. We'll, we'll, we'll take a little off. And I'm like, no, that's not the problem. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm done with Netflix. There's nothing good on there that I really want to watch. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, it's become a Seinfeld service for me. It's a Seinfeld service, and I figure whenever I'm ready to watch Seinfeld again, I'll give them twenty bucks and I'll watch Seinfeld that month and then take it away. <laughs> but it's I'm about just to do the too, same. It just sucks. And it has nothing to do with them taking the multi. I it actually them taking the multi um thing away. I would have I would have hung in there because I had I got like two hanger ons you know on my account. I don't mind that a bit. Hop on board, guys. Mm-hmm. But now that they're not going to get the benefit, it's like, hey, I I, I was kind of keeping it for them. But now it's, no, nah, we're, yeah. we're getting out of here. Because I'm certainly not going to have a Netflix at my house that doesn't work that I pay for. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. Like going scrolling through Netflix really is like just digging through a garbage can looking for like edible food. Like it's mostly just absolute trash. It's so and then like you'll, you'll scroll too. past something that sounds awesome. And you're like, whoa. And then you open it up and it's like it, Turkish and everybody's name is 65 letters long. And then it's like poorly dubbed. Like I, I find myself watching shit like that on Netflix more because it's like I'd rather watch a badly dubbed show that has like an interesting plot than just some stupid nonsense on Netflix that they're pumping out. Well, again, I can't recommend Silo enough. I love the mystery of why we're in the Silo and um you know, oh, and the, here's another thing. This isn't a spoiler. This, you learn this right away. History ends 140 years ago. That's all they've got because there was a rebellion, and in the rebellion, everything got deleted and erased. And uh, erased. Their technology, their, their technology. They have computers, and they have like an IT guy. It's Tim Robbins, fucking Tim mm-hmm. Rob, Andy Dufresne from um, mm-hmm. um, Shawshank. Shawshank. Uh, he's he's a little he's an older gentleman now and he's perfect for this role. He's just a piece of shit. Uh, he, he's such a he's like a nitpicker. He he runs the IT department and he's very precise about his job. <clears throat> but the computers kind of look like Fallout computers. They're kind of like these somewhere between a tube and a but and it's sort of rounded and squared off the way these tube monitors work. I really like that. I think it even has green font, uh, like like green you know it's text like a boot on the tube, screens. like those old yeah. What are they called like a CRT? Yeah, no, no flat screens, uh, no flat screen technology, um, and um, radi- You know, because they've been down there, we don't know how long they've been down there. It could have been ten thousand years. I don't, I don't know. But um, again, one hundred forty years ago is as far back as history goes, and they don't know much of anything. What well, you, you as this time sort of goes on, they don't know the basics of what life is like outside this bunker and the things that wouldn't exist there. Like they've never seen more water than would fill a sink or a bathtub. How would they? So that's oh. uh no, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Big so old. real fun show. I'm really loving it. I, I'm gonna watch it as soon as I get off get off here. I'm I'm hyped. Well, about so I'll it. I'll start that too, so I can I can chat about it with you. I, you I won't did regret watch it. Some, uh, I started Barry again a few oh. days ago, and I'm like in season two of that, I think. Uh and like it's good I restarted it because I like did not remember a lot of it. I had I was like only like half paying attention when I scrolled like watch it the first time it's a good show that guy's a good actor bill Hader. he's amazing bill Hader's yeah. so good um his eyes his I'm eyes very, very expressive bored by all of the parts of the show about acting um mm. other than the couple handful of scenes that are like bill Hader doing really good when he like utilizes his uh fucking you know murderous PTSD. shit uh, yeah but other than like every the main uh girl character is so grating and difficult to deal with when she's on screen. Yeah. She's so, so disinteresting that it's hard for me to keep, like, I'm so dis. Barry, there's such a chasm of what Barry's doing is interesting and what she's doing is not 
that when she comes on screen and if Barry's not on there with her, it's like, I'm not even paying attention. I don't yeah, care about her it. little acting jobs. It doesn't matter. You uh, know what I could do? I've, I've actively fast forwarded through multiple acting sections of it, and I have not lost any part of the show. I don't think. I don't. <laughs> I don't think. How would I know? <laughs> I mean, shit. <laughs> You're um, simultaneously I, telling Kyle you like his pick and hate it, and he's like, "I'm glad." Sad. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the no. I just go up. Show... I'm firing through this scene. <laughs> <laughs> The best parts of the show are definitely Barry uh, yeah. Fuchs, who's his mentor slash like manipulator, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Bill Dotrieve, and, and, and Bill Dotrieve. No, that guy has had some. I love him in everything. He was so good in um, Office Space. Um, oh, brother, where art thou? Yeah, he's the little dwarby guy in Office Space. I burned the building down. told you I could. He's the he's the blind DJ in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? They come in and they they want to perform. He's like. We heard tell her you you pay five dollars sing into a can. Hey, yes I do, yes I do. Now how many are you fellas? There's three of them. Oh, they, there's five of us. <laughs> they're, they're charging for, for like people that aren't there because he's blind. That, that character is great. I've always liked him in everything. And Bill Dotrieve, I when, the, when is that coming back? They, they, they're redoing it, right? I, I talked yeah. about this a while back, but like nothing seems to have happened. I don't know oh, when they're bringing it back. I'll watch the it. The writer mm-hmm. strike is gonna fuck it up. As long as Mike Judge is there to, mm-hmm. to to keep it under control and to and to keep it, you know, true to form, true to King of the Hill, hopefully it'll be good. You don't want a I time don't jump, though. No, if there's a time jump, I'm going to be really upset. I don't it, want an adult <clears throat> Bobby. What if what if they? Yeah, you need Bobby as a kid. You need them all. What if Bobby of, was dead? Know, that would be awful. Why would they kill I Bobby? I don't know. I don't Dad, know check Bobby. out this jump. Bobby, I, no. I, mean, I always hated Bobby because he's such a fucking like, you know, he's he's a loser. All right, maybe he's not a loser, but but like, you don't want to be Bobby, you know? Like, you don't you yeah. don't want to be Bobby. You you just kind of t- so I'm tolerating his shenanigans, and I'm I I always identified more with Hank, even though he's a bit of a like, I don't know. He, he's yeah, he's kind of lame. I remember. Yeah. What what what's uh, what was that whore's name that wanted to fuck him? She's like no. One says no to Debbie money bag. Yeah. Like, I just did. And drives away. Just I like did. that. Yeah. I love that Hank is like a faithful man that, that the hottest yeah. chick in town is throwing herself at him and he's just running from her so awkwardly trying to <laughs> trying to get away. Trying to and he's heading back home to Peggy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, her, her giant she feet. Peggy's Peggy? disgusting. No. No. She's not hot. Pe- Peggy's like ugly in every imaginable way. She yeah. she just she's, she's annoying. Even, yeah. She has to get these special shoes, and it's a whole conspiracy that she goes through to get them. Um, she has them special made and like a hundred miles from her house or something like that. And like I think they go through this this thing of changing the number, the size, so no one knows that she wears like a size twenty seven, yeah. <laughs> something crazy. They're these big clown shoes. Yeah, and you know Peggy's a fraud. For some reason. I thought she was like Marge Simpson. Marge Simpson doesn't play a hot character, but she lets her hair down every once in a while and puts on something a little tighter. And you're like, oh, actually, I see it. I see. Oh it. yeah, Marge is hot. Marge is hot for yeah. sure. Uh, and I, like, I like Marge a lot more than Peggy. As far well, they both they both do what they're supposed to do within the context of the show, right? Like you need Peggy in King of the Hill to be that annoyance that kind of you know, antagonizes Hank and Bobby in the neighborhood and creates conflicts at times. Yeah. You know? Remember when they, I think they shook hands at their wedding or some shit. It, it's it's so it's so fucking. I don't know. I always liked King of the Hill, uh, but but I I wasn't in love with it like 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 you've always been. I I've never done a rewatch. I haven't watched it. In, yeah, you got it after you. Uh, I'm I'm jumping to Silo. You got to jump to the King of the Hill and. Uh, Simpsons again. Yeah, it's, it's 1997 and Fox is on. Simpsons. Oh. I'm I'm bummed. Neither of you guys like my shows. I, you know, I I like um well, I like Ted Lasso right now. Oh, that one, yeah. And uh oh, Succession is the other one. I yeah, mean, the last season. Those are Succession. very good and well liked shows. I wanted to like it. It's not um so it's nothing about your taste in shows. It's just that like, I don't know. Those time. aren't. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> um, those are very good shows. I'm I'm looking forward to the boys coming back. I'm worried this writer yeah. strike is going to push some of those shows that we really enjoy, but seem like they are on like an 18 month rotation, even further to the point where t- people start getting old. You is know, it, like, so, like like the guy, the cast of the boys isn't going to be young forever. Like if you, if season if the next season is a year from now and the season after that is two years from then, it's like 
Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Boys did something out. oddly smart. Most of them aren't even that fit. They just wear superhuman costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, the A train's pretty fit, but even he, I think, it's some of its costume. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to that show. And like I mentioned to Taylor earlier, but um, For All Mankind, I'm I'm psyched to get back into For All Mankind because I don't know if you remember how that ended, but Margot was in the had defected to the Soviet Union. We had skipped forward to the, the mid 90s or so. Oh, well, fuck me. No, it's okay. What? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, assumed you finished the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was thinking of watching that with Jackie. Starting very over. good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that's uh, to me, that's one of the like triple A titles that's on TV right now. If I was gonna make a top 10 list of shows that are actually on TV right now, not the old shit that we will re watch over and over, that would definitely be in the top five for all mankind. It's so fun. I like those characters, I care about what they're doing, and I, I really enjoy that alternate history thing. It drags um, a little sometimes. Yeah, you know, I don't remember I, it dragging, but here's but maybe. a storyline. Uh, I think you you've complained about it dragging in some of the seasons where you're like, you know, they haven't gone to space for like nine episodes now. This oh. is a show about going to space. You're right. I remember saying that. Yeah, yeah. I got some rose colored glasses a little bit, but just to me, the the highlights of that show are definitely enough to 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 make me love it. Um, uh, the other one um is that I've never watched, but it's alternate history is Man in the High Castle. Did you ever get into that? I maybe the first season it's yeah the I maybe the south winds a civil war and that has an no. impact on world war ii how does it go well i i've never watched it but i i know that the united states loses world war ii and ja japan and the nazis split the united states and japan has i'm sure the west coast and and obviously in the and germany would own the um the east coast and I think they got like literally split in half down the middle. And so the U.S. is living under that Nazi occupation. I think the Statue of Liberty is maybe replaced with a Sig Heiling statue of some kind or something like that. And it's like full on nat Nazi flags flying. They should have uh, split it on the Mississippi River. It makes way more sense. They, they may have. Mm. Um, I, I just I just one time uh, glanced at a map, but I've never gotten into that. But it, it's honestly it kind of seems. Oh, there's North America still hanging on there in the center, huh? I think that's maybe what that's representing. Uh, in the Midwest, you know, you've got the orange of Alaska I'm, down to the. I'm imagining Japan being the orange side and Germany being the red. Yeah, yeah, as well. Oh, oh, when you're saying the gray is us. Yeah, yeah, like, like what? Oh, hmm. Mexico, perhaps. Oh, maybe, or maybe it's just the unaffiliated nations there. It's not a great map, but yeah, I um. <clears throat> I've never gotten into that. I, the reason is, I kind of feel I, I, we won that one. <laughs> like, don't take. I don't want to see us take. I don't want to see that one taken take away, away. That win, you know. That's it's. You know, yeah, that's America's I also don't finest victory. We single handedly won it. They were all about to die until we got there and rescued them. And they if were. I recall correctly, the Russians and the British and the French, they just thanked us for what we did. Um. Well, the British and the French certainly did. They're, they they paid us back for 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 a long time. Um. You know, we we that that would have gone very differently without the United States intervention because the British were starving. The British didn't have pilots. The British didn't have planes. The British didn't have anything. They were done. They at, when they, they when they got ca uh, at Dunkirk, the entire British army was trapped on that beach, like like all of them, and they were going to die. Churchill orders. I think there's four four thousand or six thousand men at Calais, which is um, further down on a French uh, beach. He orders them to to run up and delay the entire German offensive for as long as they can so that he can get the men off the beach. That was Operation Dynamo, um, where they uh, they mobilized the entire British um, civilian fleet, hundreds and hundreds of that boats, anything 30 feet or longer, I think, and sent them to France and just picked all the guys up. They uh, the they didn't think they were going to get any of them out at first. Churchill's like, what do you mean? You're telling me that I've lost... The entire British professional army. Yes, sir. Jesus, boys. What if we didn't do it? Because he just took over. Over 300,000 soldiers were rescued. That's a huge yeah. number. That was just the Brits. They're, 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 the, the French were there getting their asses eaten. The French had capitulated. That sounds fun. Right away. Uh, it's, um, and, but, 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 but they were fucked without our interve intervention. Well, we wouldn't even give them the planes. Yeah. There's this real fun moment um, in um, 
in, in a movie about the whole thing where Churchill calls Franklin uh, Roosevelt. Uh, and he's like, hey, times are rough over here. Can you, can you, if you could send us 50 battleships, even 40, 40 would do. He's like, ah, you know, we, my hands are tied with that treaty I signed last year. I, there's nothing I can do. He's like, all right, well, what about those P-40 fighter planes that we, we bought from you? When can we get those here? Well, you got me again there. Uh, hands tied. You know, I can't, can't get those to you either. I'm not allowed to, to, to ship military armaments by sea anymore. Or, or yeah. so I don't know what to do. Like, but we paid for them, you know, with the money we borrowed from you. <laughs> <laughs> and that what they did was, he's like, well... We could drive them within a mile of the Canadian border. Remember, Canada's part of the British Empire. We could drive them within a mile of the Canadian border, <clears throat> the fighter planes, and you could send men with horses over, nothing with a motor, and you could tow them back to Canada. <laughs> horses? Did you say horses, Franklin? <laughs> well, you could push them. They do have wheels. <laughs> and that's what they did until you know Japan attacked and ruined the whole fucking thing. Yeah, that was a strategic mistake. Yeah, and then we started sending planes and pilots and everything else they need. I was reading about this Polish fighter uh, group that fought in the Battle of Britain, and their numbers were like 20 times more efficient than any other unit uh, in mm -hmm. the Battle of Britain. And uh, I watched this whole documentary about how the Polish had this. They would have 6,000 um, applicants for the Air Force Academy, and they would take 100 and, and they would base it a lot mostly on eyesight at first and aptitude. And so their guys were like fucking eagle eyed. The hundred they picked were had incredible vision. They would always spot planes and they uh, they had had to fight in shitty planes against the best of the Germans. So when they got to the Battle of Britain, these guys had 5000 hours of experience, like a fucking video game pro. And mm -hmm. everybody else had like 100, 150, 300 hours. And uh, their record was insane. I don't know. I, I can't remember off the top. I never of heard that. about that. Like, That's really cool. Yeah, it's like the uh, 303rd uh, Battalion or something, like 303. That number's in my head. I've been... But there was, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, nah, go ahead. I was, it was a topic change, kind of. Yeah. Figure. I've been following the Ukraine war. The big counteroffensive has kind of started. And uh, hmm. it's not easy, it would seem, to uh, to take all this land back. Now, they're getting land, right? If you guys remember, Russia, like 100 meters a day just you know, marching forward. These guys are taking 2000 meters a day, just kilometers grabbing it. They're grabbing high land too, you know, like the strategically important land. But I'm watching leopards get blown up. Ukrainians dying. One. Uh, maybe you're it's right. One. Um, uh, I'm watching uh, that dam got blown up. They're, they're like trying to rescue people from the flooded areas and they're bombing utility uh, artillery at the rescue mm -hmm. efforts. These aren't soldiers or anything. These are just civilians in houses. They're in boats. Yeah, like bad in boats. boats? Oh, they're boats. in boats. Because it's all the town's flooded. flooded out. The town's yeah, flooded. Pieces. They're in rowboats. And these people are in like the second story out their windows screaming for help. Well, artillery. Can't wait for the movie. Fires in. I can't say the word artiller artillery. Aha. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Artillery is just raining down on the civilians in these flooded out towns. Yeah. And it's just like, these are hard days for Ukraine right now. And I guess what happened in the fall was when the Ukraine counteroffensive really launched, the Russians ran. So they were getting 15, 100 kilometers in a day, 60 kilometers in a day, like great big successful efforts now they're getting like two which is good but you know you really set expectations in the fall where you know the russians would just turn tide and start running scared and that doesn't seem to be happening there's fights well they got to mine as they go like, like, like i've never i knew this mm -hmm. I, that's the big thing it's got to be right like like that area is saturated with anti-vehicle and anti-personnel mines and they've got to go through that and they've got to destroy I, I i was watching um you know, like six or eight Ukrainian vehicles try to cross a field. Mostly they're running into mines, you know, like, like if they can't deal with the mines, then they're never going to make those big multiple. Is that what destroyed dashes. the leopard tank? No, artillery strike, an artillery strike on an armored. Uh, Look at uh, him group. casually pronounce that Killed word it. like it's easy. <laughs> artillery. <laughs> is it? So it, it's, it's losing a leopard 
a huge deal because one hadn't been lost before. I, that, oh, so it's the first one I know of, but the, so I'm technically, sorry, but, it's the only it's the first leopard to ever be destroyed in uh, armed conflict by a hostile true. force. It is true. Uh, here's another little fact: and and uh, the United States Abrams has never been destroyed by enemy uh, contact. It, yeah, I was. We've, I, we've, driven, I, I, we've I, driven them into rivers and killed the crew. They've we, been hit, and then the blowout box has gone off. I, I believe you. I'm just. I think I'm, there's some so friendly surprising. fire incidents, and there's also incidents. Of course, this is. I just read this today, so I don't know what's mm, true. I believe, but um, the Americans have destroyed their own Abrams to prevent them from getting. Like they said that the enemy didn't get them, oh, okay. but uh, but the way Kyle phrased it, I is the same thing that I've heard, which is an enemy is never destroyed okay. in Abrams. Leopards yeah, are that, German anyway, right? Yeah, they, they're actually the tank German. that was exactly designed to do what those tanks are being used for right now, and that's fight a war in Ukraine. Um, but back mm. when the you know they, it was designed in the eighty or designed in the seventies, made in the eighties to deal with the Soviet Union and a potential you know rush across Poland trying to trying to fucking take Europe kind of situation. There's Leopard ones and Leopard twos. I think they've been sitting fairly significant numbers. Like there's a couple hundred there are being sent at least, maybe two or three hundred. You gotta remember the Russians have another five or six thousand tanks left, though. <laughs> yeah. It takes a huge kill death ratio to do this. Or you'd have to hope that the Russians don't need to run, fight to the last tank, you know. But it's uh you know, the Ukrainians are taking land back. It's going You know what I do? It's just hard. What? If I were president, I'd be like, hey, China, psst. how about this? We give you half of Taiwan, and you invade Russia from the other side. I they say I do. no. Oh yes, we, we take all of Taiwan, and you try stop us. Yeah. Well, we, well, I mean that's been war game. They lose that every time. If it's China, we're not gonna, we're not gonna d- d- go to war with China over Taiwan. We will absolutely go to war with China uh, uh, over Taiwan. We will, and we will not. Want to bet? Yes. I mean, you, think gonna, have a, you will think we'll have a war with China over Taiwan? You don't have to blow up China. We're going to defeat their uh, invasion flotilla or whatever it comes. It's going to be a sea-air battle, and we're going to win it. And it's going to be a high attrition rate. It's been wargamed a bunch. We know what's going to happen. So Maybe. Hope not. Hope we don't have a war with China. How do we get there in time? I guess we see them be- before. We're there. Then. We're there right now. We uh, have, okay, we- so I, I acknowledge that, but... My suspicion is that if we were going to go with war with China, we'd want to be even more there. We 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 we're there right now, ready to win. Really? We're right, yes, absolutely. Taiwan's a fucking missile island. Uh, uh, w- th- that uh, we have a missile fleet there. <laughs> we we drive between um, Taiwan and China and mainland China constantly. That's the South China Sea that they're so fucking pissy we about. Sail, you mean? The ships drive, Woody. They, they, oh, they, have, they have wheels these, now. These are driving. <laughs> the modern naval vessels are go, go down to the sea floor. They have I was wheels. unaware. Okay, my to combat okay, climate well, change. I, see, I'm a seaman. So you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. That is uh, the you first swim. swimming competition I ever yeah. won. You He's might seaman. swim and all. He's familiar with boats. Seaman, we yeah. just drive across the ocean floor. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think we're there in significant numbers to win. I think the idea right now is that it's a, it would be a bad idea for them to try to land. They've been b- building their uh, their Marine Corps for years, though. It's really interesting. The drills they run are invasion of Taiwan drills, where everybody gets in landing craft, goes across and everything. Um, but we're there in, like, enormous numbers I still think, now. So China, as far as I know, hasn't had a war in a long time. I, I think their entire military command has never fought a war. And my suspicion is they get a lot of shit wrong. They shit or, on us in Korea. They sent, I don't know how many, I think it was 20,000 Chinese is the number in my head mm-hmm. against one, I don't know the military like numbers, and but it was like one division of Marines or something like that. We were doesn't... farming them for XP, but they pushed us all the way back down to that parallel. There goes, you know, there was, we were dying. They destroyed us. They won. There was 20 to, 20 to 1 advantage 50s. or something like that. They got a then, lot more yeah, people than we do. That's when MacArthur wanted to nuke them. He wanted to nuke the Chinese all the way back to some the Yellow River, maybe. I hope that's not racist. I think it's called the Yellow River. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think he wanted to bomb them back to there. and, uh, and <laughs> To nuke them back? 
Yeah. It's well, still I mean, it what was, I said holds It was 1952-53 or so. We thought of uh-huh. nukes a lot differently than we mm-hmm. do right now. He Very wanted casually. to tactically, yeah. he, you know, 15 or 20 or so, you know? But make that... Say, all right, so let's acknowledge that. In 1952, uh, we had a real hard time with China. Indeed. That tells me that almost no living person in, like, that was 70 years ago. So, or 71 years ago, if my math is right, might be. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so none of these guys have battle experience. None of these guys have engaged in a war before. They're just, like, watching other people do it, reading old books. Their tactics could be wildly out of date for modern machinery. Their weapons are all untested. They're all just copies of our Chinese copies of our shit. Hopefully, they're good at copying stuff. They're also bad at copying stuff. It's all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I hope we get to find out. That'd be cool. You know, I'm always down for some some cool war you hope stuff we get to, to find out. <laughs> well, you know, I said last week, like I hope somebody drops like a little nuke over there, like 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 not a big one, but but like I want to see a mushroom. I want to see whatever the most powerful nuke is on the moon. Mm. Somewhere that like it's even ground, it's not going to hurt anyone. Even no, ground, no, like on the moon. Like, even ground is in like no, it's not fucking with anyone and causing a war. Like it's not contested oh. in the way that like if you tested it off the coast of Japan, they're not going to be stoked on that. Like oh, there's actually you a, could do it actually, in the moon. Yeah, there's a treaty against doing that. They can't stop us. Okay. It's our treaty. We agreed with the Russians though. Actually, that might be out of date because I know the Russians didn't sign back up to something recently. And we were like, okay, well, we you you're no longer we're not going to update you on our uh, ICBM tests, and we're not going to allow inspectors here. They and there we just get rid of the moon. Get rid of these pesky tides. Uh, we same same height all the time. <laughs> it's com- the, the, the beach is comfortable enough did to you, move your chair. Did you watch that horse shit movie Moonfall, where the moon falls into? Oh the my, that's fairly recent, right? Like two. Halle years Berry old? is a goddamn astronaut in this movie, and I, she's I, backed I, up by fucking Sam White, Sam from fucking uh, Game of Thrones. And uh, I can't remember who the, the white man is, is. Is he playing the moon? I'm sure they had a low <laughs> white man to fill in the gap between those two, but I can't remember who it was. And uh, the whole movie, like three quarters of it's a Roland Emmerich movie. He did like Independence Day, 2012, all those great. Yeah, terrible uh, movies. One, yeah, yeah. The gay Batman movies. He's a gay man himself. That's why the Batman's nipples were all weird and the cod piece zoom ins and everything. I've seen those. Yeah, you want to avoid those. And uh, so three quarters of the movie, the moon is just falling at the earth and, you know, the gravity's fucking everything up. And they're like, oh, no, we can't launch the spaceship to to save Earth because it doesn't have enough fucking juice or whatever. And it's like, oh, but look, the moon's going to pull us up. If we launch right when the moon starts pulling on us hard, we can do it. And Halle Berry's like, good, I can launch the space shuttle with my phone here. So everybody get in. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they launch the space shuttle with one button press by themselves. And they go up into space. And then apparently... They just have like a little shuttlecraft they hop into that is so fast, maneuverable, and has such incredible range that holy shit! What is a Star Wars like Star Wars style shuttle, shuttle? The moon opens up and they go inside, and there's like an AI inside the moon, and it's like it's got a, a fucking collapsed fucking dwarf star inside of the moon. And, and it, it, there's a whole backstory where humanity was a galactic society, but AI turned on us. And so, you know, we had to go back moon. to the stone. Yeah, yeah, it was hiding out in the moon. It was awful. You, you watched the so whole bad. I saw this movie, too. No, I remember I 10% that. of what Kyle remembers. Yeah, and I didn't watch it. How do you know so much about it? I watched a 15 minute video about how bad it is. <laughs> it is a terrible, <laughs> terrible movie. I. I even when I watch a bad movie, I don't usually feel like I've been ripped off. Yeah. I felt hoodwinked. It was so <laughs> terrible. I wanted my money and my time back. I should be an hour and a half younger if this world was yeah. more fair. But it, but it is so bad. Dude, that sucks. Getting like an hour into a movie, pausing it, seeing there's 27 minutes left, and you're like, I've been had. I've, I've been had. Like, it's you got so me. so bad. You, 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 there was something interesting 45 minutes ago. It'll never be addressed. And that's uh-huh. the there's to be more more good content out there. Well, I'm gonna watch this silo shit you recommended. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I promise you, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be into this. It's also got um the only thing I can remember this actor being in because I don't know his name. Remember Independence? Uh, no, no, no. Remember um what's the one where Bruce Willis and the boys go up uh, Armageddon when they when when the oiler the oil drillers go to into that's space fun. to save Earth? Uh, I haven't seen um, that. 
All right, well, let's just move the fuck on then. <laughs> Wait. Wait, is that the movie where instead of hiring astronauts who learn how to plumb, they hire plumbers? And yes, because it's easier to teach oil drillers how to oh. astronaut <laughs> than, it is to teach, than it is to teach astronauts how to drill. They literally said that yes. in the movie. That can't be true. <gasps> it can't I think there's be a true. line in the movie where they said it took years to decide to swap uh, monkeys for astronauts and that it was really a nothing job. <laughs> <laughs> it is absurd. By the way, like... I. I I watch a bunch of those. It'd be so funny but... if it was a nothing job. They're just, oh they're God, just, they're just not... futzing around up there. <laughs> right? Guys, basically... nobody admit what we're doing. Just allude to a lot of maths. There could just be Lego <laughs> characters in there. It's all when done J- from Houston. I, yeah. I think it was John Glenn, but there was a guy up there by himself in one of those little fucking pods that we call a spaceship back then. And his guidance computer, this, this, uh, this gyroscopically um, stabilized thing, fails completely. So he has no way to calculate his re-entry. So he takes a grease pen and draws on the glass of the capsule and lines it up with some stars and shit and then does manual burns looking at his wristwatch. Thruster off. Thruster off. It was the most accurate re-entry in NASA history. He landed so close to the ships, they watched him come down. (laughs) <laughs> is this real yeah that's part of the movie yeah no that's real that's that, there was no movie that's just like a, oh an occurrence that happened well, on... then that's an impressive astronaut a dog couldn't have done that no no they just let those dogs die yeah. they very just, few they chimps could off <laughs> a couple have you smart seen ones about chimps in there any term memory uh yeah chimps have excellent short-term memory i've seen that it, yeah it's a man it's I never wrong it's true it's almost hard to know if it's true or not, right? Like, oh, like, like like they can twist it, bop it, pull it. What about their mm-hmm, long-term basically. memory, though? Like if I slap one today and come back a year from now, will it eat my fingers? Yes. Yeah. It's do a, that it's, anyway. It's, it's a chimp. It'd be like, this yeah. guy's kind of like that other guy. Let's be safe. <laughs> Let's, you you don't have fingers. to count on their long-term memory. Like, like if I slap an alligator and come back in three years, it will definitely bite me. Yeah. <sighs> well, I mean, if you stick your hand in its mouth, for sure. But would the chimp go out of its way? Would it be like... Motherfucker! Like you know would. that moment in Pulp Fiction where Marcellus Wallace looks up and Bruce Willis is in that car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> motherfucker! Like w- would the chimp do that? Mon- when the I monkey's pretty the fucking far from okay. <laughs> 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 what are you gonna do, chimpo? I'm gonna get me about five pipe banging chimps. Take the <laughs> homes here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I haven't seen that in a long time. I haven't either. It's I'm so movie. terrified of those chimps, man. You really like, like there's a, ma- a chimp mauling in that movie. Uh, nope. That is real hard to watch. Like, yes. like mm. he goes, he goes chimp on like a, it, they're filming a, a, a family TV show. So, and he goes chimp on the whole cast, like Oof. mommy, daddy, and all the kids and starts going to town and the Just studio au- with a studio audience. So everybody's losing their shit. It's, and it's filmed like from the point of view of the little boy. He's like, it's crazy. It's As a real good scene. Monkeys freaking out and ripping, ripping people apart, off. like like tearing yeah. their faces off. Yeah, literally eating their faces off and like going like tearing their fingers off and shit. Like going real gruesome with it. Chimps yeah, are awful, man. They're ornery animals. If you piss them off, you don't want to. And they're so much stronger than you think. You don't. Right. You don't want to. Here's the scenario. You're offered a chimpanzee. It's, it's it's three months old. It's got its diaper. Would you take a chimpanzee right now if it were legal and given to you? That I have too much wisdom. No, no, that's mm. that would be life altering. To I have a chimp in my house now. It's three months old, which means in eight weeks it's going to be strong enough to rip my hands <laughs> off. And so like. And I got weights around. I got sharp things in the house. Like no, you worried no. it's going to arm itself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk in the back and it's gonna be sharpened a stick against my fence. I'm gonna be like, oh. you get out there. It's like it's like Planet of the Apes. It's trying to figure out how to take the oh, safety yeah. off the like, you. He's like he's figuring out how to open things. And, <laughs> and you've been and, heard on the chimpanzee thing. Acknowledged. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which wild animal would you pick? A wild animal. The wildest animal. The wildest animal. I feel like you could get a raccoon 
pretty well trained. Something neat there. It's a low T wild animal, Taylor. Yeah, it is. Man. All right. First, first, first of all, it, like, it hangs out on your shoulder when you go in public. It's not what I'm I looking would take for, a mouse. I'm looking for danger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, we're, I, we're going for danger. Now, I agree. The raccoon the is slowest reptile. Raccoons are the best exotic pet, bar none. They really are. If you have the attention for them and, and like well, don't mind baby proofing your house, they're really fucking smart and cool and they have people hands. That shit's neat. Damn. But I was looking more for like what's the most dangerous animal that you would allow into your home. Yeah. The most the uh -huh. one most capable of causing physical bodily harm to another, uh, you know, to a people. That it ruins out be... my tropical fish idea. <laughs> no, it'd probably be a, a a poisonous snake. Like you keep that locked in, put a bunch no. of heavy books on the top. And mm -hmm. you know it's going to be safe. I wouldn't. No, I would not allow. I keep it on death's door. I barely feed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So when it gets out, it'll be it'll be good and no, riled up. And, enough, he's not going to have enough energy. Enough like calories. no light. How long am I keeping it? Watt bulb. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, got, it's got like a it's an LED. <laughs> there's no there's no <laughs> heat on it. <laughs> I put a fan in there. Shiver. Just, you just, just, hey, you ever seen a snake shiver? <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Come it's like, you're How long do you keep it? If you if I only keep it for three months, my difference it'd be different if I kept it till death. To death, you have it's your to pet death. now. Oh, okay. You, it's your pet. You got. So I can't like, fuck around with like a baby polar bear and hope it doesn't grow. No, it would no, grow. it's gonna grow. No, yeah, I want something that you can find to a terrarium. I would uh, sure. if I uh, if I had like the room for it and everything, I would take a wolf hybrid for sure. Um, the the bad part of that, you'd have to be in like a, a place where you had a farm though, so you had access mm -hmm. to raw meat because feeding one would get so got. They only eat raw meat because it, it, it's a wolf. Yeah, it gets crazy, crazy expensive. They don't eat dog food. Those. No, they eat raw. Not if you meat. want them to be big and healthy, um, they're wolves. Um, yeah, they 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 eat raw meat. They're ca they're they're carnivores, not omnivores like dogs. So the the dogs have this sort of more well rounded diet. Um. I thought no. wolves were omnivores also. They can eat like berries and shit, right? No. That's bears. Oh. That's bears. I know well, I know bears love berries. It's in mm -hmm. the name. Yeah. I'm I'm choosing to stick with this, even though you've you've knocked me like five percent off certain yes. <laughs> I Googled it. Yeah. Wolves can't process grains. Therefore, they can't have a healthy life on dog food. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would be I'd be willing to do one of those foxes. I would do, but they, not in the house. Those things piss everywhere. I love the fox YouTube channels for the ladies. Like she got thirty foxes, and she she knows them all by name. Yeah, Billy, come get your egg. And Billy's like ah ah ah. Like he loves those fucking eggs. He takes it and runs away with his ass shaking. When you domesticate them, they become more and more dog like. Yeah, we've talked about it before. There's that Russian experiment where they took uh, mm -hmm. the the foxes, and every generation they culled out any aggressiveness. And uh, they kept going, and you could you could knock generations of foxes out quick. So within mm -hmm. like 15 years, they had like 80 generations or some shit, some shit done. And these things had had like turned into dogs. Their their ears went droopy. Their tails went like 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 mm -hmm. like, like more droopy, and like other features. They started like wagging their tails and having like dog like attributes. And, and even and then, became, not good pets. No good cause... pets. Then they 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 created like domesticated like friendly foxes that wanted to be your buddy. They're a very um, cute animal. Those like fennec foxes with the big ears. Oh, is those that a breed ones. of fox? I fennec. thought those was just a kind of fox. A fennec fox? Aren't those the ones with the big ears? How is oh, a breed different than a kind? I don't know if it oh, is. Oh, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> that, always, that always circles back around to racism. We need Sam Hyde to tell us uh, more, about, more about that. Um, I have but, 18 deer, four cats, a mated pair of falcons, and a hummingbird that I keep outside. In my yard. In your yard, yeah. I've got yard. a couple free range. Rabbits. Free range. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah there's a fennec fox. Oh, look at that cute little fucker. That is adorable. I bet if you if you could, you like, can tell by the way he's looking that he wants to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he makes. <laughs> he looks a lot like a cat from the neck down. He, uh, I bet he makes scary noises. Like like, it's my experience. It's like, so whenever uh, there's a uh, uh, wild uh, animal. They never purr or make some familiar noise. It's always like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they, they do sort of this. I think they like chirp, <laughs> like they, they loudly chirp and stuff like that, which would probably be obnoxious. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's pretty cute. Those things like have the most disgusting piss, though. Rednecks is a prank. Really? We'll get fox piss. Uh, deer piss is easier to get, but if you can get fox piss and put it on somebody, it's obnoxious. Why is it so terrible? You can buy it at the store. 
it's like you can you can like like hunting places you can get all sorts of urines for various purposes yeah i didn't know fox piss was worse than deer piss and others it is cat piss is bad i was asleep once on a road trip and had fox piss poured on the collar of my shirt just a little bit just a little just a little dab right there Man, it took me a while to figure out what that was. <laughs> You're like, God damn, everywhere I go smells like piss. It took me a while. To, I thought I, I was like, did I shit myself in my sleep? What, is, what <laughs> is this? But it's it's noxious. Like, you know somebody's wrong. Is it like dude. cat pee? Like ammonia? I honestly don't remember the exact flavor, but uh, if I ever smelled it again, I'm sure I'd, it would trigger that memory right away. But uh, it's just nasty shit. And, you know, rednecks in high school would always bring some deer piss to school and pour it pour it out somewhere put it on somebody some shit like that that is a, that is an incredibly redneck thing to do that's what redneck that's how redneck bullies uh roll they'll like drive <laughs> they'll like f- fuck your yard up with their truck like like do wheelies out there and then they'll pour deer pee on you <laughs> they fuck your yard yeah. up and then they pour deer piss on you yeah yeah that's uh, that, that that's uh, that, take that loser <laughs> yeah pretty much you know ruin your yard make you look like uh, an effeminate uh man who can't take care of his own grass <laughs> And then, uh, the, then you come home smelling like, uh, like, like, like cat piss. Your wife thinks, oh, this, this isn't an alpha male. This is, uh, she's getting those hormones in there too. She's, yeah. she's being turned against you as well. Next thing you know, town fucking cats. Next thing you know, your son's fucking going to some sort of trans reading night, and he doesn't look at you as a man anymore either because he didn't know what one is, and your, your whole life falls apart. Time is going to the garage. <laughs> Rednecks play for kids. turn the music up loud and. Sign out the motor. Yeah. yeah. Come sail away. Yes, just play that as play that as your stupid side song. <laughs> Come sail away. <laughs> that would be such a funny song to kill yourself to. <laughs> Taylor really likes this joke. I, I, I just, can I hear just, it in the I car. Was, I was just picturing someone like mouthing the words to themselves as their as their garage fills with fumes. Mm-hmm. They got a this Hawaiian shirt on. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going <laughs> live in the last moment. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So, um, redneck bullies are the worst, though, because they, they've all got vehicles. All right, they 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 they're, they're manlier men. Rednecks, they really are. They they they've lived a hardier lifestyle than city folk bullies, and uh, and 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 they mature more quickly. They've got they're they're, they're an ornery ornery mm-hmm. bunch. It's hard to deal with a redneck. They're getting. Yeah, they're very tanned. Yeah. yeah. Sun kissed. That doesn't really play into it much, though. I'm not sure why you went there. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no like tanned related bullets. Taylor's getting into <laughs> these like fantasy scenarios. They're yeah, they got, got those knotted muscles all over uh, from hauling hay. Yeah. That big southern strength. Wife got that chow right there in the lip, let you know. Uh huh. Uh, would you do, do you ever throw cut a dip off in? jeans? <laughs> yeah, they're wearing cut off jeans real high for mobility. <laughs> <laughs> you can get down low with those. I'm a working man. Mm-hmm. I make did, my own. Did you ever put in a dip, Kyle, to fit in more with oh, uh, yeah. the people? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I remember specifically went over to uh, uh, the, in shop class, we built a go kart. Um, no engine. It was just like a because we knew where a huge hill was, we were going to coast it down the hill. And we built this thing from scratch. Um, like, like there we, we had wheels and a steering wheel, and we built everything else. Um, welded this thing together, sheet metal and shit. It was a real death trap. And we went to maybe eight of us over at this guy's house, hauling up the hill and coasting it down and, you know, twisting the wheel so you'd slide to a stop and shit like that, having a good time on it. And uh, then, then somebody brought out some, some wintergreen fucking... Um, some grizzly. Grizzly. Some- you know, some some wintergreen grizzly or some shit like that, and I was and everybody's getting some. I'm like, give me some of that, and I generally wanted some, and it was just. I remember I could feel it like scarred the inside of my lip, and I could feel the rough part there for a decade, where it made the inside of my lip like rough and a little bit like a different texture. And uh, once? every time I've ever from once, and every time I've ever dipped, I've done it maybe three four times in my entire life. I've always gotten sick. Like, 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 oh, it's like, this is so much nicotine. It's just an incredible amount of nicotine. And this is coming from somebody who's, who used to like abuse nicotine vapes Mm -hmm. to to suppress hunger and fucking just pound cigarettes at times in my life. Like I've chain smoked, like lit one with the next one and been like puffing through them, stressed out. Nothing like a dip. A dip is like mainline nicotine. It's like such Mm -hmm. a huge pump. Uh, And it always would make me queezy and green and I'd end up vomiting. 
And if you ever fuck up and swallow some of that spit, then you're just in a whole nother world of hurt. And then spit bottles are so disgusting. It, it, it's hard to pick mm -hmm. up as a, ha a habit, honestly, because mm -hmm. the, the spit bottle and the spitting is so nasty. And I get that people don't like the smell of ashtrays and cigarettes, but I bet you'd rather have a smoker. Would you rather have a smoker living in your house? Or this is a good one. Smoker lives in your house. He smokes in his bathroom with the vent on and you occasionally have like a little smell of it. Mm -hmm. He smokes outside a lot. So you often get secondhand smoke, but that's it. The dipper leaves spit bottles. There's always a spit bottle bit present. He's always got a little like one of these and it's, a quarter of the way full Ugh. of brown, thick, mucusy tobacco spit. Always. And he leaves them about. Like, there won't be 30 of them. These but, are terrible but, roommates. But if you came home, you would <laughs> These definitely... These are terrible see. roommates. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to have... Uh, uh, I, I, dude, I can't even... I, it's I, cigarette, I wanna... man, every time. And the fact it took you so long, like, it is absurd. Let me it's tell you just, why. I don't let, want... me, let, let me give you a little story bathroom? to change your mind. Let me let me let me let me bring you over to my okay. side of the aisle. Okay. My uncle and my cousin always had chewed tobacco. My father has always kind of been on my side of this thing. If you want some nicotine, get a cigarette. Jesus, mm -hmm. those things are disgusting. Mm -hmm. They would leave bottles like this lying around, sealed up. There was a hot summer day where my dad got into his truck and there was a Dr. Pepper bottle in there. Dr. Pepper's pretty dark, huh? Looks mm -hmm. a lot like spit. Mm. Spit looks a lot like Dr. Pepper. Hard to tell. Well, he grabbed it. He was very thirsty, even working hard. Maybe he'd been on the tractor for an hour and a half. Oh, parched. I don't care if that Dr. Pepper's hot. I need me a swig. He swallows it. Glug, glug, glug. Oh! And then he's vomiting, right? He's fucking... He had a rule from then on. No spit bottles. Ever. Not at all. Yeah. Anywhere. Ever. And I'll only floor, spray it in the walk truck. out, swallow or spit, but, but 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 no bottles. We're not keeping containers yeah. of this shit around. You, you're you're it. you're right. Like I I totally get what you're saying. They're disgusting. Those spit containers. Mm. If it was just a roommate who was smoking on my like back patio, but I don't want him in my fucking bathroom lighting. I but I can like it. I got a visceral like stomach feeling when you were describing that because I can remember so often like when we'd like throw parties and whatnot at at my my mom's house when we get back from college or like at apartments or whatever at where, I, where I was, and especially when it was my house, I wake up the next morning and I start cleaning and there'd be like a dozen of these fucking spit bottles and I remember like like going be like. Ugh. Ugh, like almost throwing up just yeah. getting close to it not even and just getting a whiff of like wintergreen and knowing exactly what that was yeah was it's as far as like being near someone i would rather stand around ten thousand smokers than uh like 10 people spitting in cups around me yeah Smo just, it's just less and smoking like my grandparents no. smoked in their house when we were kids are they like, smoking like my grandparents smoked cigarettes in the house when right. like we were young kids uh -huh. at their house. And so like, I always have, I still think of cigarette smell as kind of a good smell. Like it reminds me of going to my grandparents it doesn't bother as a me kid. Either. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, if it were in my house, it would bother me because it'd be like, Hey, now you're stinking up my shit. We never smoked in the house. Um, I, I don't like that. I would smoke in the house at my cousin's house. Um, when we go over there, because I always thought that was such a luxury. It's it's so white trash. But like hmm. we'd be up late at night playing video games, like pounding through Halo One's campaign, and man, we're just burning them down. The ashtray, we're on the. I'm on this couch. He's on that couch. Ashtrays on the floor. Fucking laid back. Mount. We we, we would get our snacks and everything. Do a 12 hour fucking session. Those are some of my fondest video game <laughs> memories. All Ripping offline. Snakes. All offline, just just me and him and his, because uh, he had the Xbox and I didn't have anything. And I would go and rent us a game every uh, every like Friday night or whatever, and we'd pound out the whole thing. And I, I sometimes I'd picked a good one, and sometimes I picked a real shitty fucking game. But we we'd always like beat through the campaign. That's how I did all the Halo games. Yeah. Um, so when Halo Three came out, I was so hyped. Like 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 we had finished that fight like a year ago. It felt like <laughs> entertainment mm, started like, it. It used to be so hit or miss where like you'd go like I remember in high school driving to Blockbuster or Hollywood video or whatever and getting a movie and then some like usually like you'd get at least three with yeah. the anticipation of like one of these is probably going to be terrible even well, if there'd be a deal right like you know they'd be like five dollars each or like 
I don't know, three for 12 or something like that. Mm -hmm. it, it just, yeah. And I'll get, I'll get three. We'd always get three. Um, and sometimes it'd just be a real stinker. You know, I remember so many times getting home, but that was always fun to me. That was, that was some of my favorite things to do was getting to go to the movie store and pick out a new movie. Um, because there wasn't really gotta, a limit on how many we could get. Like sometimes we'd pile five or six up and I remember at one blockbuster, I was probably 16, 17, and me and a couple friends were driving there. And my mom had told me, like, oh, use my blockbuster account or whatever. And I hadn't been to this movie place in a long while. And I got there and we we picked stuff out and I went up to the front to like check it out. And I gave the guy my mom's like number or whatever it was, and he was like uh <laughs> i'm i apologize but we can't rent you anything and i was like what and he's like this account you have it looks like you have every harry potter <laughs> <laughs> it was literally it was you have rented and kept like every ev like uh, whatever all the harry potter that, that had come out up until like 2006 or whatever it was Jesus. and uh so then i had to be like really Okay, well then I would guess I would like to sign up for a blockbuster account. <laughs> so I had to sign up for my own. And uh, yeah, the next morning I was like, I, 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 I have to return some videotapes. Just like <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I would. Bateman. I don't want to get put on the band list like my mom. That was the mm -hmm. big appeal of Netflix to me was the no late fees thing because we were so bad at returning the videos. Um, we would always get these stupid late fees, and it was frustrating because you'd be like, you know what? Fuck it. Keep your. I'm not coming back. But then a cool movie would come out, and you'd be like, <laughs> "God damn it! I want thirty-five dollars before I can get." You Jurassic go in with Park. like a fake mustache, like "Hello, fellow <laughs> cinema fans." <laughs> you know yeah, that you was to, a huge part up. of the blockbuster business model, like getting mm. people to do late fees. Mm -hmm. I think they had like a time of day you had to return it by, which almost promoted you from being late. Like, like ah, oh, you have till five or something. So people yeah. couldn't return them after work and such. Um, they lost a class class action suit because their late fees were like intentional. They were they their business model was around it and cost them billions. Yeah, I didn't know. It that. makes sense. But but when Netflix came out, I was like, yeah, that makes. Then DVD. Sometimes a DVD would sit by my. I think I still have one. It, <laughs> I'm like, I think you, I still have one. But it was whatever it was, like fifteen bucks a month, and you got two DVDs. Mm -hmm. So if you sat on those what two DVDs. Uh, there were different levels you could like choose yeah. how many yeah um so you, if you sat on those for a month like you're suggesting then uh that uh, rental would cost you a ton a movie rental was like three bucks but if you keep it for two weeks you've basically paid 750 for it and what would happen is like one of the slots was mine and one of the slots was jackie's mm. so I, the movie would come in it was like an assignment i had to watch it and get that thing turned around to maximize my money mm. and yeah and she, on the other hand, would like sit on it. And it was like, honey, we paid fifteen dollars for that movie so far. <laughs> you know, you gotta <laughs> send it back or watch it, like one of those. But you can't just keep doing this. Do you yeah, find yourself like trying to coax her? You're like, honey, notebook night, right? And then, <laughs> and then a quick drive to Blockbuster afterward. <laughs> <laughs> no, no get dropped to the mailbox. Drop it in the mailbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I um, I, I had the three disc plan in like 2011 or whatever it was. And uh, I, I, that's how I watched The Office. The Office. Uh, I don't think all of it was out at the time, um, but that's how I watched True I, Blood. You could. Me too. Yeah, that's how I watched True Blood as well. It was frustrating when you get to the end of that third disc. You're like, shit, we got to get these back to the uh, mm -hmm. to the post office. I, you got to turn this around. The mail takes a while. I don't know about where you yeah, are. Of course. For me though, like you'd ask for it, it would take three days to get to you. Mm. You'd watch it right away. It'd take three days to get back before you could get your next one. And mm -hmm. it's like, shit, you know, I'm trying to watch a lot of movies and merely make the most of this account. But the fact that mail is a week on every, either I, side of the movie. I mm -hmm. think I staggered them so that I'd get a disc every day with mm -hmm. my and I was watching the same thing. So it, it worked out pretty good. But it did mean that you're like, fuck, that's the last episode on this disc. And sometimes half an episode would be on a disc. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that would happen. Half well, an episode. Yeah, like, like you know, like, like they hadn't even gotten DVDs to the point where they could hold. It, it was like two episodes a disc or something like that. They were probably just, they were doing that on purpose. I bet mm -hmm. they did that on purpose. They, they, they split them out more. So I, would, I remember uh, in like, us more. like 2002, or so 2003 like I, I didn't really have any vhs's of my own i had like one tape of 
like the NHL's best goalies on on VHS, and then I had Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring on uh, VHS, and so like I remember watching Fellowship of the Ring over and over and over because it was like so cool that like I had my own movie, like I had my own like V8, like it was my movie, and it was like after a few times, it's like I should I should probably have more than one movie because I was just oscillating between that and watching Mike Richter make some awesome saves in 1994. But. Yeah, I, uh, I I was collecting DVDs pretty early, but then as soon as they, I realized they were going to change the format every four or five years, I realized that was stupid. Um, I don't own that many discs now because they're going to change the format again in a couple of years. Yeah. Like I've got some Wait, 4K. Is that uh, true? I'm sure they will. I know. I know. Okay. I think Apple's trying to make 5K a thing, and I think most of the TV and monitor builders are trying to make 8K a thing. I mean, how long will it be before before they are? Yeah, dude, I have like one physical movie, and it's LA Confidential that you sent me. Like, <laughs> so 100% mm. of my DVD collection is, is Kyle provided. Great movie, Jesus by the God. way. Very, I, I enjoyed it's that a, one. It's an amazing movie. Uh, I, I I love that. I, I haven't seen it in a while. It's it's probably time for a, for a rewatch. You need to get to Terminator 2. And uh, because like like I like that you started with Terminator One, but mm -hmm. but it is the lesser of the Terminator. I will finish it. <laughs> Wait, you didn't finish Terminator One? No, I went to bed. All right, I'll finish it for real. I got to the <laughs> <laughs> I got to the part. I no, this is a man who watches <laughs> hours of Simpsons a day. I feel like a disappointed <laughs> parent. Like I just learned that Taylor dropped out of school and didn't tell yeah. us all this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude! I've, Where there, have you been staying during the day? <laughs> dude, there's, there's there's clips of me on this show like laughing along with like a joke about the Titanic. Like, haha! I know a, a couple scenes from that. <laughs> I saw Damn. a good deal of that on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Titanic's a pretty good movie, I guess. I mean, I, I never went back to it after. I mean, it's been twenty years since I've seen it. But. It was a technical marvel. That was the part mm. that I enjoyed about it. They, oh it, yeah, they had what just figured out how to render water, like in CGI, and it looked like water. And I'm, by the way, I, I'm really particular about my water. I, I, it's almost like faces to me. Like I always spot unrealistic looking waves. Or I thought it was real. No. No, and it it they built they used a um, rendering farm built on these deck alphas deck alphas using Linux, which was this like homemade computer I had in my basement at the time. <laughs> and I'm like, they use computers just like mine to make. <laughs> <laughs> I need to break into the industry. <laughs> I remember uh, Perfect Storm uh, that had incredible CG. I think that was the first time I'd seen really good CGI water. Uh, that's a true story. Uh, if you haven't seen it, of those fishermen who died in a storm. Spoiler. Was but, Star uh, Wars the first? Movie you know, it's a true that, like, story, kinda. Like what we know, oh, is fishermen yeah. got stuck in a hurricane, right? So then there's a two-hour-long movie on like how it went down, all these personal relationships, acts of bravery. None of this is verified. The, the boat didn't come back. That's what we know. Everything else is bullshit. I'm going to yeah. make one where aliens get them, and I'm going to say it's a true story. Yeah, right. It might have, could have been. Yeah. yeah. The same we didn't find them. Story. If the Revenant can be true, so can that. The Revenant is true. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That guy did not crawl across Canada with bare teeth in his back or whatever the story is. He, he, he crawled further than he did in the movie. He said. His name is Hugh Glass. You can Google it later. I promise you. He did these things. Okay. Hugh Glass. You leave Hugh alone. Is that I, his real name? Yeah. <laughs> Hugh Glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I named my kid Hugh Jass. There are Hugh Jass here. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Bart Simpson name. Yeah. Hugh. You leave Hugh alone, God damn it! He was a hero. <laughs> I'm looking at I need a Hugh Glass. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the other, some of that shit was made up, obviously, the, but mostly it was the, yeah. the son stuff. The son of, he you know the the native child that he has that that like uh that was there and everything that that was horseshit i think although i'm i know he was married to an indian i don't know what you call the chief's daughter certainly not a princess like like chief squaw or something like that yeah uh, he's that maybe a print maybe maybe a princess i don't think so You're pocahontas is not a princess and i won't i won't fight anyone who tries to tell me different i went to target the other day because i want to see where the gay stuff was because I, I, you know, on one side of the media, it's it, they make it seem like they have like child size like butt plugs or something like that, like butt plugs that say like like 
three to ages three to five or something in there. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and then the other side is like, come on, it's just a fucking rainbow hat. What are you doing? So I went and um, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, they've got it all in the back, though. It's all like hidden in the back corner over there. Like, 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 like it's like it's the uh, the dirty section of the video store. Did you oh, did yeah. either of you have video stores that actually had a curtain with some adult shit in the back? Yes. I never went in there, I don't believe, unless it was just when I was Mine never had weird that. experience. I don't, somehow we got. The, like, it, so my friend was the only one with a girlfriend and there were like three guys and somehow we got the idea that it would be funny to rent a porn so me and his girlfriend are like sent on this task which seems like an intimate task to send your buddy with on your girlfriend and uh, at the DVD place if you guys have never seen this there's a section with the dirty movies and in this case it was just like a good sized closet with three walls of dirty movies and instead of a door it had like beads like a 1970s mm-hmm. teenager would have in his room or something so we part the beads and we go in there and we're looking at all this sex shit being like oh you think this one looks cool like what what do you think like this one that's that's kind of hot and it was just like I don't know. There's not much more to the story than that, other than like, what the fuck was he thinking and doing? And like, her and I are discussing sex preferences, and it's not my girl. That was an awkward time. It was an odd assignment to get from your buddy. It's like, wait, I've got a mission for you. (laughs) I need big titted milfs, and she's going with you. (laughs) (laughs) What if? What if? What if the side of the story that we don't know, Taylor, is that all night? him and his girlfriend had been hinting they wanted a three-way with Woody and he hadn't noticed it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hey, Woody, why don't you and Rachel go in there and look for a video you guys would like? And Woody's like, I don't know what you're thinking, man. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I was yeah, thinking could... maybe one of the Star Wars or Waterworld or something. Maybe <laughs> I don't know about porn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... that chick was super hot, too. And, uh, I don't know. It's like the hottest girl in the cheerleading squad. Could have been a missed opportunity. How old were you? 17. 35. Yeah. <laughs> 30, 35. Yeah, she, the all these, all these teachers don't want me hanging around. <laughs> they don't like that I bought. I was buying the beer, of course, and we went for a dirty movie. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's a bad look. I think it used to be a much cooler look, but like 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 for like a thirty five year old dude to be rolling up at a high school, but I don't think that flies anymore. Dude, right? half like, the songs from like the seventies are like my sweetheart, fourteen. Like it's like, it's like have you ever heard damn. "Young Love"? That song. Yes. Probably. Yeah, I, I, the lyrics are crazy on that. It's basically about pedophilia. Young I mean, girl, it's called. Is I that think. like a seventies song? Yeah. And young girl, get out of my mind. That's the one. My love for you is way out of line. You're much too young, girl. You're much too young. <laughs> it goes better run, girl. You're much too young, girl. You have all the charms of a woman. You kept the secret of your youth. You led, to me, you led me to believe you're old enough to give me love. Now it hurts to know the truth. What the fuck? <laughs> what, <laughs> wait, what, what, what artist is this? <laughs> um, oh, hold on. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. When I was a little kid, I was learning to play Gary guitar. This is Gap. one of the songs I learned. Yeah, it's just, it's just a an homage to his second grade uh, lover. <laughs> no, all those rock name. stars had like teenagers that they were taking on tour for him. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been Aerosmith, but he like adopted his girlfriend so he could take her state to state and not get hit with a man act. She was like 16 or something, like got her parents to sign her over to him so he could take her with him from state to state. What Jerry Seinfeld has a pretty sketch thing. Like, I, I think he started dating his girlfriend when she was 17, which turns out to be legal. That's like consent, but... He was, in a, he was like 30s. He was my age. Maybe yeah, older, yeah. Maybe 40s. But I, 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 I don't know. I, in New Jersey and North I'm Carolina, I'm pretty sure when you're 16, you can consent to anyone. And when you're 14, you can consent to within four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Yeah, so at 17, she could consent to 35, but it's still a little sketch. It's icky. That's icky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to see that. But but uh but but but, <laughs> but the show was so funny. don't look. <laughs> <laughs> don't look, you assholes. Let us have God ripping yeah, on I, Jerry I think... Seinfeld after all he did for us with that program. I don't know what it is about all those rich stars and celebrities that they want young women. What are they thinking? 
You would like, think that the they South would Park. know what the, the best kind of women are in their 40s. Yeah. But why? Why are these young men continuing to go after these young girls? These attractive <laughs> girls in their 20s. It doesn't make sense. Is that, and then like side-eyeing the women in the room. <laughs> that was a funny South Park. Oh, that was a long time ago. It's You'll think about a South Park episode or something and somehow forget that that show is approaching Simpson territory. Like, yeah, like what are they at? 27? 20, yeah, 26? That's insane. Yeah. Uh, I think Casa Bonita maybe had uh, like finally went live and opened up. Forty million it cost them. They said they could have torn it down and rebuilt it for cheaper than what they did. Yeah, that's that's way. It's not that big of a building. Like it's a it's a restaurant. Forty it's big for a million. restaurant. You know, it's, it's got like cliff vast. divers. Yeah, it's not and, like it's a uh, vast row. Like it's not huge. Black Bart's Cave. <laughs> uh, Black Bart's Cave. <laughs> <laughs> Trump appears. More Trump appears, please. <laughs> He's raising the flag up and putting it down. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go next time I'm in Colorado. I hope it's not one of those deals where like you can't get in, or like where there's like a, a fucking uh, like waiting list or something for months. Because that's what I like. We were talking about those Savannah bananas earlier. You can't get tickets to that. They're sold out. I mean that it will absolutely be a long wait. I would think. Mm, Unless they do be... something where they're like, oh, we're just gonna prediction. be like a regular restaurant. All right, prediction. Someone is going to try to get up there with those Mexican cliff divers and kill themselves. They are going. Someone is going to try to duplicate what fucking Cartman did. There's no way that they that this is going to be. Remember when Rick and Morty, uh, when they came up with the Szechuan sauce, and those degenerate autists mm. were jumping on McDonald's counters screaming for Szechuan <laughs> sauce. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to come. Like, like now, imagine man. now, imagine the South Park audience, which has to be bigger. Like, like I, I feel like there's going to be some weird dude who just wants to do the Cartman where you make the dash through stealing food and like experiencing Casa Bonita and, and like, I don't I know. Though. I, I went out to try to experience Casa Bonita in three minutes, just like Eric Cartman. And guess what? I finished it up just like he did in handcuffs. Like, like <laughs> that's going to be a video. <laughs> it, like it might be, but another thing I'm thinking is like, I don't know how popular South Park is. I mean, South Park is far, far from its absolute peak. Far from it. They've been going for so long. I don't think that they, among young people, have the cultural sway they did for really? like millennials 15 Perhaps. years ago. Like Perhaps. South Park was huge when I was like in middle school, high school. Like yeah. now it's just it doesn't have that that impact. Like I don't know. Do Zoomers watch South Park? Probably I not. I don't they're think probably, they, uh, they're watching TikToks. I don't even anymore. watch it. Yeah, I don't really watch. They're it watching anymore. Euphoria with Woody. <laughs> yeah, they're watching Euphoria. They're Is watching there a new season? I haven't drama. seen that in a while, dude. I, I the CP, I can't. Is that the high school? Uh, you keep drama calling show? it that. <laughs> CP. <laughs> it's not. I bet if you Google Euphoria and CP, the result number would be like eighty-eight billion results. <laughs> well, it's on Netflix, isn't it? Uh, no, it's HBO. Uh, HBO. No, it's, oh. it's all about like you know little 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 teenage children, you know, fucking each other. They're high school uh -huh. kids, I guess, yeah. But the actors are all in their 20s, so. Yeah. And it's yeah. like a drama with high school. You know, I don't, don't want to watch high school drama. Well, the, it's a little more. They're it's saved by the bell, but it's dealers, woke and naked. People, like, getting fights with the police and shit like that. Saved by the bell is one that I never watched. Not an episode. Yeah, never the watched Saved by the bell. Saved I didn't by watch the bell, uh, like, I'm their age, right? I'm roughly the age of the people in Saved by the Bell. So the clothing that they wear is where, like, the peak of fashion to me. Like, the, the idea of a button down shirt with maybe a shirt like this under it, some dockers and some boat shoes. That's what good looks like. I haven't changed my mind yes. since 1992. <laughs> Who was the, the, like, like, the Jackie? I found guy. a winning combo in the, <laughs> at the beginning of the Clinton administration, and I'm not moving on. <laughs> Who was the weird guy on that show, like Screech or something Screech, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He He's went on to make I pornography think. and then died, right? Yes, and yes, I think so. I didn't yeah. know the pornography Did the part. Did crazy guy that. from News Radio die? Andy News Dick. Radio. Yeah. No, no, he's he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's in like that. On he's in a trailer with Only Use Me Blade now. They did a little. Uh, he they were literally get in the trailer out. together a while. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, huh. I'm sure we could get you know belligerent Andy Dick all all like grotesque and. And clinging to existence to, to come hang out with us for, for, for from a park or Dare to you know, any alleyway he may be in. Dude, every I watched a video online, just one of those YouTube little doc umentaries that like someone does, and it's like oh yeah. Uh 
Andy Dick, like the story of him. And it was like 40 minutes of like everyone that guy's ever met has a bad story about him. Like an like a nightmare story of of him behaving erratically. Yeah, he's like a rapist. His, his, like, his fight with like recurring fight with John Lovitz. Is that his name? Yeah. John Lovitz. Yeah. That's great. Where like John Lovitz just fucking hates him because uh Andy Dick apparently contributed or like gave cocaine to Chris Farley. Uh either Chris Farley or the guy from The Simpsons who was murdered by his wife. Phil Hartman. Oh, Phil Hartman. Hartman. Yeah, that, there's something to do with that. I'm probably getting the details wrong, but yeah. dude, that's a sad part. Like watching these early Simpsons is all the Troy oh, McClure and uh, uh, Lionel, uh, Hutch, whatever his name is, not Lionel Hutchinson, <laughs> is, isn't it? It Lionel sounds Hutz. great to me. Ly- Lionel Hutz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you may have you been. Have you been squeezing oranges the old fashioned way? <laughs> yeah. He like twists an orange. Here's a bitter way. literally juicing oranges with his eye socket. <laughs> doctor, you got all that juice from one bag of oranges? <laughs> He's like, yes, doctor. Or, yes, Lionel. Yeah, it's, it's, that's very good. R.I.P. him. He was such a good character on that show. So yeah. fucking funny. Yeah, his, his, his dirty, horrible. Don't worry, guy. Mr. Simpson. I watched Matlock in a bar last night. The sound wasn't on, but I got the gist of it. And he's like, oh, <laughs> defending. Does that sound like a man who had had all he could eat? Yes. <laughs> we went fishing. <laughs> that's, to, that's a top 10 episode to me when Homer gets kicked out of the all you can eat fish joint. <laughs> and then, like. <laughs> So they, everybody's got good lines. The captain has some fucking knee slappers in that yeah. episode. He's not a man. He's a he's a crab eating monster or some <laughs> shit like that. It's like a, he's a, it's a bottomless hole that can't be filled. Like, like Homer's grabbing the steamer plates from the from the buffet, getting drug out. Uh, <laughs> that that to me is one of the best ones. There's an episode where Homer's gonna kill himself. Um, I I, I like I it's rank early. that one highly just because it's fucking real. It's like Homer is a failure as a man and he's mm-hmm. going to kill himself because that that was that was who his character was at that time. He'd lost his job, couldn't support mm-hmm. the family, had, had financial needs left and right that he couldn't fulfill. He's all right, I'm going to drown myself. So he ties the rock to his foot and then starts walking to the bridge. And it's miles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally dragging a rock. You know, it's just classic Homer um, that. It was a huge deal, and and anyone younger than us won't understand when uh, no one knew who had shot Mister Burns. Um, it was an act like like there were adults in offices around water coolers. Like I don't know, man. It's got to be it's got to be Bart. <laughs> but what, <laughs> you know, like the people. Yeah, were I'm, I'm too young it. for that. Like I didn't really want, like that episode when it came of out. Of course, you like, know it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't yeah. like in the culture talking about. I there was. were there were pools. Um, there were games, there were mm-hmm. bet, betting odds, you know, in Vegas. Um, and, I didn't know uh, that. and I won't spoil it for anyone who, had, no, w- w- Maggie was like, I don't remember what the odds were, but 75 to one plus, like something pretty crazy for it to be Maggie. Uh, and, uh, you know, there were, oh, I remember them die. I think there was a Fox special where they did like a thing with unsolved mysteries and, and they, like broke down the episode where like. Like Burns is like pointing to like M, uh, like like the West yeah. and South, and they're like, "Oh, that's Waylon Smithers." Yep, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Smithers. And like, no, it wasn't me. I love them. Yeah, and, but it's no, no. From his point of view, Maggie Simpson. Dun dun dun. It's great. It's great. Yeah, Wonderful be... episode. <laughs> yeah. um, I like Tamako. Homer gets fired, and he, he becomes a fucking farmer. And maybe he didn't get fired. Maybe he was hiding from the duel. I don't remember. For whatever reason, he gets a Tamako yeah. farm. Little tomato, little tobacco, and a little uranium because he stole from the fucking factory, <laughs> and he grows that tobacco that's a, that's disgusting but addictive. It's great, yeah. love that one. Yeah, I, I, I like should rewatch it. Some. Is it on should. HBO? Is it? It is on Disney Plus every season. I don't remember my password? God damn it! I got Disney Plus. I got the thing that like Disney and Hulu <laughs> are on the same package now because yeah. uh, ESPN too. Yeah, the ESPN I, I, I've scrolled through Disney Plus's offerings. 15 times and i don't think i've clicked on anything but the simpsons if you don't I, like star hulu wars Plus still has ads I, I have regular hulu with no ads 
Mm-hmm. Um, or I guess I pay for no ads. It's po- every now and then there'll be like a built in ad that you can fast forward through, but it's like part of the programming. And it's, it, it's like, it's an ad for a yeah. further programming, which I don't mind. Um, mm-hmm. There's yeah, a way that you can like, you, you know, you don't call me hacker, man. You can like press <laughs> a certain key, uh, like like code uh, sequence of buttons on your Roku and remove all ads. You can go into like dev mode and like get rid of all the goddamn ads. Uh, but I didn't do it because I like the ads. They tell me what's new and upcoming. I, I click on that shit a lot. I see very few ads. I, I I hardly ever see ads, but I'm not immune to stuff like that. You pay an influencer to tell me that they like something. Where's my wallet? Yeah. <laughs> my dumb ass is <laughs> buying I, shoes. I have YouTube. I pay for YouTube, but you I clicked a uh, I clicked a Reddit YouTube link the other day, and when it took me to YouTube, it played me a fucking ad on my phone. And I'm signed into my YouTube Premium on my phone, and it really made me mad. Yeah, it's like, I'm paying for this. Be. It seems like and you weren't signed in. I, I it was a repeat. I repeated it over and over. Like, yeah. I don't. I, it, it's I don't understand what's going on. I know recently they just like nuked a bunch of the ad blockers. Like now it's hard to get rid of your YouTube ads uh, again. I, I, I think okay. I heard that. But again, I pay for it. I watch YouTube on my television. So the yeah. idea of sitting through an ad is insane to me. Premium YouTube is great. I, I Like you, I use it on my TV a lot. I yeah. use it on my computer. I use it on my phone. No ads anywhere. You can like listen to shit and not have that app open. Like if you're into podcasts or something, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, and then there's another thing. They just increased the video quality for premium. Like there's, there's a better 4k if you buy premium, if that matters at all. Uh, there's the music, which I never use. I pay for Spotify and I'm just like in that ecosystem with all my favorites and playlists. But yeah, YouTube, if if I had to get down to one subscription, it might be YouTube. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, my, my hours watched, uh, is, is definitely, so far to the youtube thing and i would just mm-hmm. buy every stuff through amazon i guess or something or whatever however i could whatever my tv has a like app that purchases everything even if mm-hmm. i don't have a, a you know any individual streaming app but, i don't um, even have premium yet for youtube you know i well like even like youtube shorts i'll sit on the couch and just you know go through shorts on my on my tv or, or and i watch i'm telling you i watch a lot of this i watch so much police uh video stuff that I recognized a neighborhood. I was like, <laughs> wait, where are they? It's Griffin, Georgia. I know where they are. I'm like, oh, they're next to the hot dog place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a hot dog after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I watch a ton of that shit. I found, there's been a couple of them that are like places I know. Because Atlanta's, I guess it is a little, a little ghetto, as that, that one girl said before they drug her away in handcuffs. She was just dogging Atlanta the whole video while she and meanwhile she's getting kicked out of a holiday inn for not paying her, her shit. <laughs> like, yeah, Atlanta's so ghetto. When she started cursing, though, that was the last straw. I love when the last straw comes and they go, quote unquote, hands on. Oh. When you fast forward through one of those and you can see the, you know, with the most viewed section. Yeah. I use I go to about 20 seconds before the big spike, and it's always right before the cop has had enough. Sometimes it's good to see how we got here. Like, let the person annoy you mm-hmm. as much as the cop is annoyed, so you don't mind when he sprays her. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I watch a lot of those. They're, th- it's great drama. The And some of these people are so stupid, dude. It will be a situation where it's, hey, man, warning. Don't do that again. Could I see your license and drive? All right, get out of here. That's what we were going to do. But instead, multiple felonies. There was one where a white lady um, has hit her husband with her vehicle. And he has pressed uh, pressed charges against his they're, wife. Yeah, they're divor- okay. they're divorcing, and and, and yeah, she has not, like not a that's she, not a healthy relationship. No, no. and she's <laughs> she has she has bumped his person with her car enough that he has filed charges. I don't he's not crippled or anything, but he's hurt. And he's filed charges. Mm-hmm. Cops cops follow her into her driveway. She goes does not stop into her garage, and the cop follows her into the garage. She pulls the garage door down. She's got kids in the back seat, and she she's uh, she's being real nasty right away. Excuse you, excuse you. Do not touch me. Do Cops not hate touch that. me. I was waiting for and that. She's like wedging her left foot all crazy up against her open door so she can't be pulled out. 
and finally they just he gets one cuff on Can her. you help me understand that she was shutting the garage door how did the policeman get in did oh he, he came on in he came on so like, his, like, like his one of them came in before it, it could no one came in oh. before it could slide once he's in talking to her she hits the button closing him in his partner comes in through a side door that's there that's like a regular house door and he gets he gains access to the garage as well and they drag her ass out of that vehicle she is going crazy screaming and being nasty and she's like baring her teeth like an animal in this real scary way um she's got like a boy haircut like like shorter than mine shorter than any of ours and uh mm. at one point but, but she's handcuffed behind her back and the officer has his hand like on her shoulder blade like 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 real high and he's, he's like just get back in the car get in the car get, get your hands off of me she snaps she tries to bite him and he is so quick i was impressed mm. like, like 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 he was like Whoo! and she her you could hear it, snap when she bit he was like oh that's a t what are you doing are you trying to bite me now she's just losing her shit foaming at the mouth they get to the end and they read the charges she's like the initial charges that brought officers there were dropped however <laughs> 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 and it's like <clears throat> DUI driving with an open container, three account, th three uh, three assault yeah. and batteries, attempted biting, um, um, threatening a public official, um, assault, simple assault, um, endangering the welfare of a child, putting two counts like like hmm. one after another, uh, of, and, and it's just and, and then and I'm like, damn, that was rough, and then the screen fades, then further charges were fired. Like, <laughs> damn. They rolled eight charges up on her, and all she had to do was go, oh, I thought the lawyer had this squashed. Dang it. All right, take me in. Let's let's see if we can be quick about this. I want to get home to these kids. Hey, could we get – could you not handcuff me in front of my children, maybe? That's all it would have taken. But instead, she's mm -hmm. getting getting drug out screaming, fucking bloody murder. And she was in a fairly nice neighborhood, so it was fun to get her walk, like perp walked out in front of her neighbors and shit. Damn, but sounds I like, like a real loon. I saw a guy uh, earlier. Some of the people are just crazed, and you can tell like there was no saving them. Like you were gonna die tonight, one way or another. You were just crazy. This one guy, damn. This one guy just went crazy and started running from the cops and tried to run across the interstate and got hit by a car. And he's just a blurry. They they blurred out his body, but the blur was so big you could tell that he took up a lot of lot more space than a normal person would take up. He just got splattered. And I don't know how many people I've seen them um, like fail to tase. Tasers don't fucking work unless we're maybe six feet away, it seems like. Or they don't know how to use them. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I feel like you're watching less censored stuff. I always see tasers work. Like if they're trying to show like a taser working, you know what I mean? But but if you just watch wild police videos where, right. th where they get those things if the guy's sitting right in front of you it, it shoots two lasers and the further away from the target the lasers you can see how far away they get have you seen so that there's a cop and there's a guy running the guy running's black and he might be on something and he's sprinting like towards a hill the cop hits him with the taser and he goes straight like this and starts like wiggling like a fish as he flies through the air have you seen this video yeah yeah I, you see that and People like me get to thinking that's what tasers do. If they, <laughs> if both barbs penetrate your skin, that is what they do. Um, but if one of them goes in, it just hurts a little. And uh, mm. if, if if they both have to penetrate your skin and get into you to direct that current into you, or they just kind of annoy you, and they really escalate things, right? Because mm. if you shoot a taser at me and it fails... Oh my God! I better make use of this this brief interim before someone else gets a taser out or he reloads or some shit. Now it's go time. People jump in cars, try to flee, and start fighting and shit. Uh, what I don't understand is how many people can't just follow simple instructions. I've seen so many videos where cops are assholes and they're the bad guys, planting evidence and basically murdering people. Mm -hmm. But then I see a lot of videos where, dude, nobody's bullying you, nobody's after you. You ran three red lights, hit a car, and kept going. I just need your information, sir. We're hmm. not even trying to make it fleeing the scene. I just need your insurance for them. That wouldn't work. You could that wouldn't work for this lady. She Might be a lie fight. anyway, but yeah. It was mm. the truth. It was all there was. Like, 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 like mm. hey, they they had to fight to the death. Had to fight to the death. Now we're getting drug across concrete. 
you mm-hmm. I, I would hate to get, have to get face down on the concrete. I don't think I've ever had no, nah, I've never had to do that. I don't think I've ever gotten get, get you down for the cops at all. I always just sort of surrendered. <laughs> but That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. But um if they I tell have. me to, I will. You have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like uh on concrete had your face mushed like in a jujitsu well, thing? No, 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 no. They they just like ask you to lay down before they put the cuffs on. They didn't force me to lay down. Does that make oh, sense? I thought you, I was thinking you were talking about fighting on concrete. Mm. My my mistake. That'd be a terrible place to fight. I thought he was talking about the position, but yeah. So anyway, I was talking about like whenever I've been arrested or taken into custody or whatever. That I think I think when I got arrested when I was like twenty or whatever, twenty one, um, they handcuffed me behind my back and <clears> threw me in a police car. But um, whenever I got like locked up at the post office with my with my drugs, I don't think they handcuffed me. I, I think they were just. Yeah, not for not initially, not for a while. I was just wasn't he just the, hiding in the corner? You said that like he yeah. wanted you to sign, and then he was like, "Gotcha." Yeah, um, <clears throat> he was kind of in the back of the post office chilling, um, and uh, yeah, so he 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 was able to watch me like take the package and walk out the door, and so he was behind me. But as soon as I got outside, there was like a bunch in front of me, like, like there was maybe three or four or five. But then I had a whole panic attack, so I blacked out for a little bit of that. And uh, when I came through, we were just kind of chilling and with a detective's car because it was like three fucking branches of goddamn law enforcement represented. Had to get that half ounce off the street. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we're about to let and, you escape. Yeah. And, and like that was one of those times where, where the guy was like, you want a cigarette? And I was like, you're goddamn right I do. And, I, <laughs> I was, and we sat and, and he, was, he, was, he was one of those people who smokes in their cars. So we chilled in his expedition and puffed away in there while I asked probing questions about just how bad this was all going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, not me, but some other guy who had done some stuff and had, and y'all found a bag of things that had bad stuff in them. Not me, but him. What would y'all do to him? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and he was like, oh, it probably won't be no big deal at all. <laughs> and he Long meant as it. you're not some <laughs> online gunslinger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know this guy. Like 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 we we knew each other well enough that we would recognize each other when we you know, at the gas station or whatever. I know his name and he knew mine. Uh, this uh this detective. Um, Real nice guy. Felt bad about the whole thing. I think he felt bad about it, but he didn't feel bad enough to give me like an illegal warning. So, you know, we, we don't get to be friends anymore. Yeah. See, that's what I'd have done for him. If I, I if, if they were setting up a whole sting about for Taylor, I'd be like, ah, oh, shit, Taylor, you should probably never go to the post office again. Like, yeah. ever. <laughs> they know about the barrels of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, Taylor. They know about the monkeys. They know about it. <laughs> if you had <laughs> ever gone, like obviously you could go to the post office. There was a um, you had to receive a package or something. Like how it? Yeah, yeah. It was being sent to a PO box, but but yeah. like they they had it and it they had taken it out of there and they had it, so I had to come and ask for it. Um, uh-huh. uh, and and so that was the situation. But if I, I don't I don't I guess probably nothing would have happened if I'd just never gone to the post office. Yeah. They couldn't because you can't control that someone sent you something, right? Of course. Wasn't that yeah, like yeah. a that's a that was a public PO box? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I probably fixed everything. Yeah. But in any case. That was a couple of years ago. The, the three that's, when did you get out of prison? Now. Like twenty twenty? I don't know. Twenty nineteen? I don't God. I remember just the lead up to that being. Do you like, remember God. which UFC fight you missed that you cared Cormier, about? <laughs> Cormier, Cormier uh, lost to Stipe. <laughs> Damn, that the is third um, time. Uh, it, I don't know. It was Cormier losing to Stipe. Um, that's a quick thing. That's some Doctor Watson stuff, Woody. I like that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> hmm. a July seventh, yeah, uh, two thousand eighteen. Is that possible? No, no, it's later than that. I think. Okay, no, and I was in the fall. I was in like, uh, wasn't I in there during like August or September or something? Like, got out right before yeah. October. It August seventeenth. I think it might have might have been this. Might that would have been, been it. That yeah, been fight it, yeah. number two. Uh, August seventeenth, yeah. two thousand nineteen. Yeah, didn't get to see that fight, and it even got <laughs> spoiled for me on the inside because we did have the one TV that's for sports. <laughs> that TV is for sports. <laughs> like, All right, man. Now you know. <laughs> now I know. Next time Jesus you pop in, Christ. you know it's a sport TV. Intensity level in here. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that, that was the one I missed for sure. Yeah, that the, the lead up to that was super stressful. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. I did um, my part. <laughs> no, that was there was um Man, I remember the night before. I was stressed I, too, Kyle. You know, my friend oh, was about I'm to sorry. go to prison. Same. A little, little uh, empathy, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if Wait, I could have called, tough time. if I could have called you while I was in to comfort you, I would have. But no outside <laughs> calls, you know, you know how it is. Um, the yeah. uh, I was going to um, send you condoms and, and a care package, all mm -hmm. sorts that, of things. That would have been so goddamn upsetting. <laughs> 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 that would have ruined my day if you. <laughs> I never would have done that. That would have ruined my fucking day. Um, Condoms no. for your protection in a file. Chiz sent me his uh, a bunch of books. Uh, I, I don't even remember how many books Chiz sent me. I was utilizing the library a ton, but he sent me a bunch of great books. Uh, and then Kitty sent me books uh, that I was requesting while I was in there. just Because I, I didn't realize that I would want so many books before I got in there. Mm -hmm. And that, that was just one of the easier ways to kill time. But yeah, the night before, I had to check into prison. <clears throat> I was so fucking scared and stressed. I just couldn't sleep and couldn't eat. And I, I was trying to get enough sleep because check in. It was was like 10 a.m. You got to be there or 11 a.m. or something like that. But obviously you don't want to be late. And mm -hmm. it's in Alabama. It's like a three hour drive to fucking prison. And uh, I was just laying in the back of that car trying to sleep on the way to prison. I got a little bit of sleep, but not really to, like toss rock and roll in that van. I remember thinking. Hope we get in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> really? I hope, I hope we get in a car accident. And I get hurt, <laughs> and uh, and I don't have to go to prison today. Uh, we stopped at Zaxby's. I wanted that to be my last meal before I went in. Something real indulgent, and I got like chicken fingers and fries, and uh, uh, and then we had to go check into that place. And that was I went to like the wrong door at first. Like like, like I didn't know how to check into prison. You know what I mean? Oh, that sucks. So you're like embarrassed going to jail. Like I'm. I don't. I know mean, the honestly, right procedures. It wasn't that bad because like the guy I ended up running into who was at the wrong door ended up being like the principal or or, mm -hmm. or something like that. I, he what? There's like a captain who's like the captain of the guards, but then there's like another administrator guy who kind of handles all of everybody's paperwork and and like he's really the boss. And so that guy was super chill. But um, but that whole thing was uh, surreal that first day because I was sleep deprived and kind of out of it, like going through that X-ray machine they've got that uh, that that shows like your whole insides. I was like, oh, great. No cavity search. I'm <laughs> so glad I got sent to a prison with a scanner because I'm sure there's plenty that don't. Nobody yeah. had to finger my butthole. And uh, you uh, missed out. Good. Start I, I did. And <laughs> then like. But then every now and then someone would say something that was a little distressing. Like they didn't mean it to be, but it was like, I want, they, they should be like, first time. Like, yeah. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. This is like camp. Everybody's going to, everybody's friendly. You, you like football. They bet football here. Hey, don't get over your head though. You'll get a noogie. Yeah. That's what they should have said. Instead, this black you like lady ass was like, play? yeah, <laughs> the black lady was like, just don't let nobody press you. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. In my head, I'm thinking that. But I just keep smiling. Go, <laughs> yeah, I, don't worry about me. Because I don't want to like, look like a bitch out here. But I'm inside. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't let anybody press me. What are you doing to me? I just got here. Give me my mattress. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Give me my mattress. Even, Even if you're the toughest guy in the video? whole prison, you don't want to get in fights. That's a problem. Yeah, I don't, yeah. don't want to uh, yeah. go and, home. And, Going through that whole, I remember going. Is it like to laser tag you, where they walk you into a room and sit you down and play a tape? Um, I wish. No, mm. you're like all alone, being let. It it feels like being in the principal's office. You're like in the everything's you know smells like bleach and it's white concrete everywhere and block floors and everything, and just one lonely corridor after another, sitting and waiting in a chair because you're on their time and nobody's in a fucking hurry to fingerprint mm -hmm. you or process you. It's just like. Nobody cares. And and why would you care? You ain't got nowhere to go either. So everybody just sits there staring at the floor, zoning out, and then getting assigned my first uniform. And the, the, the dude's like, what size? I'm like, I don't know what size prison jumpsuit I wear, dude. <laughs> but I tried to make a joke about it. Like, I don't know, man. I, I've never worn a prison jumpsuit before. What do you think? What do you think? Large, extra large, double. What do you? And he, he was like... And like fucked me over and gave me like a quadruple XL or some <laughs> shit, I guess, for talking up. 
And like, like, like wasting his fucking time. So now I had clothes that didn't fit. <laughs> like at all. And uh, and I, I never wore those because. What a jerk. I... He's the prison jumpsuit guy. His job should be looking at someone and being like large. He was prison Extra jumpsuit large. guy that day. You know what I mean? Oh, he's yeah. the he's the guy who has to check off. Like like he's keeping track of how many fucking things get checked out and like who's responsible for fucking jumpsuit thirty five B because if you know I lose it now I got to pay for it or some shit. Hmm. Um, I, you got I got sweats as soon as possible and then I was just in like sweatpants and sweatshirt for the rest of my goddamn stay. To be honest, if I had a prison jumpsuit, I think I'd want to keep it as a souvenir. Ah, uh, you can't keep that shit. They wouldn't let you. That's that's all. Like, so and and, you, so, and I, I wasn't gonna try to get caught stealing anything. <laughs> yeah. stealing like, can you imagine? Jumpsuit in jail. <laughs> like, What's in that bag? W- what do you mean, sir? It's my take home. Yeah, under him books. What you got? Looky, looky. Let's get back on back in here. Come on. I'd be running. I'd be running. <laughs> He'd be fleeing. I never should have stolen this jumpsuit. <laughs> Over a goddamn prison jumpsuit. All it is is like work pants. It was like green work pants and thick, like, den- everything's like thick. I don't know. That, that like, something a Canvas. welder would wear. Yeah. Oh, like, like rough, yeah. scratchy horse shit. Just yeah. like the toilet paper. It's yeah. got to be robust because it's got to, it's got to fit yeah. the next It's a good thing I didn't line. shit for like, six weeks or something crazy because that toilet paper was terrible that you started with <laughs> six weeks that's the most Thank bizarre God, thing about die. that that is the most bizarre thing because i've never been constipated in my life and i don't remember how long i was constipated whatever i said when i came out when my memory was more fresh but i remember it being weeks i remember it being mm. like a couple of weeks that i had not taken a shit at least and being like man i don't shit soon i gotta go tell somebody yeah. and that's gonna be a embarrassing but i knew i was gonna have to at some point like yeah. i would press on my stomach down there and be <laughs> like Is everything okay like i'm feeling for like a huge <laughs> like, like like maybe my intestines have ruptured and i'm filling up with doo-doo or something down there and that's why i'm not shitting like i'm feeling for a mass at this point it's been that long because i'm eating some, no, your, some your body food. was working at 100 percent efficiency <laughs> you <were> just <laughs> jesus christ that was <laughs> yeah 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 it's a king journey reference yeah well, I'm glad we got to talk uh, oh, Sam Sam Hyde and uh what was I that have another oh, topic Jenny. I want to talk about before we go. Yes, please. Have you guys heard of the Zion Williamson drama? I don't know what that is. D- okay, yeah, so Zion player. Williamson is a basketball player. He was a really highly touted prospect and when he plays, he shows why everyone, you know, expected him to be such a superstar. But he's injured so often, he's missed expectations. Cool. So last season, he played 29 games. The season before, I think he played zero. What's he been doing? Well, he just announced that he's going to be a father, that he and his girlfriend are having a baby. (laughs) This is where it gets cool, though. So (laughs) apparently, this girl is not the only one Zion Williamson has been banging. He's also been hitting this porn star named Mariah Mills. Mariah Mills, when he announced the birth of the baby coming what is it okay i'm I'm signaling zach to show me mariah mills Uh, ah yes um (laughs) anyway mariah mills uh she starts going on twitter this is her first tweet today i warned you about trapping type ho zion and you didn't listen to me i know the game fuck you and congrats again the bill was too high so you had to scrap for scrums when you couldn't see me or when i was busy next tweet you put my life in danger fucking all these hoes raw. Next tweet. This is his porn star side chick. I let you fuck me so many times without a condom, and this is what you want to do? A hood rat that does... I don't know what CPN is. Uh, CPN? Yeah, three letters. It's an acronym, I guess. I don't know. Sure. Uh, I was with you last week in New Orleans, and you couldn't tell me you had a random thought pregnant after all I've done for you. Better not pray I'm not pregnant because I'm definitely late. What 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 city is she from? I don't know. I, I just thought for a second, like like my mind really was reeling. I like acronyms. <laughs> CPN could be College Park Ninjas, but it's not ninjas. It's the other word that Sam Hyde likes. <laughs> I, I think he might be saying that like like he's. I think it, the N word is the third part, and she's like she's like what she means is like you're fucking around with people from this trashy part of town. That's my read, but I'm just guessing. I don't know what fucking CPN You could be is. right. Her face remember, on the right here. There's I remember something, UPN. That was the it. Black TV network. 
Some Uncanny Valley editing on the right face. I don't know. Right? Yeah, I'm going to have to do some further research uh, later on. And, and Dude, this isn't even a famous porn star. I mean, my, my man's on, like, page 92. <laughs> <laughs> famous, <laughs> famous porn stars won't fuck you, though. So you got to, you know, you got to you gotta find one who, who... Famous porn stars are rich, right? So why would they bother, you know? You, you got to find one who would rather... On page ninety two, than yeah. the guy they pay her to, to fuck mm. maybe. Um, that that lady looks ridiculous. Um, that who does that guy play for? I'm sorry, I, I know you told me. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. I didn't. I don't think. Oh, I a classy that. team. I've never even heard of that team. I know <laughs> Dude, they're, they're called really... the Pelicans. I know, right? <laughs> but they're. I was really psyched about the team they put together, but with the injuries and such, it didn't turn out that cool. New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah. yeah. What could it be the fucking Hurricanes? Would that be insensitive? Carolina already. Oh, has the New Hurricanes. Orleans Hurricanes. I yeah, I, but I like the uh, idea. look, I've seen Carolina Hurricanes and I've seen New Orleans Hurricanes, and the New Orleans ones are way bigger and better. He's right. I mean, but I think North Carolina might be the third hurricane state. Like Florida's one to me, right? Mm-hmm. Fair. Who's the second hurricane state? Might Georgia doesn't those... get shit. It's South Carolina for sure. Maybe Alabama. No. Oh, Alabama. No, no, no. You have to look at the coastline. North Carolina sticks out. Like, like America has a boob, and it is North Carolina. So as the hurricanes come up the coast, they hit us a lot. South Carolina is like safe and tucked in almost. The hurricanes have to intentionally fuck you in particular. Yeah, I remember when we got these refugees from Hurricane Andrew, wherever that was. I think it might have been in like... Dominican Republic or Costa Rica. I don't know. We got these brown people that came and started going to our school, though. They had funny names and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and you saved them from the, the harsh The water. Silvas. The Silvas. Roberto Silva. That was his name. And his little brother. Shout out, yeah. Roberto. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I mean, Florida, fucking, Texas, and Louisiana. English. One, two, three. So they wouldn't let us watch movies anymore because it was insensitive for... Okay. Fucking Roberto. Let us watch so, movies anymore. Yeah. yeah every, every Dude, that fucking... was, is there any worse way to make a kid popular at school? It's like, all right, Roberto's new, but no more movies. He doesn't speak like, like, like now we don't get to watch it. And you fucking, I like... fucking hate Roberto. And he has an ice cream allergy. <laughs> yeah, he has an oh. ice cream allergy. Uh, Roberto's and he hates house field day, so no more that. <laughs> Roberto's house He's flooded. not Christian, so everybody's coming in for Easter. Oh, they were Catholic. Yeah, they were Catholic. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't make either yeah his house had flooded and he'd almost drowned so we would pour water on him all the time and mm. just freak him out and stuff so you're drowning you're drowning scare him and stuff country bullies or something you're drowning, you're drowning. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hold him down just do awful th- well, none of that's true no that's true i mean he existed though he's a real person and he did ruin movie day though we didn't do shit to him though because we you know what we're we gonna do <laughs> son of a bitch movie he day. was a big guy you know and they have knives Jesus Christ! All right. <laughs> he I mean, it was second grade, but he was 51. intimidating. Hit the button before this 